Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to a, a podcast, podcast will save, save this relationship. I'm Sarah Sheher. I'm Thank Josh you. Him. Yeah, I remember to actually give you some space. To That's some logo room. so yeah. sweet of you. You're welcome. I mean, after this episode, I feel yeah. required to be a little bit nicer. Than yeah. oh, we normal. got angry on this we one. We got angry on this one. We did. We talked about uh, the bare naked ladies. That was the, the, the height of the show. That probably was actually. Yeah, In that terms was a of positive, emotional. Yeah, positive experience. And then we talked then about we, the Avatar The Last Airbender and got remake, a little mad about got it. Got a little mad. And then we did. Uh, <laughs> two cents horror, horror story. And I got a little mad about it. And Josh it. got very mad. <laughs> Not just a little. Okay. And then we did red stories, and then we got real mad. We did get so mad. These ones really pissed us off. Yeah, this time. I don't know why we did this to ourselves. I don't know either. On this fun comedy show, and we were probably completely wrong about everything too, as usual. It it worries me when I read the comments and Reddit's like one way, and I. Fully, fully disagree. Yeah, no, that's how I felt about my story, my first story. Yeah, it was <laughs> I like, feel that. oh god, I completely disagree with an entire group of people. This is going to be a shit. good comment yeah. section god. on this podcast. But yeah, so yeah, it's all all the time stamps are in the description. So enjoy the show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell, raise five stars on Apple and Spotify podcast, and check it us out on Patreon. Buy me a coffee and straightforcoffee dot com. Yes, to get all, all of our help support us the podcast financially. I can't speak right now because no. I've been speaking for four and a half hours and I'm super hungry. Yeah, me too. Also, <laughs> my old band Blue Age is releasing a single on March 1st and uh, go check them out. Link is in the description down below to pre-save the new single Red Sea, which I had a hand. Yeah, I have like a songwriting credit on it, so it does help me out financially. Um, but also, d- d- go see if you like it. You might like a new band and they're like a local kind of indie band. band. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, enjoy the show. Thank you all for watching and see you all there. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. How you doing, Sarah? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good too. I'm gonna enjoy some tea during this episode. That'll yeah. keep me awake. I was super tired yesterday, and I think that's why I didn't want to record. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know, because I okay, I, the real real ADHD moment I had uh Friday night. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I decided as we were getting ready for bed, I saw a TikTok that was uh, a clip from uh, the movie Nobody with um, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. And I remember like, oh, that was a good scene. So I was like, I want to start watching it. What scene was it? It was the one where he's looking for the two people that broke into the house because the child, his child lost the kitty cat bracelet. Oh, right. And it's him holding the money and like it shows his tattoo and then it freaks out the uh, veteran. Oh. Yeah. So fucking, um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, it was a good scene. I remember I enjoyed Bob Odenkirk. So I started watching it yeah. as we were getting ready for bed. And then we did our like war- night routine. And I stayed up until 530, I think, watching that movie. <laughs> yeah. All the way. And then uh, waking up at 11 to make a TikTok real quick and then like sitting Going down. Back to sleep. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, let's just let's just not do it. Let's <laughs> not, not do it. Talk it. So yeah, now we're here a day late. Yep. Uh, with actual topics to talk about as well, which is nice. Yeah, we had no idea what the fuck we were going to talk about yesterday. Yeah, but we did things yesterday to talk about. Indeed. Uh, do you want to start? I want to start positive. I want to talk about bare naked ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so, um, every year Universal does the. I want to talk about Mardi Gras at Universal as well because you have a deep history with it, which I think is really good. Yeah, and it's intertwined with bare naked ladies. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, but Universal Mardi Gras, uh, Universal throws a Mardi Gras event for way like four too months. fucking long, and after Mardi Gras is fucking yeah, over. Yeah, well into Lent, yeah. We <laughs> yeah, which is probably, I mean, I probably got that wrong, but I remember my parent, my mom, who used to live in Louisiana and went to actual Mardi Gras, was like, why is Mardi Gras so long here? Uh, yeah. It's fucking over. <laughs> well, because they need they <laughs> let's let's be real here. Business talk. They need an event to happen in the slump of the year where no one really shows up. Yeah, that's the only reason why. Same reason why they it, have like Halloween Horror Nights too. You know, it's like, just funny because uh, from what I understand, and listen, if you think I'm wrong about this, you can write a nice, respectful comment about it. You don't need to be like, no, that's not right. Just write it and be like, oh, Sarah got it wrong. This is what... Da, da, da. From what I understand, Mardi Gras is you're supposed to get out all your inhibitions before Lent. Yeah, I thought that's that's my understanding as well. Right. But I might be wrong, yeah. That's what I thought. Because you're supposed to give up shit for 40 days, right? Yeah. So that's what I thought. I don't know if they're both interconnected. They probably aren't at all. 
But if only we had Google. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, it's also like a cultural thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, I think people can make it. I mean, it's in the same way areas, that, like, yeah. you know, if you decide to do X tradition for, like, Christmas or something, yeah, or, like, you know, like, you're Easter doing or other, Easter, like, but you're not going to church and you're not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it, yeah. But, so, yeah, so yeah. Universal has had this event for, like, fucking decades now, I guess. Like, yeah. you know, they, they do a huge parade. They have, like, concerts on weekends mm-hmm. where they bring out, like, I, I wouldn't say big names, but I would, I think big names... Uh, sometimes it's sometimes it can be like uh as you get older the more stoked you are for these bands yeah no, if that I makes was, sense yeah yeah it's, yeah so like um fucking they brought out like this year they had like all american rejects yes which we missed unfortunately yeah uh, they had uh they have dj khaled next week yeah and J- uh, casey and the sunshine band which yeah. was before this yeah we missed that one we missed yeah. that one too and so pissed about that mm. i also have queen latifah Coming in, yeah. Um, we're gonna go see that one, yeah, for sure. Uh, and they did Bare Naked Ladies yesterday, yeah, and that's we the one we went to for sure. Uh, but yeah, so like I, I've been, I, I've been like a, uh, as I'm not a Disney adult. I guess I'm closer to a Universal adult, which yeah, is a, a, a Disney adult but cooler. <laughs> um, an Orlando well, native, an Orlando native. <laughs> yeah, if you live in Orlando, there's two types of people. There's people that move down for Disney, and people who grew up. In around Orlando here and, and love go to Universal, Universal all yeah. The time. yeah, and Sea World is uh, can go fuck itself, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, genuinely get better seated, seated. Yeah, so we, yeah, we've talked about. That. I guess we've been talking about this like a, a little bit recently. I guess because we've been going to the parks more often. Yeah, uh, now, but like fucking yeah. So like they have like this like you know a parade and it's nice. They throw beads. You can't show your titty. F. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> it's L. still a family event. It, you know? it is. It, it, it you know it is also kind of like a. A canon event, quote unquote, for like children in Orlando, because we both realized that we had the same experience where we were kids and we went to the Universal Mardi Gras parade, parade event, yeah, where they do a little parade all around, you know, whatever, and you know they throw the beads, or whatever, and it's so difficult to get the beads. Yeah, like, it's even really for terrible. Us, like, yeah, we sat, uh, we. I think this happened two years in a row now. Yeah. We stood in the same spot and got no beads. Like zero. I, we showed up at like five minutes before parade start. We're gonna have to go for seven more years before we get beads. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But um. So yeah, you know. And but as a kid, as a kid, you really want the beads. Yeah. Like a lot because it's like a prize. Yeah. You know? and there's plenty of people like that have kids that like have their kids on the uh their on shoulders. The shoulders like, yeah. I remember having that experience as a kid when I was young enough. I didn't. I was like 14 because I didn't okay, grow up as like a fair. baby baby around yeah. here. You know. So, but what yeah. some people would do is like adults that catch beads, they will sometimes give it to kids, and that's always like yeah. a nice little thing, you know. Of, yeah. Like, yeah. Especially like, uh, dude, there was one guy in front of us like just stealing beads dude, from this fucking up kid for his uh, teenage daughter, I think. Yeah, but still, like, but there's I gotta be a teenage honest. daughter versus like a four year old on the shoulder where he's almost like fucking punching the kid <laughs> in the face to get beads. But if I'm totally for real though, that kid on the shoulder had like three, had already caught beads three times. Uh, okay, so it's very good. Yeah, <laughs> time to get dirty is what Sarah's Steal saying. Steal those beads from that kid. Are you fucking <laughs> hot take? A hot take. If your kid's got three beads, uh, give it to the fucking teenager. That you know what none, I mean? Yeah. That is none. Come on. Jesus. You the have an unfair economy, advantage yeah. <laughs> sitting on top of your father's shoulders being yeah. less than like 10 pounds or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it's like, you know, it's like a family like get together event. I think it's a family friendly event. That's what family it is. Family friendly. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and I think, it, you know, the, I, I like that, that like it brings people together. Mm-hmm. Like, and also like, I, I think the communal of like giving kids beats is always a fun I think thing. Nice. I think it's cute as well. Like when it happens, you I think know? it's cute that we both found out that that happened to us in our childhood. Too. Yeah, you know, it's and like, we were like, if we got some, I'd probably give it to a kid. I don't oh, need beads. yeah, because I don't know if I would keep them. Yeah, I mean, I have plenty of beads like still around this house. Funny as hell to see like, um, angry little old white ladies. You know what I mean? There's a t- listen. Okay, okay, yeah. Can we talk okay, about? Can oh we talk about God. two things real quick before we even get? Okay. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> We've been to Universal lately a lot. Yeah, because we went for the escape room, whatever the fuck. And then Sorry, we escape went, adventure. The escape, <laughs> escape experience. TMCR. TMCR. Sorry. And then we went to meet your parents there at Megacon. We tried we to. We tried and to then go we, in. Yeah, and then they were like, oh, no, we're not there, you fucking morons. You dumbasses. And then we went for Mardi Gras. Yeah. And every single time we've been there, there, there have been, been little annoying... old white women with blonde hair. Every single time they have blonde hair yes. or gray yeah. hair. And they're pissed that they have to walk behind us. 
Yeah, so this okay, so and this I'm, was, a, I'm slow. I do walk slow. I will yeah, admit. I walk but we very slow. walking and also like uh, at that point whatever. At there every, are also like other places to go to. You chose but to that's go. The th- yeah, that's the thing. In every instance we're walking in this very wide open area cuz Universal is built for massive amounts of people to come in and out. Shockingly. Shockingly, and these fucking old white bitches are like sitting behind or like walking behind us. And they're getting picked. Yeah, there was one. We were on the uh, a moving the walkway. Heat yeah, coming out of there. And body. like, there were multiple times where I think she thought she can get past you, and mm. like, was like, and she was getting pissed off. And I was, and I was looking at my watch the entire time, and I'm like, there's 20 minutes until the fucking concert. Like, that's where like, you're going. If you're yeah. going to that, like, or 20 minutes to the uh, parade, and like an hour to the concert. Yeah, like, there's you're fine. The amount of times. And it's, I don't know, like, truly, though, going to Megacon versus Universal, and I said it before, and I I hope it didn't come off bad, but, like, I don't think it did. Mm. Megacon, I go to Megacon, and I feel not self-conscious about my body at all. Universal, on the other hand. Every single time. Yeah. Everyone makes me feel self-conscious about my body. And I think it's so interesting um, because I don't feel that anywhere else in Orlando. Yeah, it's literally just at Universal. And like, I mean, I guess Disney as well. Probably Disney as well. We don't go there because uh, Disney's I, more fad friendly, though. Yeah, which is like, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, every time I go to Universal, people look at me like, "How she can't even go on any rides?" Which is true. I cannot. I am too <laughs> fat. But like, why do you gotta? I'm mean, just walking why do you gotta around. Bring it up, yeah. I'm just I'm trying to. I'm literally there exercising. <laughs> yeah, you're literally walking around for I'm like three, cardio. four miles when you're do- when you're there. Yeah. If I go to Universal, I'm gonna walk around like five, four miles. Yeah, for four sure. Or five miles. Yeah. So fucking, why are you mad at me? Yeah, please uh, don't get mad. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like- <laughs> I'm not even trying to fucking do anything. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing too. Like the um I and this pisses me off from someone who used to work there mm-hmm. and has learned the intricacies of walking around people in a certain uh, yeah. way. It's not that difficult to plan where people are going and not see. At all. Oh, if a person's walking this way, they're pretty likely to stay going that way. Yeah. So you can maneuver around them as possible, you know. Yeah. Especially when, like, I had to, like, move from, like, one side of City Walk all the way to the other. Dog, like, yeah. Like, yeah. And that happens all the time. It's just people that come here that they don't, they're not used to walking in crowds, like, big crowds yeah. all the time. Because, yeah, you know, they that's a thing of, like, car-dependent culture where, like, you know. They didn't grow up here. They didn't go to Universal all yeah, the time you know? and know the patterns. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, And uh, that's just something that happens in Orlando if you go to, like, you're going to end up in a big crowd. And um, that's why fucking COVID was so that's terrible. Like, yeah, because like, like you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, couldn't go if you anywhere. went anywhere that was like typically seen as entertainment. Yeah. Because you know? the only entertainment here is, let's be honest, your theme parks and maybe some like touristy like attractions, yeah. you know. And COVID's still a thing. Yeah, and it's still a thing. And like it's something to be worried about. Like definitely you and I were there and I think we were trying to stay away from people still like. Yeah. As much as possible, you know? Yeah. But, like, uh, it, yeah, it's very much like uh, that no one knows how to act. No one does. And everyone's rude about it. Yeah. Because everyone's getting frustrated. Like, we're all, I know we're all walking, but we're not walking fast enough. Yeah, and I can totally see. It's like, um, there's a, when you go on vacation, especially on, like, a big vacation, you're there for, like, a long period of time. you're spending, like, of of thousands time. of dollars. Yeah, you're gonna get pissed Because you're like, point. I'm gonna get over there right now. Why is everything 30 minutes long? Because nothing is convenient when you go to these places. Like, yeah. it, nothing on iDrive, International Drive. Oh, God. Yeah. In a hotel, any hotel, is, like, the hotel needs to be operating at, like, 120% for it to be fully convenient for your entire stay. Yeah. It's not going to do that. No. There are going to be issues, and then you're going to have to go to Universal, where nothing is convenient, Yeah, nothing. Really. It's like, you figure it out, asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless you pay massive amounts of money. And pay for a tour guide to hover over you while you're yeah. eating a cowfish, you yeah. know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing that happened on Valentine's Day. There was, like, a VIP group just sitting and outside. this poor asshole, this poor guy. <laughs> just had to stand over and, like, <laughs> chat with them while they're eating. He wasn't eating. an asshole. He was just a worker, but he was he was paid to just be there next to the thing. Like, and be yeah, like, you guys have any questions now? All right. What's going on? Do you guys want extra shit? And then you're you're around that and you see that kind of like, you know, it's difficult to be in a crowd of people and have empathy for them when like it's really annoying being in a crowd. But yeah. it's also like that's just going to happen. 
Yeah, no, it's I, gonna yeah. be annoying in a crowd. It just is going to be. Yeah, because so, no one knows how to fucking act. Yeah, and I think yeah, we had a little bit of that on the way in. The fucking lady at the turnstile was laughing for some reason, and yeah. we found out after the fact it was probably just because both of our cards weren't working. Because they have this stupid fucking system now. They used to do a fingerprint system. Which was, it was simple fine. and easy and worked like 99% of the time. And now they have a thing where they take a photo of you. And they use your facial recognition. There's a terrible time. But yeah. yeah, so it was like this teenage girl and this teenage boy. And they were sitting next to each other. And I don't know if they were like flirty or not. It doesn't matter. But fucking, you went yeah. in, you scanned your card. They took a photo. It didn't work. You had to take a photo again. And then you went through. And then I went up. Yeah, the thing. They took a photo of me, and it says, like, smile on the thing, so I try smiling in, like, the way that I do when I don't want to smile, where I'm just, like... Yeah, or it's, like, yeah, it's yeah. not a real smile, because it doesn't have the wrinkles around the eye. Yeah. yeah. And then they start laughing. And I think, because it... I think, I at first, I was like, are you laughing at me because I look fat in this photo? And I look stupid? Yeah, because it said smile, and I follow the instructions, because it's, like, because... And also, like, I'm gonna put this teenager on blast a little bit. Which I co- I totally understand why, but the entire time she was like, yeah, mumbling and like, I'm like, I'm not gonna know what it is if you're gonna whatever gonna mumble and like, yeah, <sighs> you're a teenager. I don't give a shit, right? Yeah, I understand, but also like as a customer service person, like you can't be upset that someone's not following the rules if you didn't communicate clearly. And as the someone rules. who worked at Universal as well, maybe in food service, but yeah. having to yell. More fucking pretzels, guys! You know, just hey, like... give me more fucking pretzels, hey! Yeah, like, you know, it's it like... It could be a new job, it could be she's not confident in her job, it could be all these other things. Yeah, it could be a lot of different things, but... In the moment, I was like, you're laughing at me because I'm fat, I think? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know what you're laughing at. I think... I no clue! There's plenty of times in, like, a guest experience, TMCR... Of like, you know, you joke around with your guests to make them feel more comfortable, you know? But this was not that. This was yeah. them laughing to each other yeah. about something that happened. And I yeah. still don't know what it was. Then I had to do it again because it failed, whatever. Yeah. I think what it was was she was trying to tell us what to do and we didn't do it. Oh, and yeah. And then we both had to do it twice and she was laughing that you did it. And then you and did then it the I same did way. It the exactly. same way. Yeah. But also, she really wasn't. Didn't explain anything. Didn't yeah, speak I didn't up even about hear it. anything. Yeah. But it's <laughs> so, fine. Whatever. But yeah, Prey was good too. Yeah. It was nice. They had new floats and we got no beads. I only go there for the alligator float because the alligator is my favorite. <laughs> and <laughs> they are you going to say uh, what, what you call it? Uh, are you going to divulge that? That's not okay. It's not what I call it. It's what my family calls it. They call him Big Daddy. Yeah, they do. And I do not call uh, the alligator Big Daddy. <laughs> yes, you do. I, I, yes, I call you do. it you call him Big Daddy. I call him, no, you call I call him Big Daddy him Alligator. Respectable uh, father. No, you don't. <laughs> respectable. Large father. Large father. <laughs> Large father alligator. Uh, big no, papa. Yeah. So when Josh was a baby. <laughs> yeah, I had a little stuffed uh, uh, alligator. alligator. I had two of them. Named Mr. and Mrs. Alligator. Yeah. And um, that's why we get stuffed alligators when we go out. Yeah, because I love them. Yeah, you and do. They're cute. They're All right, don't fucking judge me. They're cute. No one should. Do- I don't think anyone's gonna judge you. I think it's cute. I'm gonna go grab the big one we got from MegaCon. <laughs> it's of our comfort. That's why we got this guy. But yeah, and then so then I think it's cute because it feels like when you were a kid you liked alligators a lot. Yeah. And then you went to Universal and you were like. Oh, it's oh, a big shit, there's one. There's a big motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, you know. And it's also it's the biggest float they have there. It's like the best one. So it's the one at the it's, end. It's, it's like right the, the, end. It's the grand finale. Yeah, yeah. Because of course it is. It's fucking Florida, Florida Gator. You know, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, like literally. Uh, I think it's a cute, you know, float yeah. that's evolved throughout the years, and I like seeing it at the end. You know, I think yeah. it, it it brings me joy. You know, it's a it's a cool float because you know Louisiana has gators also. Yeah, so yeah. you know they're big on there on their gators yeah the swamp lands of the south you know yeah, yeah. like even georgia has like alligators and crocodiles too you know this whole like three state area you know yeah i guess yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah no so I, I don't know i think it's it's uh, it's always good just to like have a nice time yeah. you know with that especially like it's nice too, like you know especially since like you know you can't go on a lot of the rides you True. know uh, but like there's at least like nice events that they do yeah. that allow it also, yeah. I want to put fucking Epcot on blast. Oh my Disney. god, yes. Uh, so okay, we we didn't Holy have like a shit. plan to like eat that much, but we there was like a, a they had like a they do the food and wine thing now, and I, I complained about it a little bit last year. Yeah, where they do and, like multiple um, countries of different types. Of yeah, food or like countries. and they did like countries and uh, New Orleans and like cities and stuff like that. I will say the alcohol is lacking. 
That's fair. That is completely fair. I know Disney yeah. goes a little too hard on the alcohol sometimes from it, what I see on uh, TikTok. Disney drinks just in general go really fucking hard. Yeah. Um, but the food at Epcot, I feel like, has it's been dog lacking. Shit. It's because yeah. because uh, also not only that too, but all the food uses like the exact same ingredients from the exact same company. So in reality, you're just having different combinations of the same ingredients. Yeah, it's not even like they ship it out. Like they might ship it out from whatever their respective country is, but like mm. I know for sure, like uh, like a Germany cheese dip, uh, Bavarian pretzel, whatever the fuck, which is we had the same here, yeah. cheese as like fucking the one they use in Canada, you know? Right. So it's like, okay, you, you go, know. And this is a really privileged take because if no, you go, yeah, it's like cause not um, that many people get to go to food and wine. No, all yeah, the time. It's, it's a very privileged take, and I yeah. will say that. But I will, I will shit on Disney whenever I can because they have gotten super lazy. Yeah, because especially like if you're like going to your Disney for this like once in a lifetime vacation. Yeah, yeah. Come like on. it's a pretty mid event. <laughs> Yeah, I you feel know, that. and yeah. it's like, and also I don't like uh, it's the commercialization like so hard where it's like you're gonna spend three hundred dollars and twenty dollars a plate, yeah, per for like a like a snack size portion of a meal, which is also crazy because th these like I was surprised at how kind of affordable these like smaller bites were. We spent like maybe forty bucks. That was including alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Which it, is pretty crazy. They had like, um, so we went to the New Orleans stand because um, I wanted to get the gumbo and they also had a crawfish boil, which that was- That I decided to grab, yeah. But the crawfish boil was seventeen ninety nine, which kind of makes sense for crawfish. Yeah. If that makes, like, shellfish. Even though it was like a small snack size, they still threw in a bunch of like- But um, it was like, it was like a good amount, you know? Yeah. It's and like, way expensive, definitely for no, any for sure. kind of crawfish yeah. boil. But like for a, a theme park food- that's a Relatively pretty sizable cheap. amount. Yeah, it's a, it was a decent amount, and it tasted like actual food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not like fake food, yeah. Yeah. Like and then it, there it, was it, like a $7 gumbo, like little oh, tiny yeah, like thing. Oh, yeah, like a little bowl of it, and like that shit was gumbo. delicious. Was yeah. Fucking, um, it was and that's baller. the thing, it's like, they, I feel like Universal takes itself more seriously in the food department i think that's where they've been trying to like yeah. one up disney specifically it's interesting it's always been that disney is um quote unquote overhyped or that they're they're relying on their um they're relying on legacy yeah, more than anything their reputation else. yeah and that's that's mostly their like marketing strategy is like yeah. go to disney where they're a ridge or yeah, the original, or the original one, and then Universal is like, "I'm Disney's little brother." But the thing about that, it makes Universal try, try a harder little bit harder yeah. to like impress you, yeah. so that you come back. And then Disney, like, sometimes it can end up being mid, sometimes it can be like a really n good, nice. Yeah, place. and I, I think Universal's more consistent than Disney yeah. is. Uh, it depends, of course, because I know they make shitty fucking rides now. But like, fucking. Well, I mean, know. I think it's more like. Um, like Disney, like they really kind of abuse their workers into like being into this kind Disney's of Disney's way more abusive towards its workers. Cult mentality, from firsthand experience. Yeah, yeah. They they make their workers buy into this cult mentality of like we have to be happy all the time, blah blah blah. Yeah, or else we're not providing the Disney experience. I've known people that work at Disney that fully believe they can get a job literally anywhere because they worked at Disney. And that's why they continue to work and really hard at their job is because of this is a stepping stone to a different industry. As if it's like college. As if Disney is like college. I, I will say I've heard college, that too. That even, that's not even true for yeah, college. Like I will say like I think working at Disney does give you a stepping stone specifically in Orlando. <laughs> For customer service. For customer service. That's, that's it. That's the though. only thing, though. Like, I, I'm not going to go to, like, fucking... You can't go and be a journalist if yeah. something <laughs> that, like, <laughs> requires a degree. I worked at the Wilderness Lodge at, uh, the <laughs> new, at, at Disney, New York Times. Hire me. But the thing about customer service is you can do it anywhere. Yeah, like, anyone exactly. is like, okay, you've worked a customer service job before you're hired. Great. Yeah. Maybe not right now. I know the job market right now oh, is dog shit. Yeah, no. Ass. And it's, but when yeah. I was doing when I was looking into jobs, it was like literally every two jobs I was getting was they were like, like I don't give a shit. You've worked three customer service jobs before this, so you're yeah, fine. Yeah, you know what's up. Yeah, yeah. It'll be easy to train you. Yeah, whatever. So like I don't know. I think it's um yeah, Disney's a lot more abusive to their workers than yeah. Universal is. So then the difference is you go to Disney and like the food might be mid 
and the rides, you know, the lines are long for the rides or whatever, but Which you're going to have a great customer worm. service experience. That's what they try to hinge it on. And then you go to Universal, you have a shitty customer service experience, like dog shit, massive dog shit, yeah. almost <laughs> offensively bad <laughs> Customer service, they do not give a they do not fuck give a about you. Fuck, yeah. And you have a great time. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's it's like it's yeah. So yeah. The, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit like if that's something that's like a good, I think, median way. We're very biased towards Universal. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, you especially because you went. There. I grew up there. Yeah, yeah, more than Disney. Basically, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I think I, and me growing up there, basically like having annual passes, like as a kid, you know, that was mm-hmm. my privileged position. Yeah, we were able to go to like a bunch of the Mardi Gras concerts. Yeah, and specifically with Bare Naked Ladies. Yes, tying it up. Yeah, uh, so. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies has been going to Mardi Gras since like 2012, like 2013. Mm -hmm. And there's been like only maybe four or five years that I can think of where they weren't there. Yeah. And, but every time they've been there, I've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I think the last Bare Naked Ladies concert I went to was like maybe 2016, 2017 for Mardi Gras. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, so it probably was like, uh, that was the last one. I remember really enjoying Bare Naked Ladies as a kid. I haven't listened to them at all all for like five years <laughs> yeah and then i saw i was like we gotta do it like yeah. it's it's uh it's a rite of passage you know yeah. you go to the the annual bare naked ladies concert at universal yeah um i don't know if we would have if we didn't have annual passes already no yeah no if we didn't have I, I annual passes i wouldn't any. fucking buy a pass for this now yeah but it was a nice like oh we can just do that that'll yeah, be nice you know yeah. exactly so yeah we did that mm. uh, and we it was a very good concert yeah, it's it, great. I, you know, I, I'm surprised, I guess, how much I enjoyed it. Because mm. I really, I, I think it's been poisoned into me. The well's been poisoned for bare naked ladies. I think there's a lot of, a lot of because people. Because of community? Oh, okay. We'll get to that. But okay. like, I think like even like Fantano is shat on like one really? week. Yeah. Like, Ow. and I'm like, I, I get it. But like, fuck you. You know, like I, 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 I think, think they're fun. I never I thought think they're a was, fun band. Yeah. I think it was a fun experience. I like that they do like little improv gags. Yeah, they were really entertaining. They were yeah. very deeply entertaining. Like so, also, Fantano doesn't know Jack fucking shit about rock music. That is fair. That is a fair point. If I'm for real, like that dude knows nothing about rock music. Every rock I pick what rock musicians to listen to based on who Fantano, Fantano doesn't fucking like. Hates yeah. Them. Fully. That is fair. Yeah. So yeah, like I I I enjoy nineties alt rock. I enjoy, yeah. you know, grunge shit like that, you mm-hmm. know. And I think Bare Naked Lays is a nice it's a fun departure from like a lot of like the other heavy sounds, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I think like uh, I, I okay, so I want to talk about the bits they do because I think that's yeah. what makes a Bare Naked Ladies concert a Bare Naked Ladies concert. Yeah. They are such shills for Universal. <laughs> it's so fucking it's really funny. funny. But they don't, just, they don't seem to know anything about the rides. They though. just like, oh, I just like riding it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fucking, I'm going to go on the, the, the Harry Potter ride. Yeah, it's the, it's banter like, um, <laughs> it's banter like, a, oh, yeah, the Hagrid ride's pretty good, eh? <laughs> yeah. And just, hey, that's pretty good. And then good. the drummer starts laying down a beat. Like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Like, let's move on. Kind of like uh, Matty Healy, you know, that asshole racist. Uh, <laughs> Where are we going with this? So he, Matty Healy, I forgot what, what is. he's in the, the 1975, that guy. I oh, think, that guy. Okay. I think it's that guy. Okay. I think that's him. Oh my God, this is some deep lore in my Guys, brain. Guys, keep tabs at home when we say stuff that huh. we should Google. This yeah. is number two on my, I on my scorecard. I give a shit. Man, that's what makes it fun. <laughs> Yeah, half but, of okay. the comments are me getting shit wrong, and people be like, "No, this is what it is." That's I'm doing the engagement for us. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate. If I was right I about everything, we I wouldn't have any you comments. Falling on that sword. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. That. Yes. Thank you for acknowledging I like my the sacrifice. Extra sense. <laughs> that, that, Jesus. That will cause. Yeah. Yes. Um, but no, I think Matty Healy, whatever he was, the guy that like was in the fucking band where he would be like, he would do like little bits, right? Yeah. And then the band would like jokingly cut him off with the next song 
Oh yeah, yeah. I do remember that. And one it's of kind the bits of on was him, that, like it, almost saying the n word or something. Yeah, but it's not that it's for not bare naked funny. ladies. No, yeah, it's, it's not it's like, like a, edgy jokes like that. It's just like fun little like things. little dad jokes, I guess. Yeah, even yeah, that's what it is. There was one point apparently someone. Uh, there were two audience interactions, which I was surprised by because that doesn't really happen in the Mardi Gras concerts. Like I feel no. like <laughs> like <laughs> and this is the not first happen. time. Apparently, like they had um uh someone brought a sign for them. Yes, so you were in the bathroom when this happened this was so funny someone brought a sign and it said i sold my billy joel tickets for this and yeah. the main guy was like you shouldn't have done that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if this is a better concert and before that the entire time this guy was very like he was very like a uh, sorry guys this concert sucks ass or like something yeah. like that he was really dogging on his own thing yeah and um or he was saying like go to the other concerts i think yeah not for that the... this one's bad but you should go to the other ones they're probably better than us yeah and um so he was like oh, you shouldn't have done that uh like we have a couple of years left of performing yeah <laughs> not to say that billy joel is old and not a good performer and then he said like i just saw him in madison square garden it was fantastic <laughs> so that's great but yeah. i mean there's only a limited number of years i think <laughs> <laughs> Which fair, yeah, that's fair. Awesome. That was fucking crazy. And then they just started playing like little bits and so pieces. So many of Billy, Billy Joel, Joel songs. <laughs> oh, and that's a treat, you know. Yeah, that's a treat. Yeah, uh, like who them can just say like they've heard the Bare Naked Ladies cover Billy Joel a lot. Four different Billy Joel songs. Yeah. in little like verses. Yeah, the, the first one was for the longest time. Yeah, I yeah. think I heard that one on the way back. I was like, what the fuck is what going is on? This is not a Bare Naked <laughs> Ladies song. Go in the bathroom for two seconds. Yeah. And then they they did um they did a couple other yeah the studio did they bring up the no, studio. That's studio that's Phil Collins wait that is Phil Collins Fuck. you're so right. I'll leave. I think you off watching. That's the end of my career. We're mixing up Billy Joel and, and Phil Collins is so funny. I've never seen them in the same room together. That's so true though. <laughs> yeah, you know, but Billy Joel had his resurgence when Phil Collins quit music for that <laughs> amount of time. But yeah, so like they started doing that. There was also yeah. another song where someone said, "If I had a million dollars, I'd follow, uh, I'd follow the Bare Naked Ladies on tour or yeah. something like that." And then they were like, "Well, we're not Taylor Swift. You can do that for six grand. <laughs> <laughs> you can see us every day. Yeah. It's so good." <laughs> and it was like uh, we only perform in two cities: Calgary, Calgary and, Orlando. and Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> It's so our our humor. Yeah, it's like you know a little self deprecating. Yeah, yeah it's in a saying goofy, things in a way. judgy tone, but not really being judgy at all. Yeah, like I don't really mean any of the shit I say when I say it in a judgy tone. Yeah, which is so funny when uh w that happens in a TikTok for us because the comments are always really aggressive. Like, what do you mean, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are you all, judging? I'm just sitting here like I have no <laughs> like, horse in this race. It was a stupid yeah. joke to laugh at. To have a little bit of joy in your life. Yeah. Fuck Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> we're not so, yeah. that serious. Oh, over they're here. also like bantering with the fucking sign language interpreter. <laughs> Where I was like, which is maybe the most uncouth thing they did. Yeah, but like they were, they were just like, man, during the the bass solo, the sign language interpreter was just like, go. It's, it's just a bass solo. You can go to the bathroom. And I was like, no, I like that. I want Keep you put in your own, put in your own banter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> they were really good. They were really good. And the songs were good too. The songs were <laughs> Yeah. I like that the songs are like a little footnote in this uh concert experience. Yeah. But the, they were good. They were they're bare naked lady songs. Was, you know they were really fantastic. They didn't end with one week. That is probably the most yeah. impressive thing that they just kind of did like a weird like 10 minute long medley of like TikTok songs, I think. I think, yeah, because I, I mean, you recognize some of them. And so it started at 830. Yeah. And then we were like, OK, it's going to go to 930. Yeah. But then I, I guess latest it's 10 because we've seen concerts before that started at 830 and fully end at 930. Even like some that ended at like. 9 10 9 20 where there's some artists that are like i don't want to fucking be yeah, at a I, theme park I think like they can decide when they end i yeah. think they have like a certain like probably it, it do at least 30 minutes limit. yeah yeah and then you can leave it whatever but they did the full until 10 yeah like there yeah. was a point where they left at like 9 50 and we were like they're not coming back they they finished and they came, and they back, came back for an encore, an encore. Yeah. Yeah. it was really cool awesome it was fully like um they just really like performing yeah exactly and, and they're they, really good at it yeah, they played a good mix of songs. I, I think there's some newer songs they played and like mostly older hits yeah. that they played. Like I think they they started off strong. I think they did um I don't remember what the set list was. I don't remember. Cuz I will say genuine critique of Bare Naked Ladies that I've had for a while. 
most of their songs do sound the same because they have the same four chord progressions. But it's good. It's still good. It's still I think good the lyrics shit. are good. I think yeah. they're like, yeah. yeah. You brought up the guitar work, interestingly. It's fantastic. Yeah. I was really impressed. I was impressed in general by how easily the band could pick up and put down. Yeah, they were. Oh, and also, like, it, it seems like they're all multi-talented instrumentalists. Like, at some yeah. point, the singer replaced the drummer and the drummer replaced the singer. Yeah, that's that always a, a really cool moment. thing. Yeah. It's, you know, genuinely talented people that are, like, just up there loving it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not to say that there aren't people that aren't gen- genuine. Everyone that does these, like, big performances are usually pretty genuinely talented. It's easy yeah, to tell no, yeah. when someone's like talented or the other one just like, has a lot of money yeah and exactly no they're very there. talented people they they very it's like it's a whole other level yeah that they're at you know and yeah. i also just really enjoy that they're fucking having fun i really mad fucking props to just being like mostly acoustic yeah like the uh the bass player sw- yeah. swapped uh between electric and acoustic bass yeah uh which is interesting because I will say the Bare Naked Ladies to me has a very like interesting history of mm. like how they've done because I think they've had mostly acoustic like in the beginning and then I think they switched it over to electric a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But like not to say that they've never done electric like they've had electric guitar since like the beginning. But like yeah, like even in like the music video for one week, I think they use the acoustic bass and mm-hmm. like in a couple other songs they do too. I it, it's like um I it's it's just good. It's uh, you know it's a really interesting like I I don't know sometimes um. Sometimes for me, acoustic, like folk rock can sound very similar to each other, Yeah, like across bands. And it's, uh, you know, there are different vibes to it that you can go to, but a lot of times it's like, all right, okay, we're just kind of doing, we're just kind of doing this, you know? But this was like, this is fully their shit, their yeah. sound. And it was like a fully new, it was just really shocking to be like, okay, I'm going to a free concert I'm here to eat food and drink alcohol. That's the main thing. But then also, like, I'm v- it's significantly impressed by a band yeah. that I've been told is shitty my whole life, <laughs> <laughs> and they're genuinely they're amazing. Genuinely, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's like really. Then they're they're still performing. Apparently, they're doing a France tour upcoming, which is oh, pretty that's good. Cool. Yeah, nice. Were you surprised? Because I didn't think they were going to do this, but they played the uh, Big Bang Theory theme. Yeah, and it's that's actually good. a good song, and yeah. it just sucks that it's in that piece of shit show. Yeah. You know. Piece of garbage, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of shit with the band. It made me really think about, like, there's so much shit on the Big Bang Theory that is good. Like, the, the fucking, the theme song and the Sheldon spinoff is apparently really... Apparently. Uh, yeah, really, I haven't watched well, it. Well, I've, I've seen I've clips and it's very emotionally... Charged. H- hitting. It yeah. really hits very well. And I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Why did the show suck balls <laughs> i'm like why i remember trying to watch it and everyone was obsessed with it and i was like why yeah yeah i don't know it's weird it's weird i think they did a theme song for another show too and i don't remember what it is mm. it's interesting i i think they're another thing that their career is interesting to me is that yeah. they, they've only swapped out between like two band members so the guy that originally sang like one week and a couple other songs isn't in the band anymore oh, okay uh, and i think they replaced him with someone else I, I, apparently i think it's been the same four people for like the past 10 15 years give or That's take cool and also like they, one of them had a brother that was in the band and the brother's yeah. just not in the band anymore okay which is fair yeah so it's interesting that like they've like lost like two people, but they've been still able to like keep performing the same songs with the same kind of like almost vocal yeah. regime, I guess not regime, but like uh, register. You know, it's interesting. It's um, I, it made me think about um, uh, you know, video killed the radio star. Oh yeah, and like how uh, is it Hans Zimmer? Yeah, Hans yeah. Zimmer did the synth in that band for that song, and then quit because he was like. Damn, when you're a rock star, you think it's gonna be like really fun, and you can do make your own shit all the time. But no, they just want you to play the same song all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to be more creative, so I turned to composing Self and yeah, like doing stuff on your own. Yeah, yeah. And um, I always think about that, and I think it's interesting the way that bands will play the same the same songs over and over again, but they're able to make it fun still for themselves. Yeah, like that level of um. Uh, energy to have on stage for that long yeah, they is such it. a significant skill that people just think that they can do and you can't. No, <laughs> no yeah. you cannot do that off the bat even, unless you're insanely listen, talented. Even on this show, I bet that the three yeah. hour mark I'm dipping We're slowly dipping. <laughs> but surely. Yeah, you know. It's hard to do and I, I was thinking about it. It's like, yeah, it's really nice. Like even yeah. like uh, when we saw that improv class at Megacon 
they how energetic they were that that really blew me away. And they kept it going for like you know for 40 50 minutes. Yeah, that's wild. And you know, I was like, I could not fucking. <laughs> I could not do that at all. Yeah. Like, even right at the end, the bass player jumped in the arms of the other guy. And then the other guy, like, jump, like kept jumping up and down. I thought he jumped off the stage for a second. I, I was thought like, so holy too. shit, it awesome. Was wild. Hell yeah, it was rock really, and roll. It was really <laughs> awesome. But yeah, it's like, that's so difficult to do. And it's something that really is respectable, honestly. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I, I think that's one of the, one of the, um, when you get really into performing and when you get really into, like, researching how your favorite people like performing it's that they change it for every single time yeah you know they do the same material and they master the material but then they're able to add shit on top of it or change yeah, it a like, little bit or to decide. make it still interesting and entertaining for yeah. themselves yeah because in reality like that energy is infectious you know where yeah. it's like if you're having fun there's a not you're probably gonna like make the audience have fun you know yeah, what i mean because you don't you don't want to get up there and be like okay so this all is right, our 30 this is minutes set. <laughs> all right we're done i mean it's Bye. the same way that like uh, yeah. third eye blinds is still like you know like yeah. they still switch it up but they're like <laughs> i'm so yeah okay third eye blind is coming down again because of course they are Fuck and yeah. they're gonna be in tampa i'm saying this now we're gonna be there yes because we of are fucking going to crave. We it, have it's, to. Yeah, we have to. It's 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 you know, bare naked ladies is in Orlando, yeah. at Universal. And we have annual passes. We're gonna be there. I'm gonna do it. And if if Third Eye Blind comes to Orlando or Tampa, we're gonna try and make I have it. To. We went to two Third Eye Blind concerts uh, in a year. <laughs> yeah, in 2019, we went to two of them, and it was fucking amazing. Both of them, the motherfucking Magic Man. <laughs> yeah, the first time, fucking Steve Jenkins comes out and he goes. I'm the motherfucking magic man. <laughs> and he tells some story about like how he has a, he, something about a mosquito. Yeah. And, and like, like how he was like, sad uh, it was that he got bit by a mosquito. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. It was so stupid. And it then was he was awesome. like, so now I, the next time you l see a mosquito, think of your friend, Steve. Why? Why would I think of you, Steven? Why, Steven? Steven, Why? you little freak <laughs> that little... stole Eve Six's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, it's so good. What a silly man. What a silly little guy. So it's like, all right, we gotta go. We gotta go to the Tampa one. Well, he well also when he was in Atlanta, he talked shit about Orlando for some reason. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah he was like I never forgot. gonna go to specifically like Orlando or Florida, maybe. Yeah, maybe Florida. And then they went six months later, and then they were in Orlando, and then he did not do any banter. No, he didn't. Yeah. I think the most banter he did was that they had a new kid that kind of looked like Harry Potter. He was like, "So we took him to Harry Potter land." <laughs> yeah. All right. Now just songs until we leave. Yeah, <laughs> he was not. That's why cool I think I'm it. a little excited because it's in Tampa. It's at like the amphitheater in Tampa. Oh yeah, and it's like okay. It seems like a similar setup to Atlanta. Yeah. So it seems like it's not in the theme park. It's you know it's 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 hopefully yeah more energetic for him. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see if they um. <laughs> If they blow out the speakers with motorcycle drive by, oh uh, yeah, an yeah. acoustic song, <laughs> <laughs> like they did in Atlanta, yeah, so silly. Oh god, but yeah, I, yeah. I, don't know, I think it's a good year for concerts so far. I think so uh, too. Yeah, well, we were talking about it too. Like the, it's this, it's Third Eye Blind. I think there was another one that's coming. There is the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, with Ice Cube. Ice Cube, yeah. Also at the same amphitheater, I think. Maybe and I'm just like. I want to see Ice Cube. I don't know if I want to hurt my ears with Red Hot Chili Peppers <laughs> if I'm for real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if yeah, I want to do that. You know, listen, guys, guys, Bare Naked Ladies, like, you know, y'all are shitting on Bare Naked Ladies. Where's the, where's where's the, the Red, Red Hot, Hot Chili, Chili Peppers? Peppers? Hey, hey, man. Listen, listen, they have like three good songs. Under the Bridge. Others. <laughs> what are some others? Uh, but no, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, listen, I would prefer Bare Naked Ladies over yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Yes. Oh my I God. Pro you know, I think that's the I thing at least I learned like about myself. the people in Bare <laughs> Naked, Naked Ladies. ladies. <laughs> Jesus. But uh, yeah, it was a great concert. Yeah. yeah. God, I, I would recommend if Bare Naked Ladies is coming down to a town yeah. near you. Which you means Orlando or, or Calgary. Calgary. <laughs> yeah. Or France, apparently. Or France. Yeah, yeah. You should go to it. I think yeah. it's a fun time. It's great. I, uh, can we talk about the scene for community real quick? Yes. Yeah. So it's, I, I don't remember how it starts. 
It's uh, Pierce is like running away from the group or something, oh. and like it's I think oh because he has painkillers and he's moonwalking out. I remember this oh, now. Oh right, and yeah. they and the whole group has a huge fight over it. And I think apparently bare naked ladies enjoy this scene. I think they just oh, really? enjoy being recognized. Well, that's good, yeah. And also like it, it's not shitting on the bare naked ladies. It's shitting on Jeff. Yeah, for what? being an asshole. For, yeah, not like for not liking the bare naked <laughs> ladies. Yeah. And I, I think I watched it recently, like on YouTube, and like all the comments were like, "This is the best written scene in all of television history." Uh, I don't know. There are other community scenes that probably are better written. Oh, for sure, yeah. Like, but I think I just got the Frankie one where she's like, she's talking to the dean. Oh, and it's like, oh, you poor baby. Yeah, you poor baby. You're too dumb. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. No, it's just you wouldn't get it because you're so stupid. I, I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's, she's so fantastic. Yeah, she is. Yeah, honestly, season six is underrated. Really? Yeah. I've never seen a character co- like start up in a, the later seasons of a sitcom and be so beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. But yeah, so yeah. like, um, yeah, I, I, I want to bring that scene up because I mm-hmm. think that scene for some reason poisoned me on the bare naked ladies or like, um, oh, it, it, you know, uh, I wonder if this is like a neurodivergent thing. Cause I, sometimes I'll see it in our audience where we're not really making fun of something. We're like kind of poking fun at it. Yeah. And then people will take it as like, you guys don't like that. And it's like, no, we do like it. We're just kind of poking fun at it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what it was too in the yeah. show. But I will say it is very funny. This everyone besides Jeff being like, yeah, it's it's the Troy quote, uh, and the bare naked ladies are triple platinum. Are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they're talking about. So someone brought up B, uh, bare naked ladies, and the other one goes BNL. He's like, oh, like, oh, we need a shorthand for, for the, the bare, bare naked, naked ladies. ladies now. <laughs> yeah. Which also, you know what? No, fuck yeah. Actually, yeah, mm-hmm. they should have a shorthand. Yes. I'll, honestly, it's okay. So BNL. Yeah. We were getting our food right. Mm-hmm. at the the new orleans place and we were blah 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 and the lady uh that was checking us out uh she was dancing and so we were kind of dancing because yeah. they were the bare naked ladies playing that's, yeah, that's, good, that's music. Some good music yeah. and she goes who's playing right now and now i'm in a position right where, where i have, have to, to say, say the words bare the naked bare lady. naked ladies <laughs> or BNL. bnl and then you know so i said bare naked ladies and she gets this look on her face like <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah Oh, uh, you know, it was like, ah, uh, they're just, re- it's a band. They're really good. You yeah, know, they're really good guys. Hear me out. <laughs> I'm not fucking with you. That's what they're called. And <laughs> well, it was also and adds she, to the charm of the band. Yeah. And then I don't remember. I don't think I heard exactly what she said, but she was like, oh, I don't know them. And I was like, yeah, it's all right. They're good. And she was like, yeah, she said something about TikTok. And I don't know if it was like, she was asking us if we were from TikTok. Or if she was saying that she I, only listens to TikTok music, but I've never heard someone, someone say, say they that only before. find music from TikTok. Yeah, and like, like I've not met a person in real life that says that. But maybe but that's I think, a I new. Think that's, I, thing I'm willing to bet that's a thing because I know TikTok was at least until UMG took a lot of music down. That's yeah. where artists would advertise their music and everyone would be doing it. Yeah, so, that makes you know, sense. I mean, that's how like you know I fucking figured out Tessa Violet. You know, like, oh yeah, yeah. True. So yeah, you know, it's like you find other music or like a Ty Verdes, I think is his name. Yeah, right? Ty yeah. Verdes, yeah. So He's I don't really know. Good. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different people on there. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that there's not. I just I haven't met a person that's like I only uh, listen like, to music that I hear through TikTok. I get what you mean. Yeah, but I bet there's people out there. That are I'm like that. sure. And I think that's fair. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I'm willing to bet there's like you know plenty of people that do like uh, maybe like Fantano esque stuff also on TikTok, but just true. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I know there's that I one guy seen some, yeah. that, that does like album reviews and it's just like colored text, so you know if it's like what type of like good, bad, or whatever. Uh, yeah. I've seen that before too. Like I haven't seen it recently, but I know there's a lady that uh, she's uh, trying to listen to like either it's like the top 100 albums of all time, or it's like trying to listen to every single genre to familiarize herself with stuff. I don't know. There's a couple of people that do that, and it's pretty cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I wasn't sure what she said. I don't know. Yeah, you know. Uh, if you'd recognize this. Uh, Hi, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm sorry. I didn't realize what you were saying. Because <laughs> we might have just gaslit you into being like, no, I don't know who they are. Who, who's on TikTok? Or what? <laughs> what, are you talking about? what are you talking about? What's TikTok? Which we should do more often. <laughs> People are like, hey, do you have a TikTok? No, what is that? I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> As if anyone that's ever recognized us has put us in an uncomfortable position. Yeah, no. They, it's not yeah. true. Everyone's been incredibly kind. Incredibly kind-ed. nice. Yeah. Yeah. All seven of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, yeah, good concert. It, it was, was good. a good concert. Was really I want nice. to start off on a positive. 
before we talk about Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> Um, so Josh, did we talk? Did we talk about real quick? Yeah, uh, I don't remember if we talked about it on the podcast. Did we talk about Percy Jackson on the show? I don't know. I don't think so. Because uh, I that wanna... was during January where we weren't really posting. That's fair. Yeah. I was like in the gutter. Yeah, mentally. just in the in the yeah yeah. Um, fucking yeah. I want to bring that up real quick because mm-hmm. this is now a trend that I've seen twice. Yeah, and it's it's concerning. Yeah, it's the so Percy Jackson had a remake uh, for TV and it was like probably like six or seven episodes. Yeah. It's on Disney Plus, whatever. It's and OK. It was all right. It, I, it's weird. It's weirdly written. The dialogue is weird. And yeah, the kid, the, the, the child acting wasn't the worst. Oh, um, I would <laughs> know about that. Which one's worse, Avatar or Percy Jackson? Because I I'm kind of in the middle. Um, you know they're pretty similar. Uh, it's a little different because Percy Jackson's based off a novel, and Avatar's based off a uh, uh, children's TV show. Yeah, anime, quote unquote, like anime light, I guess. Yeah, and uh, it's like visually, I have a visual representation for the Avatar: The Last Airbender that you need to meet. I have an expectation that you need to meet. Okay, yeah, for that show. That's fair. Um, for Percy Jackson, it's just I. You just need to get the points done. You need to get the characters fleshed out. Yeah, that's it. You can change it. I don't really. I don't really give a shit. But also, like, I wasn't as big of a fan of Percy Jackson as I was of Avatar: The Last Airbender. That's fair. I get that. Um, and I, my me going yeah. into this, I'm not a fan too much of either. Uh, I started watching it with uh, you, the uh, original Avatar series. Yeah, because you'd never grown up with and it. And I think we got through like a season or two, and I think we just we did got not busy. get through one season. We didn't. Okay, no, never mind. we got through maybe five episodes. I think. Okay, fair enough. Because you didn't see any of the Northern Water Tribe stuff, so no. Yeah, but I do remember some of the stuff with the. Um, Earth Nation or the Earth Village. Yeah, yeah, I think we got to the Earth Village. Yeah. I think you probably got to King Boomy, probably. Probably. Yeah. So, okay. So, I want to, I, I guess I want to bring up that because uh, similarly in both these shows, we didn't, I did not finish Percy Jackson. No. We haven't finished the new Avatar thing. And I don't know if there's a want to go finish it. Uh, but I will. Okay. I will. Fair. I probably will. Percy Jackson, I got really pissed at because I was doing a lot of crocheting for a gift. For uh, the baby shower. Yeah. And I was getting really pissed at the crocheting because I kept fucking up. And I I was running out of time. And so I was getting angry. And then I was like, I don't know what's happening in the show because it's going so fast. And, and everyone's it's... talking in the exact same tone. And I can't. And I think it really truly was like an autistic anger moment. Like a, a meltdown. I wasn't. Okay. But, uh, what, but when I was watching it, yeah. I, uh, and I wasn't doing anything. I was just like yeah. sitting on the couch, fucking myself, you know, <laughs> like just doing nothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you're just yeah. pissing off, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I, I was watching it. I was probably playing a game, but like it was confused. The dialogue was specifically to me confusing. Yeah. You and I, it's not that. Okay. This. Okay. Real quick. The yeah. strikes were happening like right before uh, yeah. and they ended. But like they were worried, it felt like yeah someone was given a script written by AI and was yeah. told make it human like right. That's a, that was a big problem I had during it uh, I, was that it, the it writing like was specifically sure. like you know and like I think there were some good moments like I think uh, there's a uh, Jason Matsukis I think is how you pronounce his last name the, the little the little kid no he's uh he's uh uh he's the guy from uh the league and uh, the good place uh the long curly hair he kind of plays like wacky crazy characters okay yeah <laughs> oh yeah you know, you know what i'm talking yeah isn't that the guy on um you're on a uh, that podcast maybe? how did this get made yeah yes he's that yeah, guy. yeah 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 that's, yeah. Yeah, that's how you i know like him, him yeah. too i like him too. yeah i like him in the show because he's a good performer yeah i like him uh, i think most of the adults were all right mm. the child acting was all right uh it's okay whoever is okay there's hold something on. going on hold in on, Hollywood on. right now with child actors, because usually they're all right. I feel like this has to be something that is in, like, what is going on, all right? Whoever, if you're a child actor, like, on, like, a child, uh, I don't know what it's called, acting coach, I guess, yeah. and you're on set telling these kids how to voice their fucking lines, you need to go somewhere else you need to do something else yeah someone you're in telling Hollywood has a job children, they don't deserve they're starting their careers and their acting is like 
we got to go over there. Tell it's him, almost tell him to say we got to go over there. Tell him to do that. Yeah, tell him to be like normal I'm kids, sorry. Like, you know. I'm it's... not an acting coach. I'm not that, but I know that when I see kids do that, what is, who is it for? <laughs> yeah, no, I get <laughs> if it. If they yeah. acted better, it would be better for the children watching the show as well. Yeah, no, 100%. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty big problem that it was really taking me out. I felt it in Avatar 2. Like, uh, what is this new tone of voice that the children are using? I don't know if it's just like, that's how the children want to do it. That would be cool. But it feels like it's the exact same tone for every kid, regardless of what show it's in, what context, yeah. who they are as people, who the characters are. Everyone's doing the same thing. Well, the centaurs are over there, so we got to go. Blah, 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 blah. What are you talking about? I'm a free spirit. Like, let's just <laughs> chill out. Like, yeah, dude, it's, I guess it's almost more like uh, if theatrical and like literally like it's being acted Disney. like a play. Yeah, like it's like all it's, yeah. Disney. I understood it with uh, Percy Jackson a little bit. It was a lot because yeah. that's a Disney property. Yeah, but seeing it in Avatar was fascinating because like, what is happening? What's what's going on? Yeah. Why is Aang saying it like that? Why is he doing that? Yeah, that doesn't okay. make any sense. There's a lot of problems with the Avatar show. I think there's more problems with Avatar than yeah. there was with Percy Jackson. Yeah, and I think the first. Uh, okay, so I full disclosure. I think we went in with a tainted view because we started watching the little Joel video. Uh, uh, that, was, that was dog shit. That was dog shit. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna be fucking for real right now, and I'm gonna be. I do not fuck around with the Avatar: The Last Airbender series because that was an amazing children's series. Yeah, that introduced a lot of like oh this is what fascism looks like this is what war looks like this is what genocide the, the effects of genocide yeah. in a way that was entertaining to children do you know how difficult that is to do it's ex incredibly difficult yeah and we all know this now because we've done it twice <laughs> we've done a live action version of this fucking twice yeah and no one is able to portray the gravity of the situation in oh, a God, way that no. isn't yeah. wacky I think wacky is a good keyword because, okay. I, the show is supposed to be wacky. The show is like, oh, we're kids and we're having fun. But not the weird genocidal parts of it. That's not supposed to be wacky. No, the genocide is not wacky at all. Yeah. And somehow they do, they tell the story without these weird significant tone shifts that you would find in Full House. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah. fucking, um, I'm going to go hang out with my friend. They got beers in the car. And then DJ is like, you can't. You're going to drive drunk? And then the <laughs> yeah. audience goes, ooh. ooh. And she's like, well, yeah, well, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then her friend is in the fucking hospital. hospital? Yeah. That's it's a like... genuinely something that happens on Full House. Oh, Isn't I that bet. fucking oh, insane? I fucking bet. And yeah. then fucking What's-His-Face comes in and sits them all down and is like, you know, it's not good to drive drunk. You know? They don't do that. They don't talk down to children. No, yeah. They're like, these children are, are going through a war. They're trying to save the world from war. Yeah. <laughs> Their parents are dead because of the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His whole race of people are dead because of the war. Uh, because of the war. And it doesn't really, it really doesn't accept the gravity of it. No. It makes a big mistake in the beginning. A really huge it's mistake. The, the, this real big mistake is that they decide to do it chronologically. So they literally start a hundred years prior to, they start right when the war starts, I guess. Yeah, they kind of take all of the realizations that happen in the first half. We've only seen the first three episodes, so that's all we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, And then we'll do the next ones next week, probably. Yeah. Oh, but God. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> But yeah, they talk about like, um, so in the show, what happens is, and honestly, the show has been on for so long, it, we're going to do spoilers, but come on, man. Yeah, it's I'm a spoiler, sorry. Yeah, spoiler heavy, this is going to be. Watch the live action version, and then I'll tell you what happens in the original. And if you're mad about that, go watch the original then. Yeah. It's up somewhere. So, okay, so the, it starts <laughs> off with a big chase scene of like, the, it's like the Earth Kingdom, like running away from fire people, because okay. they have to get a scroll. Yeah, okay, jo you, you tell me what happens in the live-action version. <laughs> I know, but tell the audience what happens in the live-action version. I'm not being facetious. Okay. Fucking, uh, and then I'll tell you what actually happens with the original <laughs> show. Okay, so it starts off... No, okay. not like what, no in, like the, in the cartoon. Oh, like you're, I'm do, you're gonna do the cartoon, I'll do the cartoon I'm gonna do, do the, the okay, live-action. Okay, so the live-action... I wasn't trying to dunk on exterior you. Exterior alleyway night. 
Okay. Yeah. Exterior alleyway night. We got you got an earthbender uh-huh. running away from firebenders. Yes. Cool. Whatever. They got to get a scroll to their king or some shit. And the guy sacrifices himself eventually and gives the earth scroll to another earthbender. Right. And he runs away on a horse. Cool. Well, Fine. chicken, 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 ostrich, whatever. Ostrich it was horse. Animal that you can ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's revealed that he go he goes to the highest uh command for the Fire Nation because mm-hmm. he's that fucking important. Yeah. And it, and the bad guy just reveals like, oh yeah, we gotta distract the earth and the water nation so we can kill all the airbenders. Right. And then we cut well, to the airbenders. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then we <laughs> then we, we smash cut to Aang having fun. Yeah, uh, and and then it's uh, okay. So then, not even uh, Aang doesn't really Aang doesn't have, have fun. fun. He until like episode seven, right? So okay, so uh, he uh, he okay, so he's like uh, he's training. I think. Uh, oh god, what happens? So I, I want to get up to the point where like the genocide starts. So yeah. okay, so Aang is like uh, he's like training with like his his father figure, uh-huh. and the father figure is like holding off, telling him that he's the Avatar, and then the he the father figure gets scolded because like he needs to know he's the Avatar because there's a war coming. Yeah, and then and then and then they go to the temple where like there's only one Avatar mm-hmm. uh, that they they have a shrine to. And it's like, well, that was the last Avatar. The last and that's uh, air, Airbender, a- Airbender Avatar. Avatar. And it's gonna, you're the next one. Yes. And then because we've gone like, through the cycle, you gone for the cycle. So the they've last already one, explained the concept of the what the the reincarnation, reincarnation of, of the Avatar. The Avatar. And yeah. it's you know, it's like, Aang, you're the next one. Yes. And then they have like a like you're gonna have a lot of power responsibility scene. They, they kind of have that, kind of don't. Yeah. And then Aang is like, I can't believe this. And then he runs away at night. Yeah. And they show him getting fucking uh, 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 drowned. <laughs> and uh, the, his avatar he, state starts. Yeah. And then he freezes himself in the ice. And then all the airbenders die because they get killed off by the Fire Nation. Because he I wasn't will say, there. He to... wasn't there. Yeah. And I will say they, uh, the action in the show is all right so far. It's, I, I, do I do enjoy it. I think it. the effects are pretty okay. People have said that it's shitty action scenes. I, I mean, listen, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, like a connoisseur. Listen, if of someone's action getting scenes, burned alive, that's cool. That Whatever. was fucking. The, but that's was, also fucking crazy to put in there. Yeah, like in the in a children a PG. The Fire Nation are just like burning, burning people, people alive. alive. Yeah, like I guess that's what I never even fucking put it together in the show because usually their, they're like, power, yeah. "I'm burning you," and then the people are like, "Oh no, fire!" Which <laughs> credit? Well, yeah, credit to the show. show. Yeah, but credit to the show. If you get fucking burned alive, yeah. it's a horrible thing to happen to you, and it does give you some gravity it, to this, the it thing. It raises the stakes ten fucking yeah. bolt, man. <laughs> it does. It does raise the stakes a lot. Like if you see a Fire Nation person coming up, it's like, oh fuck. Oh yeah. If you get burned on fire and you self immolate, yeah, you're gonna fucking die. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, there are really cool shots. Like, um, uh, so I think it's a general. I don't think it's the actual Fire Nation emperor. It's not Daniel Day Kim. I don't think. But well, Daniel Day Kim is the one that's the new. It's in the hundred years later. He's oh, the yeah, new he's one. The yeah. New one. So I don't know if it's the old emperor. Emperor, Fire Nation Emperor, or it's just a general, but like Monk Yatso is trying to save all of the airbender children by fighting yeah. this general. So he's like, you know, shooting air at this guy and he just fucking lights himself on fire and walks in. And I was like, that's fucking baller. Yeah, hell. that's cool as hell. Yeah, that was, that was a cool That's shot, pretty yeah. fucking cool. And then he kills a bunch of children off screen. Yeah. <laughs> and then kills all the younglings. Yeah, all the younglings, Anakin. Almost, yeah. me- almost kind of very similar to. And it is really the young funny. Thing. Yeah, it's like you might as well have oh, the like, shot. Right. Is it the Just guy that the directed this? The... <laughs> love the original Star Wars, <laughs> or the new ones? Yeah, the uh, the, uh, the the one through three. One yeah. through three. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how the show starts. Yeah. So how does the animated show start? Okay. <laughs> so I believe it starts with the Katara saying. You know the the beginning part. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, can I, can I yeah. talk about that real quick? Where they oh, God, um yeah. they expository in the opening title credits. The they, yeah. They have all the avatars like on a staircase <laughs> ascending, and it's like uh. Oh, they talk about the uh, reincarnation immediately. The, it's yeah. a it's a different uh blurb than Katara's blurb at the beginning of every episode. Yeah, but then. Later, okay, I'm jumping a little bit ahead. And I apologize, That's but fine. they have the old water tribe lady 
say it word for word yeah, they have after co- we've already been explained it more in detail. Yeah, so they do a different blurb from Katara, I think. And then they do a grand grand, which is uh, Katara's grandmother. Yeah. Katara and Sokka's grandmother. And they she says, she says the says original exactly. intro word for word. Which is like... If we're gonna go real fandom pilled here and go do like a big reach, like are you trying to say that Grand Grand is the like like you know, is this like a metaphor Grand for Grand's like the storyteller that's the here, old yeah. show and this is the new show and blah blah blah. Like yeah. the older or are you just supposed to clap? <laughs> yeah, are, am I just <laughs> supposed to be like that's it? That's the thing. That's the thing they said. Yeah. Oh my god. Like uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. That's crazy. Yeah. Why are we saying this shit again? We're wasting time. But anyway, so in the in the original show, I believe it starts with Katara and Sokka fishing, and Katara is already waterbending. Yeah. And she's trying to, like, help fish by, like, picking up the fish in water and yeah. put it in the thing. And Sokka's like, stop being such a girl and waterbending. I, like, yeah, we have to do war. and I'm a <laughs> man, and I do war. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, he's a misogynist. Yeah, like, uh, He's a teenage boy. Yeah. misogynist that's what it is yeah because he was raised in a culture where yeah men are men the ones they're supposed to yeah. protect and women are supposed to and uh i don't know provide for family probably yeah, some yeah. shit it's implied that um uh he's insecure about not being a bender so he goes towards the most masculine hobby which would is which g- is fighting, fighting and yeah and also he's scarred from his parents dying in the war, yeah. and he has to protect his village, yeah. which they go really hard on in the live action version. Yeah, they they really they tone down the misogyny and and bring up the and dead bring parents. up the misogyny <laughs> also. Yeah, also yeah, we'll get to that. So okay, yeah, because so like, then yeah, so then they find Aang in the big ice thing. Yeah, and then Katara's like, I gotta get that kid out of there, and she breaks him open, and uh, he comes out. And uh, he's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. So okay. So in the live action show, they kind of so they they kind of like have it where uh, Katara has to hide her water bending because they don't want anyone to know she can't she water can't, bend. She can't even water bend. Yeah, yeah. Like she's not even anywhere. She's like it, it, the the way she is in the live action. It's so ass. It's so. It's really ass. bad. It's really they really under. She's like trying to water bend, but she can't. And then she's like. She has to hide it, but she's like, but there's nothing to hide anyway, because I can't waterbend, because I'm just a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then, like, yeah, and then they, and then, yeah, so. Cool, so you took away the misogyny from Sokka, which is like, all right, lots of people were upset about it. I can understand where you might be coming from, because, like, it was, it was a lot of misogyny. Yeah, and I, I like. If you go back and watch it, you're like, whoa. Yeah, Jesus. it's you. You know, it makes more sense to you know maybe tone it down a little bit for a twenty twenty four yeah. release. But it is important to Sokka's character because yeah. immediately after, basically Sokka's like whole trajectory is him being like a failure, <laughs> like a yeah, dude well, failure. That's the thing is like you can and, still have like flawed characters. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like a. Do you remember during that uh, "My Name Is Earl" thing where yeah. uh, Jamie? Yes. she I was think about like that all the time. And they're now. like, you can't make a show like this because of woke culture. And I'm like, is this what what they mean? Like executives were like, we can't have misogyny. Flawed. You can't have a flawed character. Yeah, because like, that's different from being like the woke culture won't let yeah, us have th- it. That's not what woke means. Yeah. That's like, uh, just an executive being um, not clued, <laughs> dialed into society. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so, that's why, touch. yeah, like uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, but um, Sokka's whole trajectory is that he's a misogynist and he's insecure because he doesn't have as much power as a bender would. And he's yeah. on this big thing with like literal Jesus and also is his sister. sister who's more talented than him and can water bend and-, and he's just a guy that has a boomerang and yeah. he's just like fuck well i don't know what to do and then he continues to meet like incredibly talented women yeah that slowly take him you know cuz makes him realize that not only does he have uh like you know value in himself but also that women are have also value. have yeah. value and are incredibly talented yeah. as well because you know that's the thing too is like saga's never really meant to be seen as like a you have to uh, he's correct in his misogyny i presume i think it's supposed, no. it's supposed to he's supposed to r- yeah. learn and grow yeah yeah because he's a teenager yeah he's a teenage boy that grows up and i guess they swapped misogyny they toned it down it's still there 
But I guess they swapped it out mostly for like being cocky, I guess. But it that's not even really like cocky. Like he's just kind of like people are like, you're really good at stuff. <laughs> you're yeah. really great at stuff, dude. You're really good. Blah, blah, blah. This is not the answer to an incel. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the fucking answer to a fucking incel that's like, women make it difficult for me to be a man. But have you thought about engineering? <laughs> But you're really talented at coding. <laughs> that's really good. Like that's no, that's a shitty way that's to respond a, to that. That doesn't solve a core issue. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and so okay, because uh, okay, so the, the, in the sh- in the live action show, they they do the she's hiding her water bending and she's doing it, and Saga's like stop doing it. And then they go fishing, and like she doesn't do anything to help fishing yeah. other than row the the boat. And then they get swamped into the uh, where Ang is or yeah. whatever the fuck. And it, they don't even see him inside. It's just a big sphere that, that you see. I mean, yeah. I think that, yeah. I think and they the don't only, know what's and in like, there. And uh, like, eventually, uh, uh, what's her name? Fucking. Katara? Katara, yeah. Katara, she fucking, I'm sorry. I'm bad. Yeah, I'm bad right. at names. Oh. I'm just, uh, Katara yeah. fucking uh, was, uh, uses her water bending to bring the boat back because it started going away. And mm. that's what wakes up Aang, I guess. I don't really the remember. implication because it seems like once she starts doing it, she moves it, and then Ang like uh, the everything starts shaking. Yeah, and then it has the beam of light going up, and that's how the Fire Nation knows that they're there. Which I think is similar. In the it's show. similar to how it is in the show, I bet. Yeah, but yeah. like it is definitely like they bring the kid back to the village in the in the animated show. They do that, and um, then you know they're like, "Oh, what the fuck is an airbender? What the hell?" And um, he wakes up and they find Appa. I don't know if Appa was with him. I don't think so because they couldn't bring Appa on the boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which to me, I'm like, do they explain where Appa was in the meantime? I don't know. But yeah, in the whatever. show, they're just like, I'm like, where the fuck? Is- Did Appa fucking drown? Like, what's going on? Yeah, it's not really given clearly. Yeah. And where- then Appa just shows up. <laughs> he just kind of shows up and yeah. everything's fine. Um, And uh, yeah. And then basically they go through the whole the whole thing where they're like, oh, he's the airbender, blah, blah, blah. He's a, the last airbender. He's probably also the avatar because the last airbender is the avatar. And um, then the fire Zuko shows up and they have a little fight or and whatever. And surrenders himself. Yeah, and he goes he to jail. And he has some wacky <laughs> adventures. Thing, yeah. And he breaks out pretty instantly. Easily, yeah. Um, and Katara and Sokka go and try to break Save him out. Him. And then they have a whole fight with that while they're on Appa and things. And Katara saves everyone with her water bending, and that's like the first time she really uses it. Think, and yeah. then you clap because she did it. And, then... and the show doesn't make sense because she literally couldn't do it before. Yeah, so it's... Aang has to like activate her water bending and like teach her her water bending. Like it really. But we're cutting down on the misogyny, I guess. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Awesome. Yeah. And so. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing where it's like, um, it's really. Uh, yeah and also like uh, uh, we'll, well, I guess we'll get to this in a second but like they really just start rushing through shit they do yeah. so I remember even in the show like it took like two or three episodes like where they're just at the old air bender like shit yeah and like I think it's like the last 13 minutes of this and episode before there's a they... lot of really fun details like penguin sledding was the first yeah. thing in the in the show and they keep in a few things like they keep the thing where it's Aang on the rotating air ball and he yeah. slams into something because you gotta yeah. include that in, in you your, got yeah, it you know? that was a classic but like it, it's you know but <laughs> so uh, that was so yeah so then they're like okay we have to leave and go to um let's show all this dead bodies to you egg <laughs> right we have to go to the air the northern air temple so then they go there and um then in the animated <laughs> show, Aang finds out that they've been genocide. That's how he finds out. Yeah. So it's he's like, it's a really fucking sad, impactful episode because he's there and he's like, We used to play all these fun games, these like fun air temple games, blah blah blah. And this was it. We used to blah blah blah. And in the live action show, he already knows they're all genocided. Which is crazy. And he just shows up sad. <laughs> yeah. Because the grand grand told him that. Yeah. Which is like, what? Why would you tell a child? Everyone all of his family dead. because he left. Yeah, and they also very explicitly put the blame on him yeah. in the first episode. That's so crazy, dude. And by crazy, you mean awesome because no. this is an awesome show. So it's anyway, great show. So they go there, and it's a fucking really poignant episode. And it, the fact that it's stuck in my memory for like more than ten years is crazy. But like, you know, he's going and he's being a kid, and he's like, "Yeah, we all used to blah blah blah," and he thinks that Sokka and Katara can like play these games with him. But they have because no he clue. wants to play with his friends again, and they fucking can't because yeah. they're not they're not Airbenders, and 
they're like they kind of already know that the northern air temple has been genocided and they don't want to tell him because yeah. he's having such a fun time hmm. and he's like oh you know what i'm gonna go and fucking there's this temple that i was supposed to go into um that at some certain age or whatever and i wasn't able to do that do that so i'm gonna go into it and he finds monk Gyatso, his like father figure yeah his uh his necklace on a skeleton which yeah. is basically monk Gyatso. and he finds out that his fucking father figure died and everyone is dead yeah and he goes into the avatar state and he's, you know, in this deep emotional state, which Katara then brings him out by being like, we're your family now. Yeah. And this is like episode five yeah. or something, right? So they've had time with it. Yeah. They this have a lot of time together. 40 minutes into the show. <laughs> and it's not any, he already knows that all about, he finds Monkey Yatsu's dead body in the, in the. And he goes into the Avatar state. And, and then, then he just brings, brings himself, himself out, out of, of it. it. Yeah. Which is. If you don't know, the entire point of the show is trying to control the Avatar. But state. now it, se- it it does seem like he's just good at it. He's just great. He's awesome. So he's, what are we doing here? Yeah. Just go. Just walk up to the Fire Nation then. Yeah. I'm so sorry all, I yeah. seem so crazy about this. No, but no, you're right, but, though. like, what the fuck? Like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. I, well, I think the first episode is the worst one of the batch so far. Yeah. Because uh, the other ones are all right. They're but, okay. But they're they're just okay. Like, There's a lot of issues that they have to deal with now because of what they've they set, set up in the first up, episode. Yeah. Like, then they, you know, eventually then they get into the, the Earth Kingdom. Yeah. Or, well, first they go to Kiyoshi, uh, Kiyoshi Village, where, because the last Avatar, Avatar Kiyoshi was there. Mm. So they're trying to figure out what the fuck is going on, how to control the Avatar state. And um, in the, in the cartoon... There's like a whole like Aang wants to impress Katara, yeah. which kind of sets up their relationship where Katara thinks of him as a kid, but he doesn't want to be seen as a kid because he has a crush on Katara. Yeah. And they're kind of doing this like, you know, starting up their relationship, which becomes incredibly important later on in the series. Yeah. But here and it's like they're just happening. They're just friends. Like, it yeah. Seems like, you know, very platonic. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is fine. Yeah. I guess if you're going to change things about it, you know, but like, yeah. And um, fucking uh, so yeah, and then Sokka has the whole like the girls are fighting. What the fuck? The, yeah, you're a the girl girls and are you're fighting, and yeah. then he gets his ass whooped, and then he has a relationship with uh one the, of the Earth, main yeah uh, Kyoshi Village. It warrior. really just seems like they're. It's like a. I guess this is why it kind of reminds me of Percy Jackson. It's just like you have to go to a place and get a objective done, and yeah. then you gotta go to B place, B objective done. Yeah, and then it's just like tedious and boring it's like grindy in a video game almost you know where it's like yeah. and it makes sense in the cartoon because they're having fun because they're yeah, kids but no one's having fun no. but they're still having these like weird lighthearted jokes intertwined that sometimes work but mostly don't it they would work if the rest if of the were, show was lighthearted. yeah but no they're like they bring out like oh man we're gonna get killed by the fire nation there's two boats here and then it's it's the joss weed and ass fucking like uh <laughs> I don't even know if it's Joss weed and ass, but Not like it's, really, it's, yeah, it's weird though. It's just weird. It's yeah, it's like a and the Fire Nation came and killed all my parents. But you know, I guess that's what happens, right? <laughs> and then the other one goes like. <laughs> like yeah it's like fucking yeah and it's not like the, funny yeah and there's like weird like <laughs> scenes where like Fuck. it's like forced sentimentality where like the the little flying vermin whatever his name is momo, oh, momo the yeah, flying, the flying vermin. vermin whatever Whoa. fucking yeah i love momo uh, momo he's cute i know he's cute right, everyone shut the fuck up that's the word that came to my mind okay so <laughs> flying momo, lemur like it lemur yeah the yeah. flying lemur he goes on Sokka's head mm-hmm. and Sokka's supposed to be annoyed and like the actor just doesn't show enough annoyance in yeah. a funny way yeah but then the other two just start laughing anyway and like, like, like what I missed like joke, this doesn't man. earn anything this is not you're trying to make me feel like these guys are all connected but they're yeah. not if you want to know how I interpret every single conversation and leave confused watch this show yeah this is it's like why are we all like, like what this? are you yeah. laughing at <laughs> like, yeah I don't get it man yeah and then yeah. there's a uh, uh, oh god there's um th- there are Fourth episode was all right. It, it did feel rush, and it felt weird. Sokka and uh, uh, the Earth uh, Warrior. I can't think of her name as well. I'm sorry. Oh, the Kyoshi. Oh, her name is Suki in the show. Suki. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, like uh, she like they they have like a weird fling romance that doesn't really feel earned. It's just like. Yeah. 
Sokka peeping on her while she's training everybody, and then and she then she peeps him. on him when he's showering, which is like whoa. Yeah, and also like peeps on him when he's like out in the woods, like throwing his I guess not boomerang, but like hatchet at shit. And yeah, because like, I guess he doesn't. I guess he's not gonna have a boomerang this show. He's gonna have the hatchet. Well, that's his, like yeah, his it's close thing. enough. Whatever. Yeah. And then, like, she's, like, showing off of, like, the fan, and, like, at some point, he uses the fan to protect her, and then she gives him the fan, and I'm just like, okay. Yeah. It really just feels, it feels like there's certain plot points we have to get done, so let's just wrap it up real quick. (laughs) Yeah. Or else people are gonna bitch, like, why wasn't that in there? But, like, you don't even give enough of a fuck to, like, make it earned. Oh, (laughs) man. And it's, when you know what happens in the rest of the show... Because yeah. these characters come back, and there's reasoning I for bet, what's yeah. going on. But it just you it, can't not. The reason they didn't give up on this shit is because later they have to bring they have to it. bring yeah. it back. But so it's like it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it's like I you're it's like you're doing yeah. this out of obligation, not you want to tell a story. Exactly. That's yeah. the biggest problem with this, and I guess that's kind of how it is in Percy Jackson too. It's like you're obligated to have the yeah. A, a scene where you have to go into Medusa's house and you can't like it's like a season four of community the first episode where they do um they have to do the a babies ba- yeah. community babies yeah it's like just making fun of the audience for, for like being upset that Dan Harmon is fired and that there's gonna be a whole new showrunner yeah and it's like it feels disrespectful it feels like <laughs> it feels like you're making fun of us yeah, yeah you it know? feels so shitty it feels like you don't like Sokka and Suki's relationship he didn't want to write it in, which is fucking wild. Yeah, I'm assuming. Oh, there's no more left in there. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there, I, I assume. Yeah, I assume there's an importance to it. You yeah, know? there is. So it's just it's fucking wild, and uh, yeah. I don't know. It that's it's wild. Yeah, it's and then they go crazy. they go to uh, Ushima. What's it called? It's the uh, the mountain place. That's the third episode. Mountain. It's the one where they meet the mechanic mechanist. Oh, that's the Earth Kingdom. Earth Kingdom, yeah. yeah. So they go to the Earth Kingdom. They go to the Earth Kingdom, yeah. And then it's they have the terrorist cell. Oh, uh, Jet, yeah. Jet, yeah. Was that yeah. in the show? Yeah, that was in the show. That was in the show? Okay, that yeah. makes sense. I don't know if he, like, fucking did terrorism in the <laughs> show. I think it was, like, in the show it was kind of, like, a, actually, like, a, a you can have a real criticism about that. Like, Jet was, like, we're trying to fucking, you know, save like the, our the shit. city yeah i don't think there were um planning terrorist acts to Where get gonna people blow upset up the at the king. fire nation yeah i don't think that that happened <laughs> yeah think. that was weird right that was a whole weird but but it was basically like a commentary on like revolutionary tactics it was the show had like a violence is not the answer which is bullshit <laughs> but it is because it's a kids show i guess they got to say yeah, that yeah you got to say it yeah <laughs> So the way that the the live action show kind of does that is like it, <laughs> they make it so that they're just like fa- framing the Fire Nation for terrorist acts in the city. Yeah, and then being there to like save people. I don't remember if that was in the show, but I kind of remember being like, "Why are they not on Jet's side?" That doesn't really make any sense. And I've seen some critique of that as well, but I would have to rewatch the the cartoon. Yeah. So yeah, I just remember it, like the vibe is like Jed and Katara, like you know, Sokka just had a relationship or whatever. Jed and Katara now will have a relationship, but really, uh, Jet is like not a good guy. Yeah, he's evil. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, "Well, you're at the end." She's like, "Well, you're basically just like the Fire Nation." Then you know, and it's yeah. like, okay, he's he was good, and then he's bad actually because he's too left. <laughs> <laughs> He's so in horseshoe theory. Yeah, and, he's yeah. <laughs> but the last Thumbs up. Yeah, uh, but no, fucking, yeah. It's like, <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of fucking stupid in the show. It's if a I'm little for real. It's a little stupid, yeah. I gotta rewatch it, though. I am gonna rewatch the original show now. I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably want to rewatch, yeah, this as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so they have the... <sighs> What does anything happen in that episode that, like, matters other than they ha- they meet a guy and he turns out to be bad? Um. Well, there's Abed. There's yeah. Abed's Danny Beauty's in it. Yeah, yeah, and he's an interesting character because he gives out uh notes to the Fire Nation. Yeah, and it's you know, and then they almost kill him because yeah. he he's a, a traitor. But yeah. Oh, cabbages. My cabbages. Oh, cabbages guy's in there twice. He's a really yeah. good um 
dramatic scene. Yeah, when he's yelling at he the sky. He gets his fucking flowers, yeah. Yeah, apparently it's the same guy from the show. Which the, is amazing. That's, that's, I, that's I'm proud wonderful. of that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, And then, yeah, probably next episode's gonna be King Boomy, the whole situation with King Boomy. Okay. If it's not, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah, they're just out. They're, they left that, actually. <laughs> they, they're moving on. I'm gonna be pissed as fuck, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna be for real pissed. Yeah, because, you know, like, what are they gonna cut out and rush through because it, this okay, it's so only it's eight, eight episodes. It's eight episodes, and it's an hour long each. I don't know how long the original runtime was. Of it was like fifteen, per episode. fifteen minutes per episode. So it might be somewhat close, but it seems like they're still cutting and trimming like things. Yeah, yeah. Let me look because I'm curious now. Because I know they have the whole the blue dragon mask situation happens, and I don't know what the fuck else. I think it's just you know. Let me look. Yeah. Okay. Then I think eventually we get to the Northern Water Tribe. Which I gotta know what the fuck happens there, because that's <sighs> if you take out most of the misogyny in the show, if they don't confront the misogyny of the Northern Water Tribe, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen in the show. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. So I just looked it up. There, there was only like sixty three episodes or sixty one episodes in the original series, and they're about twenty three minutes apiece. Twenty three so, minutes. Okay. Yeah. So let me see if I can find out how many episodes were in like each season, because. Like, all right, so they're uh, fucking blah, 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 blah. After our last ever under season one, if 23 minutes at times 20. So that's what, 400 minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the original series was about eight hours as well. Okay. In the first season. But they're like rushing through shit? Yeah, they're like cutting shit out. I wonder if it's because it's live action. Maybe that's what it is. Because like you have to do other shit. Like you have to like walk around more. You can't just like speed run, you know, and shit. Yeah, yeah. That might be part of it. But still. I don't know. It just seems very not like the if if that's the case, the decisions they're making makes less sense. Yeah, because because you have the same amount of time, you could do it. Then. Yeah, you could probably do more of it. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's just weird how it's set up right now. Yeah, I you know I'm gonna blame Netflix because Netflix yeah. has uh, commodified the you make a really short series mm -hmm. like a mini series even almost. And it's only like an hour long episode. So you have to have yeah. everything in the confines of a mini series of an hour long show. Yeah. Uh, and you can only have like eight episodes because that's all we're going to spend the money on for it. Yeah. And because we want to get more done with less money. Yeah. And it's, it's stupid and dumb. If you're someone that has watched the live action Avatar The Last Airbender and you like it and you're like, oh, this is an interesting story. Because the story is there, and the story is very good. Yeah. You should watch the original. You would like it way more, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. yeah. That's that's. But Sarah, that's how a this four, three, up. and it makes a bunch of black bars on the side of my screen, and it's annoying. <laughs> Fucking uh, Little Joel said that... Um, also, Little Joel is a really... He did a really good analysis of the first episode. So. Yeah. Way better than what we said. Oh, for sure, yeah. But pretty much I agree with most of his shit. Other than he said that the, he l likes the M. Night Shyamalan movie more than this show. I haven't watched the movie. I don't know. I remember really fucking hating it, and I, I saw it in theaters. Oh, getting shit. Getting super fucking excited for it, and I hated it like a motherfucker. Truly traumatized. <laughs> like... <laughs> Never watch. I'm never gonna see another M Night Shyamalan film ever again. Fair, yeah. not even the beach that makes you old. <gasps> not even the grandparents <laughs> that aren't your real grandparents that will kill you. <laughs> not even the four horsemen at the cabin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not even any of those. Not even uh, uh, the happening. Aliens. Right? He did yeah, the happening. Not even the trees will kill you. Yeah. yeah. Not even the trees uh, <laughs> create a poison that will kill you. And Mark Wahlberg uh, just needs a second, please. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a fucking second. <laughs> <laughs> just give me a second but yeah no so yeah uh yeah i, yeah. I don't i don't know i i don't know about that and also maybe the show gets good there's five more episodes that we haven't watched i mean we'll see but it, it really has a rocky start the, the decisions that they've made so far are questionable it's just not right man not right it's at all. not okay also why did you make appa cry yeah, you that's a cheap freaks. shot. That's a cheap fucking shot. I was fucking. I felt violated because I was crying because Appa's crying. Yeah, you're hurt. And Ang can't get a tear out of his eyes to <laughs> save his life. Which, God bless him, he's a child. Yeah, he's trying. He's, he's working. Trying. Listen, I I don't want to blame child no actors too much. No one puts the much. eye drops in his fucking eyes, though. No one around is there to help him. Yeah, you know, he's like, in a pivotal role, and you can't help him be good <laughs> at stuff. 
Like, Jesus Christ. But Appa fucking cried. I cried. And I was like, I didn't want to cry at this. I wasn't trying. I wasn't yeah, you got, feeling. You got, I'm not feeling an emotional reaction to this happening. I'm crying because the beloved character from my childhood is crying. So is now crying. I'm going to cry. Yeah. It's like in like a uh, grown ups or like uh, cool. uh, Jack and Jill when at the beginning they have all the footage of twins to make it seem like it's sentimental to you. Yeah, no. And it's it's just an Adam Sandler comedy vehicle to like fucking <laughs> yeah, like yeah, fuck off to sell coke. That's a that's emotionally <laughs> manipulative, you you bastard! <laughs> like Yo, oh my Appa god, with the Pepto Bismol <laughs> crying. Ah, <laughs> oh, this oh, sadness man. makes me have heartburn. A logo to the thing. That's a red letter media, <laughs> media reference. Yeah. yeah. God. Okay. Wow. What was that? That was an hour and thirty. Um. Do I do any more? Okay. So yeah. I have we done this uh, segment before? I think we might have once done two sentence horror. Yeah. Two sentence horror. Uh. Most We've of the time is about fucking it. terrible. Yeah. It's people on Reddit. You have two sentences to. Make a horror story. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we've. I think we've talked about it, and I don't remember what the context was, but I think it was about like the, the medium the, betraying the genre or something like that. You know uh, what I mean? Maybe. I think it's just like these are fucking. That stupid. might be. Yeah. I'm gonna read a couple. Yeah. Just already, to, they're all bad. <laughs> I've not seen a good. All right, one. but why are they bad? That's what I want to know. And that's what we'll talk about. That's what we'll discuss. We'll do like thirty minutes of this. And transformative we'll... uh, Reddit reading. Okay, when it says uh, three hours, that's when I notice. Okay, stop. all right. Okay. I'm just gonna stare at the camera the whole time. Okay. <sighs> I flew into Atlanta because my parents were in a bad car accident, and I was told. Okay, <laughs> say this again. <laughs> Already okay. the grammar <laughs> too long. Too long. The 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 sneak Most around. Most people try to do like really huge compound sentences to fit as much information as they can in For there. For the two sentences, yeah. Holy that's shit. The, okay, all right. Okay. I flew into Atlanta because my parents were in a bad car accident, and I was told my father was now suffering from amnesia. Oh. That's the first sentence. Amnesia is spooky. <laughs> that's what, that's what. Okay, all right. All right. Well, aren't you a hot young piece of ass, he said as I entered the room. <laughs> Incest is scary. <laughs> what if your dad is attracted to you? <laughs> I guess is the horror. It's bad. It's not good. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want my dad to be attracted to me if he didn't know who I was. That would suck, ass. Yeah. Okay. Ask a question, Sarah, real quick. Yeah, okay, what's up, man? <laughs> did you read any of these before going into this? I did read this one before <laughs> going into this. this. Okay. Yeah, I fully okay. endorsed this. Um, Just now, okay. as you went in, I popped like five of them in my brain. Okay, all right, and, okay. Yeah. So what's wrong with that story? Why is it bad? Discuss uh, right now. piece of ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, uh, your dad <laughs> wanting to fuck you? Yeah, that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you've already broken me. Yeah. You've broken me more than any Am I the Asshole That's could. That's the top two cents horror of today. How many today? upvotes? How many upvotes? Um, 1,450. <laughs> Entirely too many. I can't... Okay, so uh, I feel like because everyone knows two cents horror is kind of ironic. Yeah, let's see. So What's like, the is meta, it, right? Is that the meta now? Is, is this just you just trying to fuck people over? Just like, you just trying to fuck with them? Like... <laughs> Yeah, I guess I so. I guess that's what it is. You're that's being good. a nasty, a nasty yeah, little, little boy, little, aren't you? Little sl- <laughs> ew. Fuck. Ew. <laughs> bleep that shit out of there. Uh, <laughs> top you're comment. Being a bleep little bleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> top comment is gross. Excellent, but gross. Not <laughs> excellent. excellent. Excellent? I got excellence at a fucking orchestra MPA. This is worse this than is that. This is worse than that, yeah. This isn't worse than a bunch of high schoolers playing fucking, I don't know. Okay, Sarah, but what if, what if you imagine Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, saying, what a hot piece of ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, aren't you a hot young piece of ass? <laughs> we just released the new episode of Sarah vs. Matt Damon. It's out sure. now on Patreon. But yeah, fucking. Yeah, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in Talented Mr. Ripley goes, gosh, don't you want to fuck every woman you see just once? Just and it's once? really good. <laughs> just once. <laughs> no, just once. <laughs> of course, just once. Whatever he says. Yeah. After that. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah, that's bad. That's a bad two sons horror because it's gross. It's, uh, it's just bad. It's I just mean, not. We know it's bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. We all know. We can why. all agree that's bad. 
hot piece of ass. <laughs> there was another like quote. Also, Atlanta. What's up with Atlanta? You just yeah, put it in a yeah. city. <laughs> Uh, you look like a cut of fuckable meat, aren't you? Is the <laughs> second comment. This is the most Reddit thing I've ever heard yeah, in my life. Yeah, Jesus Christ. That's <sighs> gross. That's just disgusting. disgusting. Yeah. This is disgusting. Uh, when I see my wife lying unconscious on the basement floor, I immediately leap down the stairs to her aid. Within seconds, the entire place is spinning, and as my legs give out, I spot the putrid sacks of potatoes tucked in the corner of the room. So, like, poisonous potatoes, like, is that what that, like, the fungus, like... So, rotting potato gas is apparently an urban legend that it'll, it'll knock you out. Oh, okay. That's what this one's What about. a scary sack of potatoes, dude. Ooh, scary. Dude, that makes my uh, infant uh, childhood costume where I was a sack of potatoes more scary, because I you could kill you. You were a sack of potatoes yeah, was. In the, for Halloween? Yeah. That's really cute. <laughs> Um, fucking, who puts a, pack, a sack of potatoes in your basement? In, like, the corner of the basement. <laughs> just, like, I'll I'll deal with these potatoes later. You can't just, like, leave potatoes out. You can't just leave, like, food out. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you doing? Maybe, maybe, maybe people do that. I don't know. I always put them in the fridge. That would be a wild way to, like, try to break into someone's house. Like, you're, yeah. you're able to get into the house, and then you're like, well, I need them all to be asleep to make sure I can steal so everything. I'm gonna plant a sack some, of potatoes. Some potatoes, yeah. It's apparently, I know, uh, like, if your potatoes start sprouting, uh, I think I saw this, maybe I'm wrong about this, apparently po potatoes can get poisonous if they, like, start growing shit on them, like... Yeah, that makes sense. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes like, sense. Like, uh, like the spouts, or not spouts, what the fuck are they? I don't know. Something, yeah. OP uh, linked an article about the family dying from the putrid potato gas. So it's based on a real story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's and what makes it scary, is that this can happen research, to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that a low level of like commodifying a tragedy? Like you see someone, like someone died from like potato poisoning, and you're like, I gotta write a story about this. I mean, you know, I if uh, writers though, like how I mean, many? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and like yeah, it's not all of us are Stephen King where we can create a new form of terrorism. You know, <laughs> like remember yeah. when he made the fucking Mister Mercedes uh, book, and it wasn't a thing for people to just use a car to drive into a crowd of people before that, that and, and then, then they immediately there were like 10 people that did that after he released that book yeah jesus yeah i didn't know that damn yeah fuck <laughs> or it maybe wasn't as popular but it, i mean i feel like most acts of terrorism in the united states currently are just like protests are happening and then people are taking their cars and decide just yeah driving into piece the, of shit yeah yeah christ this is bullshit um, okay, when the news said the infected couldn't open things, it was hard to believe I'd catch the virus. When my mom asked me to open the door for her, it was too late when I remembered why she couldn't herself. Ah, uh, so wait, okay, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold, yeah. Oh, hold up, wait. So the virus doesn't allow you to open things. <laughs> hold on. Wait. That wasn't where I thought you were going, but you're so right. <laughs> we're I no, just we're completely starting there. accepted that so shit. So yeah, yeah, you... <laughs> I just completely like, was like a, yeah, like a lamb okay, to the fucking sense. slaughter, Sarah. You just accepted that the virus doesn't <laughs> let you open things. That's what it, everyone on this subreddit is fucking brain rot. They yeah, think this so, is all so good. Okay, no wait. Idea. So you may okay. Let's. So let's that's the let's, one piece of magic. Okay, that's the piece of magic. Yeah. That there's a virus in your brain that doesn't allow you to open things. Right. So the the horror is that your parents will give you infectious diseases because they also. I, okay, that's not horror. That's just set up payoff i guess this is just a well yeah that's what this, this is, is just set up payoff factory that's like annoying almost so okay so you have a virus this is your magic your piece of magic you have a virus you have a zombie virus whatever that allow that doesn't let you open things and then you realize you can't so what so hold on okay what, what we got to define opening things now hold on because uh, all right okay i got comments all right okay because how would that work? Good story, but how would a disease stop people from being able to open things? Well, apparently who fucking cares? Polio paralysis comes to mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what someone said. Then the second one is vampires. So two forms of thought here. Two schools of thought. Vampires, polio paralysis. <laughs> Vampirism is the original polio, you know what I mean? Like fucking No, I don't know what you mean. That's a fucking ridiculous thing to say. 
And then someone goes, hmm, I thought of some kind of loss of fine motor co- coordination. Like the infected can basically still walk and do most things, but fine motor skills like holding and turning a doorknob are impossible. Yeah, he fucking said that in the sentence. Yeah, you can't. Right? I guess. What are we saying? Well, okay, read the original story again. Hold on. Okay. When the news mm. said the infected couldn't open things, it was hard to believe I'd catch the virus. Okay. When my mom asked me to open the door for her, it was too late when I remembered why she couldn't herself. So there really isn't just any implication. It's just you can't. You don't know. You can't, yeah. Like, yeah. Is is it you're too weak? Is it you're too well? Because okay, the thing is, like, you can't open things. Is such a broad. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean you don't have motor function or like. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means you can't open things. Yeah. There's Which to me sounds more like a neurological. Yeah, yeah. Like you know. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's what it feels like. One of my favorite comment on this one is, "Wow, didn't expect the twist." What do you mean? No, what? It's a, he There's set no up twist. the opening things. Yeah, and then what do you mean? <laughs> and you then didn't he couldn't it? open things. What a twist! What are you fucking talking about, dude? Taking how did the, you not see taking, that from sixty miles away, dude? Taking the most direct path from like your house <laughs> to work and getting there right on time. What a twist. Like, you know what a twist <laughs> is? A twist is like, boy, oh boy, I love being an ice cream man, but I, I, I'm I, secretly a werewolf. You know, like, like what the fuck whatever. that came yeah, out of even, fucking yeah, nowhere? You have, yeah, you know. It's, this is, but even like you twists, can't open things, my mom made me open things. And she was infected. And that, she was infected because she, yeah, that's, yeah. Because she, yeah. Yeah, and like twists also have to be like earned. Like they have to also make sense. You can't sense. do that can't though, just, two sentence horror. Yeah, so like that's why no twist earning. literally can't exist. Yeah, yeah. I think we should just give up on the idea that any of these are going to be good. If I'm for <laughs> real, that was only ten fucking minutes. I just looked at the clock right now. We're going through these. We're running through. I'm them. giving you five more minutes because I'm I am gonna run out. That's I'm gonna, ridiculous. I'm, I'm get it. This You're is ridic- this is You're the worst. You're being ridiculous right now. I'm <laughs> gaslighting you so I can continue to do these. <laughs> Fuck off. The night before our wedding, my soon to be husband told me that if he caught me looking at another man, he would rip my eyes out of their sockets. As he ripped off my veil, I realized that included my father. We did do this segment once. I remember that now because there was, was a like wedding years one. Ago, yeah. It was it was probably for Halloween or some shit. Because there was one exactly like that, where it was it was a wedding one. I remember it now, and it was like uh, she was begging me or some shit. Like the family was all dead, and like stop killing the family or some bullshit like yeah. that. I just had wow. Have you ever had a a moment of remembrance that like actively makes you like upset, <laughs> like just actively like I've tortured you for so long <laughs> you that have... you're having flashbacks to previous me torturing so, you? Yes, and then being yeah. like, "Oh God, I'm doing it again." Yeah, oh, you're Jesus. really just like, dude. Someone left yeah. a comment on one of the gaming things where yeah. I was like, "I like that Sarah just ripped into Josh on this one." <laughs> And all what? I'm thinking, was I don't it played even, up? It, no, I think it was fucking. It might have been. Um, I mean, how many times does that happen? <laughs> might have been story of seasons. That's hilarious. I don't even remember what the fuck? I don't remember I, what oh, I said. Was it the, well, you asked me if I gave a shit of like how I feel about the Marvel franchise. I that think might have been that one. That was a Skyrim one. I though. thought so, and I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Why would I have any opinion <laughs> on the Marvel franchise?" You're saying nothing right now. That was amazing. If you I, if you go to our gaming channel, if you want to see, hear more, for more of that. epic gaming moments like that, yeah, yeah, Where I had to stop fun. fucking recording halfway through because how <sighs> dog shit the Marvel fucking segment was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have such a headache right now. Oh, I'm good. genuinely upset. I'm gonna do another one. Uh, Fuck you. The jukebox plays back your favorite memory. The bartender claimed handing me a coin i could hear the customers behind me muttering that it must be broken as my dead wife's blood curdling screams filled the room how how many times in a 30 minute span can i say that was bad like why are you like the top to push comments this? to that one is just get a divorce which is funny <laughs> as fuck yeah murder is the ultimate divorce yeah jesus <laughs> 
Lawyer up, get a Lay divorce, up, murder your wife, delete Facebook, hit the gym. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I heard my child was being brutally bullied at school, I told them to turn the other cheek. For God had given me a vision. If my child refused to fight back, he would be beaten to death and recognized all over the world as a martyr for our faith. Go fuck yourself. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> What do you want me to say, Sarah? I don't Sarah, know. Sarah, this is your fucking segment here, yeah, all right? Fucking, <laughs> I'm presenting Sarah, the information. You're presenting information. I'm a journalist, and I'm uh, presenting the information in a non-biased way. Is this going to be the most fuck you, Sarah, as I say, like, per capita in a, in a We segment? still love each other, guys. Don't be... <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, like, I, you know, it's... A, it's a, yeah, but, like... <laughs> This is like I, there's only so much these two sentence horrors I I can handle before I I start actively getting like upset <laughs> at this segment because <laughs> like well, what was that what okay you turn the other so he's, your son's a martyr for bullies Jesus. for Jesus <laughs> hashtag bullies How for does Jesus that make any fucking yeah sense, it doesn't make actually. any goddamn sense How are we gonna connect it back to Jesus Yeah what the fuck Why did you have to bring him into this okay. Why did you gotta rope Jesus into this I don't know. When my child confessed their secret identity as the city's newest caped hero to me, I smiled and assured them that I already knew. And he was the Joker or something. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, why else would I take out such a large life insurance plan under their name? That's not a two cents horror. That's just a joke. That's, that's just a, a fucking joke. That's a joke. It actually has a setup and punchline for it's that. It's badly written. Yeah, it's just badly written jokes. Like, is part of the rules of Two Cents Horror that you only have, like, three minutes to write them? Yeah. <laughs> like, you have all the time in the fucking world. Why do you have to expend all of these extra words? Yeah, these are, right. yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, you, should, you should just try and do, you should just do setup and punchlines. All right, we're halfway there. We should just end it here, honestly. I think we've gotten the goddamn point, Sarah. <laughs> As she lay on Sarah, her... Sarah, <laughs> I think I want to... I'm going to say this again, and I want you to really think about what I say. I think we've made the goddamn point here, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Sarah. Sure. Listen, no, Sarah, I don't think you're listening to me right now. Sarah, Sarah, listen, a man's talking right now. We got to talk real quick. Okay, I can't, I can't <laughs> hear him. I can't hear him. <laughs> oh... As she lay on her deathbed, my elderly mother gestured for me to come close as, and then whispered, your father was not your father. When I asked her who my father really was, she reached out a bony finger to the nearby crucifix, which hung on the wall, and slowly rotated it until it was upside down. Oh, it's the Antichrist. Oh, uh, uh, isn't that fucking spooky? <laughs> Isn't it? Guys, let me know down in the comments below if that was fucking spooky or not. Josh, you're the one who refuses to take improv classes with me. Th what? Don't you this fucking is, dare You have decide. to be funny. This is me prompting you to be funny. This is what this well, is. Uh, uh, <laughs> Give me a zinger after this one, you know what, <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> do you mean a zinger? <laughs> Give me a zinger. What do you fucking mean a zinger? Do a, do a fun zinger after this okay, one, Okay, all right? right. Okay, I'll do... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Am I finally going to get a dog, Dad? He called out <laughs> excitedly. His smile quickly faded when he read his own name on the small kennel made of iron bars. <laughs> Child entrapment. <laughs> Bazinga, dude. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? This? Dude, kidnapping and, and uh, 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 killing your own kid's pretty cool, dude. That's <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty yeah, epic. Pretty epic. Yeah. Government finally realized how serious the mental health crisis really was, so they started offering free treatment to everyone who was suffering, and it really helped me. Ever since I got the implant, I just love working seven days a week at the fulfillment center, and I don't even think about my family at all. Really says a lot Where's about the society. Zinger, Josh? I was saying it, and you cut me off like Where's a fucking asshole. Thing? I was gonna the say we live comment. in a society. That's what's is that not the first comment? It should be. The top comment is aperture science. Don't bring portal and don't bring a good piece of media into your shitty piece of media. Don't fucking don't like dude, don't fucking like <laughs> Dude, like, like, uh, the room, like, referencing, like, fucking, like, Citizen Kane or something. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, like, no, fuck you. No, like, fuck you don't yourself. get to, like, dip, you, you, you didn't like, earn this. You don't get to, yeah. like, bring in another, like, good uh, story just to try and prop up your own. 
like it's fucking weekend at Bernie's. Like, fuck you. The person that you know that is like, uh, if you know someone that's like, dude, I'm so fucking sick and twisted, dude. I'm so sick and twisted, bro. I love, I write horror for a living. This is what they write. Yeah. This is what they write. It's dog shit. Well, because you can't, you can't do a lot in two sentences. You can do a lot. You can't do everything, though. Yeah. That's the fucking problem, and I'm repeating myself because mm-hmm. I feel I feel like I'm having a fucking like uh, a deja vu moment because I was sitting in this fucking chair yeah, in yeah. this goddamn room in this yeah. shitty city, right? Fucking in October, Damn, okay. shit, yeah. in October, fucking last year. It wasn't last year. It was probably earlier. I think. It was probably. Well, it was probably oh, you mean in the- 2023. This- this isn't the the fucking sh- horror short stories we read in October. I thought you meant two sentence horror specifically. I thought we did do two sentence horror in October. No, that was um that was a different Wattpad short story anthology. That was a whole separate. They had more than two sentences to set up their shit. It's the same quality. That's why I'm it getting them, same I'm getting them mixed up. Wow, Jesus. Yeah. I hate this. I hate this. Everything about this. Well, we. I, I just... Well, you only got eleven minutes left of it. So my dad has always been overprotective. So right before he died, he taught me how to use a gun. <laughs> Guess what happens? I. 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 She shoots. They shoot the dad, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just need to figure out where to hide his body. Hey, boom. Got it. I'm so good at predicting things because you're a fucking hack. God damn it, dude. You know, people who say that, like, people write fake Am I the Asshole stories, I mean, like, if this is the writing, like, you know, fucking level we have, at least it's kind of easy to tell. Yeah, I think you really give a lot of credit to writers, which is beautiful. Yeah, I think think that's amazing that you think that writers are that good, you know? Guys, Um, I went to school for writing. You, no, (laughs) they're not there. Some of them are okay. They're not writers right now, though. I'll tell, I, I'm not a fucking writer right now. I Me do this either. for a goddamn living now. We like we talk about media so often as if we know anything. I we know, don't. No, I know we nothing. Don't know, yeah, I know, we know jack shit. <laughs> yeah, if we're, I'm for real, we're we're maybe surface level at best at media. Analysis. I feel like, and somehow we're here. And you somehow know? we're here. Yeah, it's just a prank, bro. Why are you getting so upset? I continued recording as, as the I man stabbed him <laughs> multiple times. I'll start over. I continued recording as the man covered in hives struggled to dig the EpiPen out of the peanut butter filled kiddie pool, making sure my viewers would get a good look at his face when he found out it was fake anyway. Damn, we live in a fucking society. That's a Mr. Beast video. That's it really makes you think. Doesn't it? Doesn't it make you think, Sarah? Sarah, doesn't it make you think, yes or no? Is it, I, I, After centuries of rebel attempts, at last we destroyed the central server, shutting down everyone's brain implants, finally freeing humanity. After two weeks of everyone on Earth tearing each other apart in the streets, we, we re- restarted it. We remembered that the technology we'd so despised was originally designed for medical purposes. What? What does that even fucking mean? Used for metal. What are you talking about, dude? Second comment is skill issue. <laughs> I hate this fucking. I hate that. I can't. I'm, uh, I'm just else saying this. Someone commented so another knows. subreddit called Two Sentence Dystopia. You got it. Come on. Uh, it, it's, yeah, this is all the. It's, uh, what are you talking You can't make a dystopia in two sentences. Unless it's it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Like, come on, <laughs> like that's you. You should post that. Yeah, that's the real two sentence <laughs> horror. Best of times, it was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the the LA, I thought the, everything seemed to be good, but, but it was actually, actually bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Dickens really was the original two sentence horror. You know. Yeah. Los Angeles, the city of dreams, the city of lies. <laughs> baby shoes, six dollars, never worn. Whatever it was. Yeah, baby. Uh, um. Uh. Uh. Sids. <laughs> Something about something fucking, about Sids. Uh, 
I don't know. We're making fun of a disease that we don't we don't know anything about yeah. because we're horror writers. Yeah, we're horror writers. <laughs> isn't oh, it scary? Oh, isn't it scary isn't when it someone's scary? Ooh, when someone's a, real a psychopath disease that ooh. could happen to someone? Oh, Whoa. you know what's spooky? Lack of mental health services. Oh, ooh. it's so spooky. You know what's spooky? A sociopath with knives. Oh my gosh, it's you know so it's, crazy. Well, it's spooky. Alzheimer's. Everything's so scary because I've never <laughs> interacted I've never with really- it myself in <laughs> life. I'm limited in my personal experience. Yeah. And I, that makes it unknown, which makes it scary to me. And I, then I think it's, uh, since I'm so limited in my experience and my uh, emotional uh, intellectualism, <laughs> I think everyone thinks that way. And everyone will totally agree and give me upvotes on reddit.com yeah. to fucking do this stupid to, fucking to put bullshit. put a fucking pun in the comments and get karma. It sickens me how the other moms in my church group are always going on and on and on about how their perfect little brats are so good and righteous. So I killed them. <laughs> well, they'll finally accept that my son is much holier than theirs when they see his stigmata. The fuck's a stigmata? I don't know. Putting in a big word in your two-sentence horror to make people look it up and then be like, oh, that's what that is? Oh, it's a mark on the skin. Reported cases of stigmata take various forms. And they show some are all five sacred wounds that were, according to the Bible, inflicted on Jesus during his crucifixion. Wounds in the wrist and feet from nails and in the side from a lance. So she crucified her son to be Jesus. <gasps> that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, to look get it one up, up from yeah, all the other moms. Yeah, you're, that's that's what that's the shock. Is like you you say a fucking thing no one know, knows about, and you make them look. I'm into sure it. people know about it. We're just dumb. I what? Well, so there's also dumb people on Reddit. Well, fucking, yeah, of course for sure. there are. People probably don't fucking know that shit. I'm sure if we don't know, there's probably other people, that, probably don't people that don't know. It. Yeah. But there's also people that do know it. Yeah. Uh, my father's been acting so strange. We got five minutes left. My father's God, been acting. God, that was a six and not a four. I was looking at it this whole fucking time trying to figure out if it was a six or a goddamn four. So there's another two goddamn minutes of my life I got to spend on this. My father's been acting so strange recently, but I was trying my best to ignore it due to the fact we recently received his diagnosis. Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> what is it going to be? What's it going to fucking be, Sarah? Dementia? Like, what the fuck is it gonna be? Because dementia's fucking spooky, guys. <laughs> it's isn't it, guys? Guys, isn't it? I'm going. I'm losing my goddamn <laughs> mind on this show. This show that's supposed to make me happy and fun and enjoy performing, so I can come back next week and not hate this with every fiber of my fucking being. Like, can we? Can we? Can I enjoy, can I enjoy my goddamn job, Sarah? No, I can't. I can't enjoy my goddamn job because you, you're, you're over here and you're a fucking thrown your goddamn high chair, like looking like down. A baby? No, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking down on us I'm like not. the peasants we are. What are you talking about? You're thinking. You're thinking. I'm a man of the people. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Really, really. You're a fucking goddamn man of the people. <laughs> Sure. I'm just doing this for the content, baby. You're looking baby. down at us from your high tower. I didn't have tower. fan fiction to read, and I wanted to do something. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, fuck it, two cents horror. Two cents you horror. think I knew how bad these were going to be? You you had a choice. I went to the <laughs> goddamn bathroom. You had three minutes to look at the two. I did not two, have three minutes. You had about two Josh is, You had Josh enough time. pisses in the sink. I had like a minute no, and a half. Fuck, don't fucking bring in my <laughs> piss sink, sink bullshit to try and save your fucking cracker ass. Can we call this from, episode <laughs> piss sink bullshit? Piss sink bullshit. Yeah, no, because I, I hate money and I hate being monetized on YouTube. Yeah, that's why I fucking do this. No, <laughs> I go in the bathroom. I piss. And you have enough time to read five goddamn stories, and you could have pulled the plug. We were recording for an hour and a goddamn half. I'm looking at the clock to see if I can keep this going for three minutes. Oh, but all right, no, I'm no, gonna no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm sorry, so, gotta no, read you this You have time one. to read five. I have to. Have I did the first minutes. sentence. I gotta do the three second minutes. sentence. Yeah, time this to is no longer them. entertaining. Both of us <laughs> no, yelling. Sure, no, it is. It's so, not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it was okay. My father's okay, been right. acting so strange recently, but I was trying my best to ignore it due to the fact we recently received his diagnosis. It was not until his hands were around my neck 
that I could see how red his eyes were. And I suddenly realized that his paperwork said strangle syndrome. <laughs> red eye strangle <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Dem- Demontia, not dementia. So what? Fuck you. I got to read the top comment. Fuck you. This will be the last one. <laughs> okay. And I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear now you. you hear me? I hear you now. and I see you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, good. I hear you. I see you. All right. I understand where you're coming from. Do you okay? want to do you want to do this here, Sarah? <laughs> we'll talk about this in the car. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about this in the car. <laughs> the top comment is this is great. <laughs> demons would also be as believable an explanation as anything. What do you mean demons would be as explainable as a reasoning for anything? This is so insane. I gotta go. I gotta, okay. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get up and go. Demons would be would also be as believable an explanation as anything for how cruel and maddening dementia is. <laughs> what the fuck? I had a moment when being told the name of a relative's memory care facility, it was Dimensions. I heard Dementias because it sounds exactly like that. No, those are different letters Those are in different there. words, actually, yeah. And even more so <laughs> when you're anticipating the name of a memory care unit. Now I know it, I know it as Dimensions. Thank you so much. So sorry to hear about your relative. And yes, I'm sorry to hear about your relative as well. I'm also sorry to hear about your relative. We're all um, sorry to hear about your relative. <sighs> it sucks you that you think that they got demons in them, though. It sucks <laughs> to hear that. Yeah, it's a little Really fucking... sucks. I mean, you know. Dementia is just God trying to, uh, <laughs> just trying to get, read Pull out. Pull one the... up on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when your grandpa's got dementia, it's just trying to God. It's just God trying to get at you, yeah, Jerry. It's a test, actually. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. It's hard to deal with. So like, are you uh, proud of yourself, Sarah? Like, are you demanding. probably happy with the last half hour? I'm just saying, why would anyone get mad at me when you're <laughs> writing shit like that on the internet? You know what I mean? Why? <laughs> That's just being written. Like, there's other shit to worry about. You know what I mean? I'm I'm such a sweaty mess right now. Just like uh, you know, it's I'm uncomfortable. Mm. I wasn't I wasn't yeah. having fun <laughs> during that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just I'm just in a I'm in a it's state of minutes, I though, did that's 30 great. minutes. Yeah, I yeah. did it. I Good job. You know, like you know, when I feel like a mess like after like working out, usually there's at least uh-huh. like a like a sense of like I did something. Right, yeah. Well, you listened. So <laughs> that's fun. It's fun to listen. It's fun to read also. It's fun to read. But at what cost? Yeah, that's what I thought. Time. Yeah, no answer. <laughs> energy. I'm energized. Mega, I don't know about you. Of, per second of yeah. upload, <laughs> download speed. So where do we go from here, you know? <laughs> uh, fucking ads. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, if I don't earn a dollar from this episode, we will I'm earn gonna, at least a dollar. I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, you're being a little overdramatic now. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Let's get. Let's go to ads. <laughs> ads. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the ad break. Hello. I'm emotionally charged. <laughs> you enjoyed this podcast so far. <laughs> I'm not totally sure. <laughs> I got hostile in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you can get past the <laughs> hostile nature of what just happened, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell, and raise five stars on Apple and Spotify podcast. Why don't we just play up that I'm deeply uncomfortable? Yeah, by with you the energy in the room, <laughs> <laughs> the energy of the studio. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's, it's all fine. Good. Yeah, we're playing it up, of course. Yeah, yeah. we were. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're enjoying this podcast, you want to support the podcast financially. There's mm-hmm. a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna grab Sarah's coffee. I want to platform Sarah's coffee. Thanks. Because Sarah's you just coffee. yelled at me? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, <laughs> we have two different types of flavors of coffee with straightrivercoffee.com. There is uh-huh. Sarah's Chaos Blend as well as my Morning Blend. They are mm-hmm. two different types of coffees. Yours is a dark roast Colombian with chocolate cream, and mine's a light to medium roast with a caramel. Brazilian bean and caramel, and caramel beans. Yes. So go over there, check out the website. Links are down in the description for that. 
You can go to patreon.com forward slash ABWSTR if you want to support us on a monthly or a yearly basis. It's one, three, five, and ten dollar tiers. Yeah. We've started releasing more stuff. We just released the new Matt Damon episode, so we'll be doing that bi weekly mm-hmm. from here on out. And we we're gonna do the worst takes. That's gonna come out soon. And we're gonna put it on Patreon first to see what the reception is. So if you want to listen to that first before yep. everyone else, go check it out. It'll be up probably by the time this episode goes out. They're getting it early too, right? Yeah, they're gonna be getting it early, yeah. yeah. And this episode hopefully will come out early, even if it's just like the night before. Uh usually the episodes come out early. They're mm. always ad free. They don't have the segment in there. Yeah. And you can download the MP3 file directly, and it'll yeah. be, yeah, it's easy for you to have it. Uh, if you want to support the podcast one time, you can go over to buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSCR, buy us coffees, and we'll say whatever you have to say, as yeah. long as it's not bad. Yeah, we got one, I think. Yes. We got one from at foolish.ales, A-I-L-S. Mm. Uh, they bought us three coffees. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love watching your videos. It makes me feel like I'm hanging out with friends. Mm. Thanks. Keep posting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We will keep posting. We will keep posting. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other ways to support the podcast financially. There's mm-hmm. links down in the description. Uh, oh, stuff that isn't financial to help out good causes. We have the Palestine links down yes. in the description. Mm-hmm. We have uh, the distributed computing thing. Two people have joined and they've They're been starting it. to. Yeah. The, we've gone up about eight days worth of commuting computing in a single day so if you want to join in on that and help look for which what is that you you use your computer to like automatically yeah it, it, explain it, does, it a little bit yeah so basically uh basically you donate some of your computer time some of your electricity stuff like that uh to uh this organization there's different organizations it's on the uh boink network mm-hmm. uh so you can research stuff in like astrophysics you can do medical research mm-hmm. uh basically it, it takes like uh like right now the one that i'm focusing on right now is a cancer research one so mm-hmm. it looks for chromosomal like uh discrepancies and like what's more likely to cause xyz cancers that's cool it's supposed to help like with early detection and treatments of cancer so yeah, yeah i think it's a definitely a good thing to try and like help out yeah you're donating your computer energy to science basically. yeah as opposed to like if you're like mining bitcoin or something yeah. It's cool. If yeah. you have the if you have the ability to do it, it's really cool. Yeah, and, and it's you know it's free, quote unquote. It might add wear and tear yeah. to your computer. It might increase your electric bill, and it might make your room hot. Just a warning. Yeah, true. But if you only put like one CPU out of like eight or twelve, it shouldn't be that big of a thing. Yeah, it just yeah. depends on what you got available. Yeah, definitely. If, if you're not able to do it, def- you yeah, definitely don't. And if you have like GPU too, there's like one that does uh, COVID research. Oh, that's cool. And there's other ones that like do. There's like folding at home. I got to make a team for which I think the team might do have i can make it for you cool. links will be down in the description so you can look into it yourself yeah. also we're doing a book club um in the apwsdr discord which you can only access through patreon, patreon yeah um and we're reading illuminae and i think that the book club being's on the third or fourth yes we're setting up the timing right now so if you're you want to be there you want to read the book at the you board, got about a week you yeah. got about a week which i feel like is enough time actually a yeah. lot of people said that they were procrastinating me too. Me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but we're gonna uh, meet on March third or fourth, and then we're gonna choose the next book on March first, so that we'll already have that. Yeah, and we can talk about it. And also, once you join the Discord, you can also uh, suggest books as well. We already have a bunch in there, but if you suggest a book, there's a chance that we'll uh, read it. Yeah, and so it's written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, and so far it's been really fun. Hell yeah! Um, but yeah, we're gonna do that too. The Discord is also really nice, uh, inclusive like helping community where people have mostly gone there they've been about their life and they talk to each other and stuff like that yeah it's nice and it's really nice hmm. yeah. but yeah go check all that out all the links are down in the description oh and also uh my old band blue age that i used to be in they're releasing their uh a single which is like the first time in like a couple of years that they've done it it's called the red sea or red sea i believe it's just yeah. red sea and uh you can pre-save that in the description down below uh, if anything, check them out. See if they're your style. Um, they're pretty cool. I'm not on it, but I did some like songwriting for yeah, it. Yeah, and that's why we're advertising it. Yeah. 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 So go check it out. All the links are down in the description and enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Welcome back after that catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. That was a fun segment. I want to say that. I, I'm saying mm-hmm. it now also because I know we said it in the uh, ads, but just for patrons as well. Yeah, we're that was, fine. That was a bit. I was, was doing, a, bit. I, I was doing a, a very exaggerated bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you could tell because I'm willing to bet I was smiling for most of that. Oh, yeah. Yelling. And you should probably in the edit show me laughing my fucking ass off <laughs> yeah. at everything that you're saying. Uh, okay. Well, I got to edit? Sorry. Okay. okay. That's all right. But yeah, <laughs> all right, I'm ready. Okay. All right. This one's uh, we have a unique perspective on. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Am I the asshole for telling my super rich friend she is unbearable to hang out with? Ooh. Okay. Yeah. 
Are we the super rich friend? Is that our unique perspective? No. Okay. We're not rich, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. I had a fucking cup of ramen noodles for lunch <laughs> right before this, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay. I mean, it is really self-explanatory, but I'll give some details. My bestie since childhood, let's call her Jenny, has her finances secured. She, 35-year-old, built and made an exit from an from a business making her insanely rich she comes from a very humble background and i can confidently say that she has earned it by working for it okay i come from a pretty average background and have a pretty average job today and so do most of our friends i don't miss anything uh and i do have savings i can go on trips etc her story is a fairy tale and we are all super proud of her but a couple of years ago, she was approached by an agency that pushed her to become a public motivational speaker Ooh. and podcaster. Oh, okay. So that's all right. Interesting. Since then, she has become increasingly unbearable to be around. And I eventually came to the point where I needed to tell her. Fuck. Fuck. I'm offended. I'm so offended right now. They're coming for us, Sarah. They're coming for us <laughs> humble podcasters. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I want to say for the record, I'm joking because I'm willing to bet this is a completely different case. Because if this is a motivational speaker, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm also like, listen, shots fired. Let's the podcasting be, let's community be, let's today. Be fucking, let's be fucking real. There's some podcasts I find annoying. I'm not oh, going to yeah. stand up for all podcasts. Oh no, yeah, there's absolutely yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm willing to bet this this motherfucker is annoying as hell for sure. Uh, since Jenny got rich, she has always been herself, just in a more fancy package, and I've loved that for her. You go, girl. She has always been super respectful about other people's finances, and when we meet up, she's always up for whatever the rest of us can afford with. Even on her bachelorette party, she made a, a deal about making sure to do things everyone could afford. When pursuing her journey as a motivational speaker and podcaster, I had to revisit everything I thought about her. All of her motivational tips were related to not wanting to be an average person, Oh, and that anyone can become just as rich as her if they weren't lazy. <laughs> So, okay, wait, so this is also kind of like a griftery kind of thing, then, if, like, in person she's, like, normal and, like, being respectful about the wealth that other people have, but, but then, then you're going on your fucking ridiculous podcast, yes, and you're just being a huge asshole, like, you gotta get, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, yeah, and you can be just like me. Yeah. In one episode, she talks about making sure to surround oneself with successful people to avoid looking at average people as a <sighs> quote unquote acceptable norm. <laughs> she even Don't look at fucking normies. <laughs> They're poor. <laughs> you want rich, good, successful, good looking people <laughs> like me. She even went as far as describing another friend's husband as her nightmare partner as he quote unquote lacks ambition. She didn't mention him by name, but other details that made it made us able to identify him. Over time, this worsened, and eventually other friends stopped inviting her to things. Now the podcast took another turn, and she started to talk about how to handle when people turn your back on you for becoming successful, and how, quote-unquote, <sighs> lonely it is at the top. What top? I don't know. I've never heard of this woman. <laughs> like, who is she? What yeah, are you talking like, what are you talking? Because, like... The top podcaster. What, what money is this fucker making? Joe Rogan. Yeah, like, come on. There's, yeah, there's, like, you're yeah. not a fucking... Ah, oh, this is this story pissing me off. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it also, um, oh god, I I have a lot of thoughts. I know. I have too many thoughts, and okay. there are, some of them are conflicting, but most of them are like, fuck this person. Yeah, I but decided it was time to tell her that she's losing grip of reality, and that if she continues with being so judgmental in her podcast, she will end up just as lonely as she describes herself to be. Oh, this is about the <laughs> that makes. <sense. laughs> Get dunked on. Uh, Jenny got super <laughs> pissed at me and told me she wouldn't expect this from her best friend and claims I have been jealous and felt inferior to her my whole life, which is absolutely not true. She tells me the whole podcast thing is her playing a part and that she exaggerates her opinions for reach. She thinks I am the one who <laughs> has convinced all the others to leave her side and wants me to apologize before ever speaking to me again. Help me here. Am I the asshole? Should I apologize? And I think, yes, you're the asshole, because this is what happens when you start a podcast. <laughs> this is the natural progression of things when you start a podcast. Everyone who starts a podcast is a little evil on the inside. They start it, 
and then you get 10 followers and you get a big fucking ego you fucking and you burn ego. all your bridges with all your friends. That is. That's how it is. That's how it is. And you that's gotta how mafia apologize. Is. That's how mafia work in the podcasting industry. No, I'm joking. No, yeah, this is a big bit. Yeah. Obviously um, not yeah, the no. asshole. Okay. She's a bitch. Mean, yeah, sh- fuck her. <laughs> she sucks. Um, she okay, sucks. so yeah, here's, here's my conflicting thoughts. Yeah. Very, okay, because this is very minor. This is a very minor nitpick, right? This is about watching the podcast and judging off whatever you no, see. No, oh, not okay. at all. Uh, on our show, like yeah. I just did three seconds ago, we'll not name drop, but we will talk shit about other fucking people, right? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. However, we don't ever mean it, really. Yeah, I don't think, I never really mean it. And I never really, like, I will say verbatim, I, you know, like I've said, there's I have issues with other shows. I won't go super deep into it because I don't. Any of the ones care. we name, we don't really have an issue. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're not trying to start drama. Right? No, of course not. So, and like, you know, and I, I, like I talk about my personal life and I do talk shit about people I've known, yeah. people that I, I still not necessarily know now, but like, you know, like it, 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 I've talked shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk shit. Yeah. However, if I get if I get confronted about it. Yeah. You bet you're asking me to be like, yeah, I was kind of a dick about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the the problem here is that. OK, first of all, because this is a grift. Yeah, she's this is a, this is a, she's you're she's a grifter. Lying. Well, you're, but that's the thing. She says that she exaggerates her opinions. So that's another problem. That the opinions are is there. true, but like it's just like let down. It's not. She doesn't let it show. That's a, okay. So that's a problem. Like, it, so it's hard. Okay, like you and I both do this as our full time job now. Yeah, and it is slightly more difficult to keep a sense of reality, quote unquote, or like be. Mm-hmm. down to earth and not out of touch because we don't go into the grind of like you know of like a regular job like you know we don't have our normal like i used to work manual labor i used to work at food service and shit like that and yeah. i haven't done that for probably six oh my months God, now yeah. yeah i have no idea what the job market is right now because i'm not looking because yeah. I, we have the privilege the privilege of supporting ourselves without being at a company. Yeah. Um. And, and yeah. Only recently have we been reaching out to like like places to like help monetize the podcast a but little bit more. They're still not really our boss. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And like. And that's the crazy thing too is like who the fuck reached out to this person? I think that's okay. So I have a problem with podcasts. Uh, I have there's... a problem with podcasting agencies that like like a fucking big ass company that reaches out to some rando and is like here's make a podcast about something yeah and like and then makes that person feel like a big star you know yeah. and then cuts them off at the end of a year because yeah, that keeps that happening yeah you know and you're manipulating that person you're taking what they've created you're giving them like a couple thousand like uh, some money to make a podcast they now have this hobby that they think is going to be like their career and then they get and dropped then you, off yeah you drop them and you own all the rights to everything that they made that's the thing, yeah, and that's like and, fucking bullshit. Yeah, and that's a, a huge problem to me. And I think there's a lot of that too, especially with like how podcasts are, like uh, specifically podcasts that are like in like the personal finance and like in the oh, like yeah. you know and that kind of genre corporate, podcast. corporate podcasts. There's a there's a sense to me of like uh, ill, you know, of like, <laughs> but you know what I mean, like because like you know yeah. it's like, and I think the the because it's it's like um. Because uh, it's because it, to me it's it's grifty, you know. That's yeah. my feeling on it. I'm How not do saying I know you, what what you're like. You, there's yeah. a sense of a you need a a level of authority. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And it's like you have to prove yourself to be a, this financial guru. Yeah. Or if it could be like a life coach or like whatever. I guess S- sort of an issue with self help. Like a lot of these self help people are grifters. And I guess is the problem. Yeah. yeah. The self help. It's the Jordan Petersons. Like you know. Yeah. Like uh, you got to just work harder, simpleton, and you know. Yeah. Like the advice might be all right, but then yeah. also like who they are in their personal lives are not what they're saying in real life. Yeah, and like I and I don't really have a problem with like being exaggerated on a show. I don't yeah. have a problem with like even being reached out and joining a podcast network or yeah, working with issue. podcasts at we are ad agencies. We're talking with one right now and they seem great for us specifically. Well, they're a marketing firm though. They're not a network. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. it seems like we have, you know, a little bit more control over like, you know, how we do our show in that sense, you know, as opposed to like if we went to a network and it's like, all right, you got to make sure you have a podcast out every week yeah. and three hours is too long so we're only gonna do an hour actually right 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 you it's know. a creative we value creative rights over how much money we're going yeah, to make Yeah, exactly we absolutely could have just done a full right wing turn grift yeah or like a like you know start put out shilling 30 out minutes, like put fucking 
mega ads on it and this we're just saying the most inflammatory yeah, shit and we like could have I, done. and i have a relatively i i feel like we're a little bit lenient on ads like i think because uh, i was talking with it we had a meeting about this uh like i try not to do more than like one ad per 30 minutes yeah yeah, yeah. And i think that's a fair critique because i understand like listen i hate fucking capitalism i hate yeah. you know I do need money to fucking live, and that's the problem. Yeah, and it's it's uh I don't want to completely shell out like mm-hmm. you know, uh uh like ad space to Google or something mm-hmm. you know where it's like because like I've seen like videos where like they'll put a mid roll ad placement like every two minutes and yeah. it's like no I can't I I wouldn't we, do that right we operate on the rule of if I watched a video or I listened to a podcast where this was happening would I continue to listen to it probably not yeah. So why would I put that on my own podcast? You have to, there's a balance. And I think... But this, I feel like we've gotten off track, right? I, no, yeah, and I apologize. But I, I, I think I just want to preface that maybe that's my appeal to my own authority of, like, how I feel about that. Because, like, okay, because, mm. like, going back to this now with, like, someone comes into this person's life, the podcaster, yeah. and they're like, we're going to give you a bunch of money, we're going to let you have a show, yeah. and then they artificially have an inflated ego right because they now have the backing of some company Mm -hmm. and now they're able to and they have to now think about like the oh hearing about reach is crazy to me like the like i have to reach more people and the way to do that is to be more uh bombastic or exaggerated we've never changed what we do to reach more people yeah, which like, even, uh, like uh, if uh, we stopped cursing, we would probably reach more people. Yeah, fuck not that. doing that yeah, that's shit. Bullshit, yeah, the fuck no. Yeah, you <laughs> know it's happening. like it's you know it's like the, the sacrificing. I'd be uh, creating a new fucking canal in my brain. Yeah. I've been cursing forever. <laughs> yeah, no, same. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I can't not do that. We curse around your parents, around your family, all the fucking time. Yeah, and I think like there's a like the. The real problem here mm-hmm. is fuck the podcaster because they are a lying piece of shit who uh, is like pr- promoting harmful promoting harmful ideology. things and also throwing their friends under the bus while still maintaining crazy. some facade almost of like uh yeah uh, like we're all still being friends we're all being good and like I know you guys don't have a lot of money so I'll still be nice and like you're doing it but if there's like a deep down like these fucking poor motherfuckers like yeah. can't even pay for an escape room like you know what I mean <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah. you know like <laughs> god we're doing drinks at the same applebee's again yeah it's you know like, and it's uh, like fuck you they can't you know? go to like fucking frou-frou city or whatever i don't know <laughs> yeah, up, sorry. What, like, what the fuck is that? I, don't, I don't know <laughs> just like a fucking fancy town i don't know <laughs> i have no idea i'm trying to think of like a fancy restaurant I can't nobu i don't know it's like a fucking Chili's. la's place Chili's. Cheddar's for I don't Applebee's. Know. <laughs> yeah. No, and that, I have but like, no yeah, idea. like, I don't know. And I, I think, like, personally, yeah. I guess this is why this is fascinating to me. It's like, I don't want to, like, I do, I, I, you know, I know that there's a lack of relatability that I have lost doing a podcast full time. Yeah, yeah. You know, but like, I, I think it's more tragic for a podcaster or someone who's in a creative field to not fully understand what's going on in the world. That is pretty, and I think pretty that, bad. Like you need a sense of reality to fully understand. Because okay, like if let's let's okay, let's think from like the shittiest perspective from uh-huh. a like a business, right? Okay. Not even a creative person. Uh-huh. If you're a business, your whole goal is to be as relatable and marketable to as many people as possible to yeah. sell. X product, right? right? Whatever. Who cares? So it doesn't matter what the product is. Mm-hmm. If you are the creative in that set and you're the business, don't you want to be as relatable as possible right. and understand? Wouldn't there be a want to know, even like a basic understanding of what's going on in the world and what normal people are going to in order to market to them? That's kind of the evils of marketing, though. Is That's the, the evil part. No, I'm not saying like this the, is a good thing. No, because you're giving up your sense of self, everything that made you you that would initially have created. Um, I think that's why I get mad at companies that come in and make inject a lot of money into somebody and try to make a person famous because like you, they didn't have the initial... Um, like, yeah, okay, you can create a business and you can exit out of that business and sell it and make a fuck ton of money and you're set for life. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're a performer. 
No, yeah, exactly. Right? Um, so then if a company comes to you and says, all right, we're going to make you a performer and, you know, this is going to be your new career. This is how you're going to sustain yourself for the rest yeah. of your life. It's like uh, these fucking influencers that have, like, sisters or, like, br- and then their sisters are influencers now. <laughs> yeah. Just because their, their other sister was a good performer <laughs> and now you have to pretend to perform. <laughs> And do that? Yeah. It's fucking sad. If you're not good at it, you don't want to do it. You just like the money. Yeah. And that's that's all you're thinking about or caring about. And you're not excited to do the thing that you do that people watch and consume. And they're going to feel that, you know? It's, yeah. An audience is kind of like a baby where you're like, you, if the mother is depressed, sad, whatever, baby feels that. That's why people say like when you're in a shitty marriage and you think i'm gonna stay together for the kids the Mm. kids feel those emotions that you're feeling um Mm. and that's why it's better usually to get divorced uh in that instance because then the kid there's a possibility that kid's gonna live in a healthy home he might go through strife for sure yeah but it might be emotionally more healthy for the child Um, I, I don't fucking know any of that. Never been divorced, never been married, <laughs> never had a kid. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I guess This is you, what yeah. I've heard. So that's it. But I mean, in this instance, like with an audience, they know when you're having fun. They know when you're depressed. They know what's going on. They know when you're having a struggle with your content and why lie? Yeah, you know, and like... Why lie? You're yeah. just making shit worse for yourself. And harder and more emotionally draining. Unless if you're someone's gonna... in your ear telling you to lie. Yeah. And if they're saying, no, you have to say more shit to get and more that's reach. the problem I have, yeah, is like... You're, with if, marketing, yeah. Yeah, and like, I, I, you know, it's a necessary thing to have sometimes, like, in order to... If you wanted to make a podcast your fucking career, there is a level of, like, give and take... Yeah, I mean, it did, not it, it, with being like, not with platforming harmful ideals. That's though. the that's the thing, though. Yeah, yeah not with that. But yeah, if, yeah. There's a level of like you do have to like tamp- temper yourself a little bit. Like when we started, we were talking over each other all the time. Yeah, we still do it, but we don't do it nearly as much as we did when we started. I feel like we don't do it nearly as much, but yeah. And that was just like we learned as a skill. You yeah, know? that. And I'm not saying we're perfect at it at all. We're not <laughs> for sure. <laughs> But yeah. like, you know, that's that's part of it. Or finding things that are interesting and like the things that we do on the show, it's something that we genuinely like and we want to do. Yeah. Um, and we we want to have fun and do this Which, podcast. Again, from the shitty business perspective, should be seen as a good thing because you're thinking long term right. as opposed to short term profit. Like you're not fucking yeah. Bitcoin pump and dump, you know? Like, exactly. That's fucking... the thing. Like, why would you treat this business as like, okay, I have to be as beige and as white and as blonde as I possibly fucking can so that I can reach this specific audience? Like, why would you take an audience and be like, I have to change myself to fit in with that audience to get all of that audience to get the most money I possibly can? Yeah. And then your job is a chore. Like, the whole point of... <laughs> I thought the whole point of joining a creative career is not to have like a chore for a job. You right. Know? And then you just made your job a chore for uh, selling yourself out for like as much money as you possibly six can. Six digits. Yeah. You know, a month. <laughs> like, and it's like, if you wanted six digits a month, learn a fucking skill. Learn, like, like join yeah. another company. <laughs> yeah. There's... If you were cool with having a boss and being told that you need to change everything about your life and you need to wake up at six and go to bed at seven and whatever, and who gives a shit? Join a company. Yeah. Just go do that, you know? Yeah. Worm your way into corp- the corporate world. Why do you need to be shitting on this fucking art form? You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I do hate I do hate finance bullshit like that. Yeah. I will say, and I do want to talk about it, I cut off my family before doing this podcast. Mm. And then when I started doing the podcast, or well, I cut off my family to like a couple of episodes into doing this podcast, I think. Probably, yeah. Uh, it was right it was around the same time. And it became a thing where my family started listening to the podcast instead of talking to me about stuff. And mm. then they would be like, I can't believe you said this on your podcast. And I was like, the fucking, I'm learning. <laughs> I will say, people have also said, I can't believe you said this on the podcast to me as well. And it's like, dog, I'm learning how to perform, man. Yeah. Like, why didn't you text me first? You know? Mm. There's a little bit of that. I mean, I will say the shit that she's saying is garbage. 
Yeah, so like you got to bring it up. Yeah, yeah you it's definitely got to bring it up. And also, it is like bringing it up and talking to them about it, you know, as opposed to just like, yeah. Yeah. It's a little jarring to realize that the people in your life would rather just listen to the shit that you make online than actually talk to you. That's a little jarring. Yeah, it's a little jarring. It's yeah. a weird feeling that only podcasters know. I yeah. Think. But it's also, yeah, everything that I say in a podcast, I take ownership of. If someone came to me and said, why the fuck did you say that? Which they have. I've been like, well, I fucking mean it. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I fucking mean it. That's what it is. And, um, you know, we can talk about it and maybe you can change my mind or, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, or I, maybe I can explain more why I feel that way. But yeah, I mean it. That's what it is. Yeah, I, know, I, would, I get that. Everything I've said about any of my friends, I would say to their face. That's fair. And, and my family, I would also say to their face, hmm. which is kind of crazy. If you go back and look at how much shit I've talked <laughs> about these people. No, I get it. But yeah. I wouldn't shy away from it. I've been like, yes, no, this has happened. This is an instance where you hurt me and now we've moved past it. And I was using it as an example yeah, I feel to that. help other people. Uh, and I enter into a fugue state when I'm on the show. <laughs> And uh, nothing I say I'm accountable for or liable for, uh, just so everyone knows at home. It's a fucking weird feeling. I could totally understand if this lady is like, why didn't you tell me about this so I could explain that I was joking? (laughs) Yeah, it was just a bit. It was just just a bit to get money. What are you talking about? I just love money, guys. (laughs) But, But yeah, but also it's hard. As a friend of a podcaster to know what the true thing is and what yeah, the not true what, thing is. what you're saying. Yeah, you know. Hmm. It's rough. It's rough. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Yeah, fascinating. Mainly I wanted to do that for the joke of like, that's what every podcaster becomes. Yeah. The funny, like you start a podcast and you get like hey 12 guys, people save listening. this, bookmark this episode in particular. So yeah. five years from now. When, when we're like, I'm the king and we're queen part of, of the, podcasting. We're part of the 100 Thieves uh, cash app fucking whatever the fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. I don't know. Something. I can't joke about that too much. We're going to be doing host ad reads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. We'll yeah. see what happens. Um, but um, yeah. Actually, on that last episode, you guys went a little too hard on that. <laughs> we're, we're backing out of the agreement. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know what? Honestly, fair. If they brought that up, I'd be like, I get that. I've been, I'm waiting for that email for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's like, actually, we went into the back catalog. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> how dare you? God. I, mean, I don't know. It's it's just, you know, you make content, you put it online, some of it is a part of you, some of it is a performance. Yeah. So I think as an audience member, it's always good to know that the person that you're watching on screen, even if you know them in real life, is not the person that you that know in see real life. That you IRL, yeah. There is a, there's a level of... Also, the people that you know in real life, you don't know what's going on deep down sure. inside of them. They could yeah. have these terrible fucking icky thoughts about you. Um, and you'll probably never know unless like it comes out somehow yeah, yeah. like and that's hmm. just kind of it's really unfair but that's how life is and it sucks and yeah i definitely don't think she's the asshole though no yeah definitely not the asshole fuck that podcast they sound yeah. like the worst they do they, and it makes fucking, i can say that i have a podcast i can i can do it extra special that person's the asshole the podcaster's the asshole because you're making podcasting look bad and now yeah. i have to deal with it yeah as a i have to deal with this like well aren't all podcasts just like joe rogan just like joe rogan finance bullshit motivational speaker types no eyes rolling back in my own head when Jesus. I hear that. Solved it though, but they're the ones making the most fucking money. Yeah, those pieces of shit. All right, okay. This one's also uh, the one I'm going to start off with is also related to us. Oh Jesus Christ! Not about podcasting. Just about us. Yeah, it's it's about us. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting. There, I've seen a lot of ones that have my name in them. Someone once um fucking mentioned us in an "Am I the Asshole?" post, like uh, because they like listened to us. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. So shout out to that person. Shout out. This one might piss you off. Oh God. But not for like a bad reason. Not what? for like it's not like an age gap. It's not okay, like something like good. that. Okay. Great. Thanks. I'm being nice. We're being nice. Okay. Am I the asshole for not going home and changing my shoes for a restaurant's dress code? Okay. I, female 29, was recently invited to a work dinner as one of my colleagues is retiring. 
Okay. It was being held at a little barbecue restaurant in town. Hmm. I was told that the dress code was smart casual. Okay. For context, I wore a nice skirt and button up and a pair of Crocs. I live in a hot climate and lots of people such as myself wear sandals slash Crocs slash flip flops everywhere. When we got to the restaurant, it turned out they had a dress code and the hostess loudly told me I couldn't come in wearing Crocs. It was extremely embarrassing in front of my coworkers. I don't really understand the problem because there were people wearing sneakers, Converse, etc. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. But Crocs aren't? Oh, but Crocs aren't? Why? Fucking why, yeah. huh? <laughs> Fucking love Crocs, dude. I'm just gonna real yeah, quick. Josh is his fucking I, Crocs I am on. biased. I am biased. I am wearing this in the show. These help me stay Bro, productive. The dirty bottom of your Crocs, man. They are well worn. Yeah, because we love our Crocs yes. here. Crocs are the only shoes I've ever worn to Universal that don't give me, uh, uh, what are they called? Blisters. Yes. Yeah. They're the only ones. Yeah. They make my feet feel better after standing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't understand what the problem is, because they're made out of fucking foam or whatever. Well, Sarah, they're just ugly. Shut up. <laughs> they're and good. Ugly, and ugly things don't deserve love. <laughs> I hate Crocs. <laughs> that sounds like a Darman, uh, like, moral <laughs> of the story. Yeah, that's the, that, yeah, I, thanks, Darman. Thanks, Darman. Thank you for not paying your fucking actors a living yeah, wage, you, you piece, piece of, of shit. Garbage. Yeah. God. Okay. All a right. lot of strays this episode. Yeah. It was extremely embarrassing in front of my coworkers. I don't really understand the problem because there were pro- people wearing sneakers, Converse, etc., and that's right. fine, but Crocs yeah. aren't. It wasn't even a fancy restaurant, so I really wasn't expecting this. It's barbecue, this. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Going to Four Rivers and being like, you can't wear Crocs in here, sorry. Like, oh, Four Rivers is going to tell me what I can and can't do? <laughs> Are you for fucking real? Anyway, one of my coworkers urged me to go home and change my shoes and come back. I was so distraught, I ended up just going home and not coming back. Baller I move. suffer with anxiety, and the whole experience just made me melt down. Yeah. My coworkers are now collectively angry at me for leaving and not coming back. Suck my ass. My boss told me the event wasn't about me, and I should have sucked it up. Was I an asshole for leaving? Why do all of these people have such an emotional interest in you? It's a Listen, they're, they're a retirement party that's nice to go to, but it's also a dinner... Like, it's after work hours. Yeah. You're so not like, required to cares? be there. It's yeah. nice to be there. What if you're like, I'm poor and I don't have any other shoes? Yeah, you're just fucked then. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. you have to wear business shoes that you wear at the office. like To the barbecue place? To the barbecue place. It's a barbecue place. I'm going to I'm going to include these because every apparently I, I picked this one because I was looking at like the top for the past week and am I the asshole? Yeah. And this was the first one that had the response of asshole. What? So Reddit thinks this person's the asshole. So I'll piece of offer the following explanation. I haven't read this part. So let's see if there's like some new information. OK. I refuse to go home to change my shoes to appease a restaurant's dress code that I didn't know about. I could have just gone home and changed my shoes and come back instead of bailing on my coworkers retirement dinner and putting the attention on myself. I don't know if it's putting I really kind of reject the idea that like you didn't cause the scene you showed up in Crocs to a to a barbecue restaurant I feel like that's normal shit but yeah. also I'm a Croc wearer so I have fucking no clue I will say too like maybe this is a bias like being a Floridian because like I will say yeah. I've been seeing Crocs way more often well they're good like, this year <laughs> yeah like they're good they're, they're good they're, they're good, good for your feet outerwear. they feel nice it's it, honestly it was before Crocs it was a fucking nightmare trying to find a shoe there's a to walk weird, around in. yeah it's it, yeah it's like some shoes are really uncomfortable i will say there is still a weird stigma against crocs yeah and i felt that too like i think i put it on myself there was one time you were still at ucf like going in person i think you were in an art class oh and yeah you, we went to a, a mexican restaurant by the by ucf and you were there with a friend and i felt like i wasn't gonna go in so i wore my crocs yeah because i didn't i haven't fully committed at that point to wearing crocs like outside and like a yeah, place yeah we were going to aztecas yeah yeah and i was like and you were inviting me to dinner i was like all right i'll join like, instead yeah. of like because i think this was around the time i was doing uber eats as like extra cash yeah and so I joined in and like I felt like weirdly embarrassed about myself wearing Crocs. I was like That's so funny because I felt really weirdly embarrassed because we were in a booth and I I my belly was on the table of the booth. Oh yeah. And I felt shit. insecure, yeah. So yeah, like I don't know. I feel like there is a weird stigma against Crocs. Like the first comments you're the asshole. They said business casual not foam toddler shoes. 
Yeah, like they're like really people just don't Whoa. like how they look. You're a redditor. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, okay, yeah. I didn't okay. know. Fucking, you're being a judgy little fucking asshole today. Jesus. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess you would be in the Am I the Asshole subreddit. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Reddit. Anti-croc for no damn reason. Yeah, it's ridiculous to me, I feel like. I think, I don't know what the, because, like, I guess there was, like... I mean, I guess maybe crocs aren't business casual. I, business maybe. casual, I would think, like, a fucking, I don't know. Like, a, like just sneakers, sneakers, yeah. Sneakers or moccasins. But, like... I don't, not even sneakers, like a, like a, I don't know. I don't know. If this takes place Flats. in Florida, because it is a hot climate, is what it says. Yeah. Every, Come on, everyone wears everyone crocs around Everyone wears here. goddamn crocs around that's, here. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. I'm not even going to pretend like that's like a bit. Like, that's like... We're also really anti-corporate world. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, I really... If a job told me that I couldn't wear crocs... I remember I wore crocs to uh, Morgan and Morgan when I worked there. Yeah. They were totally cool with it. I thought I couldn't do it. And they were like, no, we don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a, I think there's and a they level... they called that business casual. Yeah. So... So and I think like oh it's weird for a barbecue restaurant to have a dress code I guess that's maybe that's strange. kind of strange to me because yeah. like um I I I can understand like a fancy restaurant having a dress code I can understand that I can understand some jobs requiring some sort of dress code of like just wear a button up and khakis and yeah. you know covered shoes whatever mm -hmm. but like I I feel yeah that's usually the thing with me is like open toed versus not open toed yeah and Crocs are at least not open toed yeah they got know. little holes in them but they don't they're not open toed yeah and like you know like if you're working in a place where like you have to carry a bunch of heavy shit yeah probably don't wear or like, like liquids like hot liquids or something yeah like if you have to or if you're walking on like you need like non-slip shoes yeah there are genuine reasons to have a dress code a lot of them yes. are safety you mm -hmm. know and i think but if you're purely going for like a like a fashion like you know like uh like okay, what, holding a, a, gotta... us to a higher standard there's that's when i start going like but like come on really i you really know? think the whole thing's bullshit if you're not yeah. even if you're not in a customer facing role and the company you know doesn't need to like brand you with some bullshit you know what i mean yeah what's the point like i genuinely and maybe this is a hot take but if i'm at a company and it's an office job yeah the only thing I need to be not doing is not wearing inappropriate clothes. Yeah. Like fucking lingerie to work. A bikini. Yeah. Yeah. Like a bikini speedo, to work. Oh, yeah. And that's it. You, yeah. I shouldn't, I, there shouldn't be a, all these other fucking rules. I think especially. And if there are, give me a uniform. Yeah. Give me a uniform. If that's what's going to be. If that's what it's going to be, give me a uniform. If not, then I'm going to wear what the fuck I want. Yeah. And then you're going to have to give me a response as to why I can't wear whatever it is I'm wearing. Because also, and if like, it's um, toddler foam shoes, I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself. That's the thing, too, because now there's a new God. dichotomy, I feel like, after COVID, where a lot of people start working from home specifically. Yeah. Like, there's probably people that, like, don't fully adhere to a dress code or, like, if you go on a Zoom code call, that's the one time you dress up, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, so there shouldn't be a reason, like, if you're, like, say if you're going to a fucking phone center, yeah. like, what's the harm in wearing, like, jeans and, like, a polo, even? You yeah, know? that's like, fine. That, I feel like that should be okay and acceptable. And I'm like, if that's business casual, the Crocs are business casual. Crocs are fucking business casual. Maybe yeah. we're Floridians, maybe that's, like... We might just be Floridians. Yeah, but, we might like, just be anti-corporate, but I'm fine with that. Yeah. If you want to cancel me for the, my Crocs take, you can do that, for listen, sure. Listen, all I'm saying is, if you listen, if you listen... <laughs> Hold on. If you listen to Tom Petty and uh, uh, Jimmy Buffett, you should be pro cro Crocs. You should be pro Crocs right? for sure, one hundred percent. One of the only good things about this state, man, is, is that you can wear fucking Crocs everywhere yeah, you want, and no one gives a fuck. No one gives a shit, dude. I was at Universal. I was seeing people with the Crocs, or someone in front of us like Spider Man Crocs. I was like, oh, hell, hell yeah! yeah. Cool. Remember when we saw the the Shrek Crocs, the Shrocks. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I think we went to a uh, uh, the oddities yeah. thing. It was that Prometheus where it was? Esoterica. They were in front of us in line. Yeah, every time we wear Crocs, there are people in front of us in line, and we're always like, "Hell yeah, Crocs!" And we we're friends, you know. We're yeah, buddies Croc now. Buds, yeah, Croc buds. I think yeah, I think there hasn't been a time in the past few months that I've gone out somewhere and I didn't see someone with Crocs. Yeah. I think I've seen it plenty of times at Wawa. I've seen it plenty I'm of times at Publix, Walmart, everywhere. Yeah, like I'm fucking sorry. But, uh, I don't know. It feels like, um, and maybe this is just me being like, I hate situations like this where they're like, mm, you are wrong, even though we were kind of vague about the fucking shit that you needed to yeah, do to get here. Thing. Like, You're that's, wrong. That's shitty. Go home and feel shame and come back to us. And then you don't do that because you're a person with respect for yourself. And then they get mad at you 
for not feeling shame. Like, dog, chill. Everyone needs to... I would quit. Yeah, I'd fucking quit. (laughs) Fuck this place. Be like, oh, I didn't know everyone here was lame as fuck. Yeah, and you get on your skateboard and fucking rock on out of there, dude. I don't know. I mean, whatever. Reddit can call you an asshole because they're a fucking bunch of fucking... Also, you have anxiety. Like, yeah. Fucking, yeah. I would also be anxious. Like, I damn. I would be anxious after that, especially. Especially you had to go home and drive home however long it takes to get new shoes and you get show up late anyway. Like, I'd be embarrassed, yeah. Yeah, they're probably gonna make fun of you the rest of the night. Yeah. It, there's a, it's a yeah, lose-lose fuck yeah. fucking situation. Shut the fuck up. I can't believe that. Not the asshole. Toddler foam shoes. Toddler foam shoes was really bad, yeah. It's like my whole And ass. then everyone was like, but I love giving my Crocs to my kids. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, so you actually do enjoy oh, Crocs so for your fun. kids, yeah. Mm. But if you're an adult, you can't have fun. You can't have fucking merriment. Yeah, no one can have fucking merriment in their goddamn life. At a barbecue place. At a barbecue place. Who are you? Who are you to tell me what to wear? You you fucking serve barbecue. You guys might be surprised to hear this. Uh, fucking uh, Croc money is as good as, like, Converse money. <laughs> They're expensive. Yeah, for that, they're, yeah, they're about this, they're the same price as a regular pair of fucking shoes. Like, yeah. yeah, they're yeah, they're pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They're worth it though. They fucking are worth it. Honestly, can we contact? Can we contact their Crocs? media company and tell <laughs> fucking, them we yeah. will totally do a croc ad? I absolutely fucking, yeah. would. One hundred percent. I dude, love like, them. Okay, so contact much. them, dude. Right now, use code APWST, dude. Oh my god, that'll be awesome. Actually, I will say apparently, uh, because they have the holes in them, I just looked into it a little bit more. Apparently, because they have the holes in them, they're not technically closed. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, that makes shoes, sense. But whatever. But I'm like, there's so many the stories that come through. Am I the asshole, dude? Like dads that won't parent their kids and <clears> then are <throat> mad that their wives won't have sex with them. Not the asshole, bro. No, dude, you're just fucking being. So that's what cool. it's like to be men in the society. Lady you're wearing mad Crocs at a woman for wearing Crocs. A fucking barbecue place. That's it. Also, the lady at the front didn't have to point around in front of everyone. Didn't have to shame yeah, her. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's no one has fuck to sh- you. like. Fuck it. You could have been way nicer. Yeah. God. Even if it is like an open, closed, uh, closed toed shoe what, situation, yeah. you could have been way nicer. Exactly. Okay. Right, I'm ready for the next one. All right. Am I the asshole for ruining a toddler's brunch? <laughs> See, you told I, you told me this one. I did forget about it immediately, but like, I think you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm curious. How do you ruin a toddler's brunch? You don't give them the airplane. <laughs> Here comes the airplane. Crash it! Oh my god! Genuinely conflicted on this, so let me have it. If I was in the wrong, we will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Watching you. <laughs> So my husband and I both had a rare weekday off and decided to go out for brunch to spend some quality time together. Okay. The cafe was pretty crowded, and our table was next to a woman and a toddler. Okay. I think the little girl was her niece rather than her daughter, based on a phone conversation she had, but I'm not sure. The toddler had an iPad or tablet with the volume turned up really high. And guys, I don't know what she was watching, some kind of game demo or kid show, but the noises were really annoying. Lots of aggressive beeps and bangs. Mm. It was so loud, my partner and I were struggling to have a conversation. Okay. What annoyed me was the woman was just sitting there playing on her phone and completely ignoring the toddler. I know they have short attention spans, etc., and sometimes need help behaving in restaurants, but she wasn't even trying to engage with or entertain the little girl. Anyway, their food comes, and again the woman ignores the toddler, who starts throwing her food around. Eventually, some egg flies off her spoon and lands on me. The woman does then come over with a napkin and apologizes. I tell her it's absolutely fine. Kids will be kids. But while I have her there, I ask if she could turn the volume down a bit on the iPad. I think that's fair. Yeah, at this She's point, She's not saying already... put it away. Yeah, because, like, I, I, you know, I'm always a little bit conflicted about, like, toddlers and, like, technology. Oh, you know, Because, yeah. like, I know that's... It's, it's a like, debate. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think, you know, I kind of err on the side of, like, I know that technology is made specifically to keep people on technology and it's probably not good for them but yeah. also i'm not really gonna judge i'm not gonna tell a parent how to parent obviously or yeah. like even like an aunt or uncle you I know recognize it can be hard to keep a child engaged all oh, the for time sure. yeah, yeah but i think be a little bit like considerate this could, uh, yeah this considerate and also like be a little bit more present with the kid because like it does mm. seem like if you're on your own phone yeah it's like come and on, like man. yeah like so i don't know yeah if we don't know but yeah The woman seems really annoyed by this and says snappily, well, she'll just scream if I do. 
I tell her I'm not asking her to turn it off, just down, but she is still very huffy. She pointedly asks for the rest of her food to go while packing up, telling the little girl, we've got to go. It's ruined now. What? You, what? <laughs> yeah. So the the lady with the toddler just goes over to the toddler and is like, she ruined it. So now we have to go. <laughs> Does the toddler even understand words at this point? Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We're, we've not been around children. I don't know. <laughs> children? <laughs> what what What's are that? they? Uh, she pointedly asks for the rest of her food to go while packing up, telling the little girl, we've got to go. It's ruined now. At first, I was sure I was in the right. She made no attempt to play with her toddler without the screen, even to help her eat once the food arrived. And I saw no reason why the volume had to be 100%. But I'm now pregnant and was chatting with my sister, also mom to a toddler, about eating out with kids, etc., and told her this story. She said, I was an asshole because I made this woman feel unwelcome in a public place and um, asked how I'd feel if it was me. Now, I'm confused, genuinely unsure uh, what the etiquette with the other people's kids should be, and want to know what's reasonable, etc. So, Reddit, am I the asshole? Mm, No. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, you had one request, and they decided to, like, throw shit at, like, the table, uh, like, table for them to be like, this place is fucking ruined, dude. Like, It's a real classic manipulation when someone gives you, like, a really slight criticism and then you're like i guess i'll fucking quit i guess everything's ruined i guess i have to change my life around because of you yeah it's like okay you're just doing that to make someone feel shame yeah and bad about like bringing an actual issue up you had fucking toddler food on you like literally it was flung at you and also it's probably not the best time for a toddler you know what i mean like she's probably not having a good time no yeah exactly and then you had one request, which was just lower it a little bit, you know? And it was the it's volume also like, the I mean, thinking about, like, you know, like, loud sounds in general, like, yeah. do you really want to put your kid through, like, the ringer of, like, loud sounds early on and, like, fuck up their hearing, potentially? Yeah. Because, like, the other, other thing I could think of is, like, giving your toddler, like, headphones, because I've seen that before. But even then, I'm kind of like, I'm, ooh, I'm iffy, because I'm, like, just make ears. sure, yeah, if there's a way to, like, lock something at a volume that's, like, low, you yeah. know? I think that's probably preferable, but like, I don't know. Like, that's just, it's just weird. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess I. The, the only thing I'm worried about with like kids and technology is that I know is addictive. You know, it's like fucking slot machines, you know, of like the yeah, bells yeah, and yeah. whistles of like whatever. I don't think, you know, I'm not going to be a complete fucking boomer where I'm like, technology can't help kids at all. I no, think it definitely can. You have a wide range of like entertainment options and uh, ways to educate kids through yeah. technology. Like technology with like um like parental control on it. Yeah, I feel perfect. Like that's I fine. think that's yeah. I think that's more. That's a yeah. good compromise between unlimited access and no access. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I think those two yeah. extremes are probably pretty bad yeah and i do think uh, especially know. it's not always the best when you see like uh like there are some some am i the asshole posts about this where they'll be like on a train and then like a woman will have her kids running around and you know she obviously seems like exhausted yeah and someone will go up to her and be like you should parent your kids more and she's like i'm just fucking I'm exhausted trying. yeah you I'm know trying. i'm like I don't yeah know what to i do. think as you know that i think is kind of wild and reddit will always be like they should be the perfect parent <laughs> And it's like Reddit's there's no such kid. thing, yeah, as a perfect parent, yeah, yeah. So like, God, it just sucks, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's just this person. I don't know. I, yeah. Just to lower the volume a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Especially I, if you're in a public place and like, you know. I also feel like in general, if you're a parent and you're telling a kid, "Hey, could you just change a little bit?" and the kid's like, "No," yeah. it, you have to know how to like con like resolution that you know yeah i get that like i just watched this uh, tiktok about like gentle parenting isn't just giving your child whatever they want it's parenting gently it's yeah not beating your kid <laughs> it's what it is it's not Bars screaming on the floor. at yeah it's not screaming at and and abusing your child it's just like okay we have to go now all right let me help you back up unless we're gonna go and even if your kid is like no you're like well that's what's gonna happen so we're going to go yeah that's you know and I don't know. Once again, not a parent or whatever. No, yeah. But still, it's like you're allowed to have a bad parenting day. Absolutely. Yeah. And everyone else is allowed to be irritated as well. Yeah, exactly. You know? I don't think necessarily it means that she's a bad parent or a bad caregiver. I guess if you're like just looking after your niece, but yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's I crazy. I think the response is wild. 
I guess everything's ruined. ruined. Everything's yeah, it's, ruined. It's, it's, that's pretty wild to like say. Yeah, it's one of those situations where the end kind of. Now you know more about their relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. If she's the type of person to be like, well, I guess everything's ruined now, and I'm going to punish this child by not having brunch. Yeah. Because of some random lady <laughs> saying yeah. that we're being loud. What a well, now bitch. I know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, God. Now I feel bad for that kid. Exactly. Jesus. Solved it, though. Solved it. Hell yeah. Also, why are we teaching people that we have to make everyone feel, like, acceptable in a public place? It's not, like, my job to make everyone feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I kind of get that, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure it's nice, it's good to be polite. Oh, yeah, no, I think, yeah, you should try to be a play as much as possible. There's a stop to that. Like, yeah, I'm not going to bend being over backwards for of, everyone. Yeah, if you're being taken advantage of. Yeah. yeah. That's wild. All right. God. Yeah. Am I the asshole for refusing to apologize to my friend's boyfriend? I don't know. This is so fucking stupid. I feel like I'm in high school again. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. I, 34 female, have a friend named Summer, also 34 female, who's a free spirit. Okay. In high school, she got sent home multiple times for going to class barefoot. Oh. And wearing Crocs. I'm sorry. <laughs> then, okay, yeah, you're an you're asshole. You're a total asshole, yeah. Uh, she dropped out of college and hitchhiked to Mexico one summer, didn't tell anyone where she was going. She forgets to pay her phone bill, so she's occasionally unreachable. I know that sounds like a lot. And it'll sound like even more by the end of this. Mm. But we've been friends since we were 10. I don't care that she's a mess. I love her. We're in this for the long haul. Summer's boyfriend, Will, is the opposite of her. And I'd hoped he'd mellow out her wild side. You know how Summer forgets to pay her phone bill? Well, apparently she did it again. I found out when Will called me Friday morning while I was at work. He said he was having trouble locating Summer. I said... Yep, that's summer for you. Mm -hmm. If you get a hold of her, please tell her to call me. Best of luck. Then I hung up <laughs> thinking nothing of it. Okay. Will rang me again and demanded to know where summer is. Uh? I truthfully said that I have no idea, but I'll call her parents for him and see if they know. I went to do exactly that, but Will called me again Dude, before what? I could. Okay. I answered and it was the same question, but angrier. Where the fuck is my girlfriend? I'll spare you the suspense. This went on for quite some time. Absolutely no clue why Will was convinced I knew know where Summer was, uh, but I told him exactly when slash where I last saw her, and then she and that she disappears like this routinely, which he damn well knows they've been together for a year. I've used the plain uh, plainest language possible, but Will just wouldn't relent. He called me about 50 times. I put it on silent at first. Oh my God. But by the 51st time, I'd had enough. Dude's I, a freak. And I, I answered and said, bro, stop blowing up my phone. I don't know where Summer is and I'll block you if I have to. Yeah. You're going to get me fired. Then I turned my phone off. Today, Summer called me. I was expecting some form of, of explanation, but she opened with, I'm handing the phone to Will. He wants an apology. I stopped her and said, apology for what? She said, for saying that he blew up your phone. To which I replied, he did blow up my phone. And I was at work too. Maybe I shouldn't have threatened to block. But he didn't get the point the first 50 times I said it calmly. Summer said just apologize because he's really pissed. And here's why I'm probably the asshole. No. <laughs> no to all of fucking that. I'm not apologizing because her milk toast boyfriend, who oh, is shit. basically okay. the human equivalent of All a right. dry ham sandwich, All right, okay. is on some ego trip. Dry ham sandwich? <laughs> okay, I get it. I said that, but nicer, and she hung up on me. Okay. Now I'm thinking I should have sucked it up and rather than jeopardize two decades, decades of friendship. Am I the asshole? What, is Reddit, what does Reddit say? Reddit says not the asshole. All right, yeah. You kind of went in all, you didn't need to do all that, but it's fine. I don't think asshole either, no. What does, not, none of anyone's actions made any fucking sense. Why? What does he think that she knows where she is? So that's like the first comment. Apparently the OP would cover for Summer in high school. Like where, like if she would sneak out, uh, she would cover for Summer basically. But they're adults now. They're adults now though. That's the thing. Yeah, Why would like, Summer I've, need to... Like the boyfriend is a is a 
is a big red flag. Yeah, that's the one thing that everyone keeps saying, and like I kind of get it. Is like it seems like some abusive behavior. Yes. If you're if you're like going like, where the fuck is my girlfriend? Like that's crazy to me. Especially like yeah, also if you don't like have a hold on Summer like in a year in, and like trying to like actually, like that's weird to me. Like not know fully knowing that Summer does like if you're if she's a free spirit in the sense of like she just sometimes goes off the grid. You should probably know that by now, right? Listen, okay, listen. I want to address. Okay, listen. A couple of episodes ago, I was like, people are saying that um, ghosting is abuse, you know, and that's shitty because we're not thinking from like an abuse victim's perspective. Because yeah. if you're in an abusive relationship, sometimes you might need to disappear. Yeah, and in that case, you know, ghosting is fine. And so, uh, people commented. I think one specific person commented that I they didn't agree with me at all. Uh, specifically, I said the phrase, no one owes you anything. And they didn't agree with that at all. And they told me about their story. And I'm not going to reiterate their story. It's not mine to tell. But I it sent me down a rabbit hole of looking up like, what is the difference between ghosting and no contact, right? Yeah. Because I've gotten no contact with people that I believe deserve it. Yeah. Do they think I ghosted them and ha- and am now abusing them? Like that's wild. Yeah. And it's interesting to see like if you say is no contact abuse, psychology today is like, no, it's needed. Is ghosting abuse? It'll say like psychology today will be like, yes, it is a form of emotional abuse. And I'm like, well then what's the fucking difference? From what I've seen sending a text or sending a message saying why we are no longer speaking is the difference. Mm. but also i've seen other different there's not really like a clear definition and it seems like it's muddy because people will kind of flip between both of them like and i will say like i do have empathy for people that like you're in a 20-year friendship and then that person just drops off the face of the earth yeah that sucks ass Mm. then yes i i can totally understand that being traumatic yeah for sure um and i believe that i believe you that it's traumatic no, yeah. So I, I do kind of want to take that away. I forgot. I think I planned the episode after that to say that. I might have forgotten, which is my fault, and I'm so sorry. But um, this in this instance, it's like the guy is giving off abusive red flags to me. Yeah. In that he's saying, where is my girlfriend? She's yeah. possessive to him. Not even saying like the name. Yeah, of, like where's Summer at that point? But not it, that wouldn't even matter. Where's yeah. my Summer? Yeah, like yeah, no, yeah. She's my property, which I mean is maybe a uh, uh, a jump, but there are men that believe that. Yeah, and then not taking no for an answer. 50 yeah, fifty times, fifty calls, and like still even on silence, like. And, and then, then demanding, demanding an, apology. an apology as if he was a woman spoke to me out of fucking line. All right. Yeah. yeah or or uh, out for of tone. blowing up for claiming that he blew up her phone when he did. Yeah. That's a turn of phrase. That's not anything that is even derogatory. Especially after you like offered to call her parents to see if they knew anything. And yeah, like, you were offering to help. And he was like. Well, I got to call her anyway. Hold on. Yeah, no. Where the fuck is she? Also, the automatic assumption that his girlfriend left in a way that is um, shitty. So what's going on in their relationship that he believes that? Yeah. I don't know if she's even done anything wrong or if he's the kind of emotional abuser where he believes that everything that a woman does is somehow going to fuck him over. Yeah. Because of, I don't know, maybe it, it, we have no idea, but like could be multiple reasons personal trauma he's been cheated on in the past he thinks this is something that's going to happen blah 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 or she's done this to him multiple times and he you know whatever Mm. if op is covered for summer in the in the past uh in their relationship i could maybe understand why he would think that it would be a little different but if that's not the case and they've only covered for each other in high High school school? what's why yeah why are you (laughs) jumping Go to that from like when you were teenagers to probably like mid twenties or so. Oh yeah, twenty four. Yeah. So why is there such a severe lack of trust between these people? Yeah, that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. That is weird, and it's not. Maybe I'm not gonna say this guy is abusive, right? One hundred percent. I don't know him. It's a red flag, though. I, as a woman, I get activated. Yeah, (laughs) I get when I hear like he called me fifty times, screaming at me, "Hey." Blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, alert, it's, the, alert. it's the oh god, we gotta get out. We gotta get her out of here. 
And also the fact that she's not explaining what happened to you. Yeah, like... And he has to supervise her on the phone? Yeah, like, her calling, uh, Summer calling her OP to give the phone to the boyfriend is crazy. Yeah, if someone blocked you, you should accept it. Yeah, you should just fucking accept it. I'm sorry. In every case. Even if they're an asshole and they blocked you randomly, blah, blah, blah. It's just not going to go well. Yeah, it's not It's not a good uh, uh, thing to do. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't hunt down people that in it, general. Yeah. If they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to talk to you. And yeah, exactly. for whatever reason, and it could be really mean, it could be ghosting, it could be something that is emotionally manipulative. Let them go, though. Do, just don't play the game. That's my advice. I understand why someone would want to. No, yeah. But I just think in general, it's just not going to be a good time. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully that's a better differentiated way of discussing this situation. Yeah, and like... Hopefully. Tell me again. Let me know also if you disagree still with me, because I want to know. I really want to know. This is very interesting to me, the difference between no contact and ghosting. No, I get that. <laughs> solved it, by the way. Solved it, yeah. Yeah, solved that shit. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could be friends with someone that just disappears. Also. Yeah, just like randomly. We're going to Mexico for a whole year or like... We're just randomly. Yeah. I think I would be pissed. But also, I mean, you know, that's just... Some people are like that, I guess. You can't yeah. control people. That's the shittiest part, you know? Yeah. You can't control it. I wish I can control people. So I wish. You're in. <laughs> you said no, no. it, not me, man. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> you can't control... I mean, it is a shitty feeling, though. You, it's uh, People don't realize the feeling of like... Oh, but I deserve this level of behavior from this person, right? Yes, but you can't make them do that. You know, mm, that's yeah. kind of like the theory of like codependency of like I can fix him. No, you can't. You can't. Or I can fix her. Or both sides. It's like, no, you you deserve that behavior from someone who it wants to perform that behavior for for you, right? Mm, yeah. But these people, you can't fix them. Yeah, you can't. You can't stay with them, and if as they show you their actions multiple and multiple times over, you can't you can't love them hard enough that they're going to change and become the person that you see in your mind. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's wild, man. I fucking know. Yeah, yeah. solved it though. Ugh, easy solve. Easy solve. That's fucking wild. That's wild. Where the fuck is my girlfriend? Do you like that? Do you like that acting I did? Did you like that acting I did? That voice acting I did? Did you like that? Did you like that I changed it up a little bit to be the guy? <laughs> Are you proud of me? <laughs> I'm proud of you, honey. Yay. <laughs> All right. That segment you did before was dog shit. That was <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it would just be funny. <laughs> uh, you need me to be proud of you, and I need to be proud of me for torturing you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. It's a real okay. Cain and Abel situation over yeah. here. Am I the asshole for telling my niece and nephew that it's okay to eat frozen food? No. It's awesome to eat frozen food. Frozen <laughs> food's awesome. What? It's fucking dope as shit. Fucking. Okay. Oh, God. This one's funny as fuck to me. It's another parenting one. I'm so sorry, guys. But God it's, damn it. It's I don't know how to fucking fuck. parent. <laughs> okay. My half-sister, Kim, 32 female, has two half-siblings. Me, 24 female, same dad, and Ben, 24 male, same mom. Ben and I are not related, but went to school together, so we're sort of friends. Kim is married with two kids, twins, male and female. Uh, seven month, seven, seven, eight, year seven, male and female. Okay. Um, I've been living in another city since 18, but I'm now back in town for a week to visit our dad. Kim and her husband were out of town and asked her mom to watch her kids. Ben called me three days into my visit, telling me that his mom has some work emergency and dropped the twins with him. He asked me to help him watch them while he made dinner, so I had headed over. Okay. The twins were watching Ben microwave some TV dinners and then fry up some frozen french fries and then boil some frozen vegetables. Awesome. The twins said their mom told them food should be made fresh and they saw nothing fresh there and wondered if they could actually eat the food Ben made because their grandma also made food from scratch. Mmm. So they've literally never had like frozen food before. Like, I, I, yeah, they didn't wow. even know that they could eat it. I guess. Wow, is what okay. they're saying. That's wild. Yeah, they and wondered if they could actually eat the food. Yeah, they. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Huh. I thought Ben put together quite a nutritious meal and told my niece and nephew frozen food is alternative for busy days and not necessarily bad. They actually yeah. ended up enjoying the food. 
Ben and I thought it was a success. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, frozen food will never be as good as fresh. But no, yeah. I mean, it is a good in a pinch. Like the amount of frozen pizzas this podcast runs on. Oh my God. Let's be real here. Let's like be it's, for real. it's a necessary. There's some times you just need to have some frozen food. Also, like as I've gotten better with cooking, frozen vegetables are literally the way that we get our vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I've started doing like actual produce and fresh stuff as we make more money with this podcast. Yeah. That's the thing. But like, yeah. Like, uh, but yeah. If you're poor, yeah. That's how you get your yeah, veggies. I think, there's, I think there's a class issue here as well. That's yeah. what I think too. Yeah. No, yeah. Later, Kim called me and said she was not happy. I told her kids it was okay to eat frozen food. She said she appreciated Ben and I feeding her kids in a pinch, but it was important to set a right understanding about nutrition. Okay, this is the part that fucking. Okay, I'm ready. Because it's not even really about not eating frozen food or whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. I asked Kim what she would have us do, and she suggested Ben and I should discuss the meal with Ben's mother, and then while Ben cooked, I could have kept the kids elsewhere and only brought them the finished food. What? So just lie to your kids that the food's fresh, even though it's frozen? But it doesn't matter. So then it doesn't matter then, because if you're going to be... If, yeah, saying. it doesn't matter if it's frozen or not, because you're just okay can't with them eating it, but they can't know? Why not? Why? 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 Do that's you want weird. your kids to be that sheltered? I don't yeah, understand Yeah, that's weird. That. that doesn't make sense to me. I thought it was ridiculous and would refuse to babysit in the future, but for this, am I the asshole? No. No, I don't think so. I think it's weird to put an expectation on a kid that they can't eat anything frozen. Yeah, that's wild. No ice cream? Wait, how, how far does it go, actually? Because, like... Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to... So someone was like, okay, checks notes, no frozen food. Good news, kids. It's Pop-Tarts and Yoo-Hoo from here on in. <laughs> Not a bad true. deal. Not a bad but, deal. I mean, okay, because, like, that's, that's crazy to me, because, like, frozen food's fine. Listen, frozen food is not as good as fresh food. It's and not there the best. Are, and there are shitty brands and yes, shitty things. One hundred percent. If you just eat hot pockets all day, yeah, you shouldn't be you're eating that have frozen some food. Fucking gas intentional, uh, you're whatever it's called, ruin your body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are there are limits. You shouldn't have frozen food every single day. Yeah. But if you have to eat frozen food every day, I'm not gonna judge you. Because yeah. yeah, it's fucking. And by ruin your body, I mean like you're gonna shit a lot. I don't yeah. mean about weight. You know, I don't care yeah, about that, baby. Yeah, no, yeah, like it's yeah. you're you're yeah. How many times have we had hot pockets and then immediately. <laughs> Immediately after diarrhea, yeah, insane diarrhea. The fact that Jim Gaffigan has not had a hot pocket, did you know that? Really, he's never had one. And he's just made a what the fucking. Poser. How did he know? Yeah, <laughs> that that experience is so real and true. He's like, I don't fucking eat them. Yeah. So okay, yeah, uh, uh, okay. So <sighs> frozen foods, like I, I you should. Uh, this is a problem. Okay, the real problem here is that you're not teaching your kids a healthy relationship with food. Yes. Where food, like, no matter what the food is, with, like, some exceptions, yeah. like, most food has nutritional value. Yeah. And has, like, a, a purpose and use, right? Also, more importantly, I would argue, you're teaching your kids to be little fucking nerds. Yeah, that can't eat. They're going to be over at a friend's house, and their parents are going to be awesome and making them dino chicken nuggets, and the kids are going to be like... I don't eat frozen food. They're gonna get bullied. Dog. They're gonna get bullied. What if? Yeah. What if they yeah. have like a, a, a frozen pizzas or like the pizza? The what the fuck are they called? Oh, the bagel bite. The bagel pizza bites, bites. Uh, pizza, pizza. What the fuck are they I called? Don't, I don't remember. Pizza. Pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. Yeah. Oh, pizza Tatino's rolls. pizza yeah. rolls. That's like a classic and like Americana classic. food, I guess. You Jesus, know. Jesus. Yeah. There's a lot of frozen foods that are yeah, like. Listen, they're not healthy for no. you, but they are nutritionally sufficient and are able to help. Like having frozen fries and like, you know, the just potato. Yeah, it's still potato. You know, it's just frozen. Yeah. Frozen. The purpose of freezing things is to extend their shelf life. And that's why, you know, like if you get something fresh, it's not going to last as fucking long. No. That's why if you get beef from like, you know, the place, you there's a freeze by date. So you try to freeze it so it can last a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, and like I, it, it, freezing things is a tool. Yes. In the kitchen. Yes. It's a, it's a tool in the same way that a knife is a tool, in the yeah. same way that, you know, a fucking fork is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be allowed to have frozen food. You should be. And it's not the end of the world. It's just and so And you shouldn't wild. hide it. Yeah, the hiding. <laughs> What's with that? Why are you you're giving up the goat, man, a little bit? Yeah. You don't like, really give a shit about frozen food. You care about your shit not seeing the help make the frozen food for yeah, them. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's, yeah, just... 
you weirdo. Just own up to what you're eating. And you should also, that's a bad thing too, because then you're not teaching your kids to question where their food's coming from. There Interesting. You there you go. That's wild. You fucking killed that, dude. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Solved it. Yeah. Am I the asshole for asking my brother's girlfriend to pause her studies and take care of their son? My brother's girlfriend to pause her studies to take care of their son. So this dude's not even in the relationship and he's telling the mother of the child what to do to raise her children? No. <laughs> no, that's not okay. what's happening here. Right, it's, sure. only, it's only not what's happening I just made here. Up, I made that shit up, I guess, I guess. Okay. <laughs> you're just sure. you're, you're a crazy, crazy woman. <laughs> Category Making five shit woman up. moment. Category five woman moment. <laughs> My 21 male brother, 19 male, and his girlfriend, 20 female, recently had a baby and they're currently staying at her mom's place because she wanted her mom by her side. How old is OP again? I'm sorry, Mr. 21. It. 20, okay. Brother's 19. So everyone uh, knows everything about children. <laughs> yeah. Brother's 19, girlfriend's 20. Yeah. And they're staying at her mom's place. Right. Given their age, they are college students. My brother is in a civil engineering program, and she's in economics. I mentioned their course, but it's the reason why I suggested to my possibly future sister-in-law to take a gap year or two to take care of her son. My reason is that she's in a four-year program while my brother's in five, and if, she's take, if she takes a gap, she can nurture their son and still graduate together with my brother. Right, but when does that end? Yeah, but she, do she doesn't want that. She assured me that her department doesn't take attendance seriously, so she can just submit assignments and, t and projects and later take the exams, all while taking care of their child. Mm -hmm. Plus, our parents and her mom would be helping them out. Okay. I highly doubt it is possible to study with a newborn, and to expect others to take care of their kid while they are out run about daily is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And I told her exactly that. She can't leave her newborn child with someone else while she goes out to do something else. Will she still do the same if they had another kid? She got angry and called me rude for assuming that she couldn't take care of her son. Parentheses, but she can't. She's asking the grandparents to be parents. Her mom is literally taking care of him now. My brother liked the idea of taking a gap, but because of his girlfriend, he's calling me an asshole for interfering with their decisions. Right, because he can't even have though, an opinion. It's even gotta though be he girl. has agreed with me before. Yeah. He demanded that I apologize to his girlfriend for implying that she'd be a bad mom. My parents are on my side, and they suggested they reconsider their decision. I was told that I should let it be, and I have apologized to him. My brother has yet to accept it, accept it, despite demanding one, and we're still in a disagreement. Am I the asshole here? Yeah, I think so. Um, but, I mean, you know, that's my opinion. It's a shitty situation. Yeah. For sure. Like, who is going to take care of this kid? And that I hate. I would never tell a woman you have to stop studying to take care of a baby. No, I'd never say that either. I would. I, it's going to be really fucking hard. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's definitely going to be a hassle. But I think there's definitely a way to do it. If the parents were cool with it, I don't know why this guy had to pipe up and ruin the whole damn thing yeah if they were initially just cool with it and then they had you know he said some shit and they were like yeah wait a minute fuck this <laughs> like you just fucking fucked up their life man <laughs> like shit they're kids I think, yeah i think it's totally possible to be able to go to college and raise a kid i think that's like i think it's possible i think it's gonna be hard but no, like yeah it's a shame that they're kids and they're having a baby right yeah it's it sucks. It, like, you might need to not study or whatever, but like that should be last, like the last ditch effort. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I agree with that. And it's like it, so she stops studying to uh, raise this baby, right? Where she? Oh yeah, she yeah. only needs to raise him for two years. Yeah, sure, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not gonna. Yeah, you're stopping the like snowball before it has a chance to like really. Yeah, the, like the her education to be able to like actually. And mean, then yeah. what? She has another kid. She never goes to college. And then of what? Their husband. That's fucking what the first comment her. talks about. Yeah, it's like you're leaving her unprepared to like be a single parent or potentially. Yeah, because what happens? If worse comes to worse. What yeah. if they have an argument and then she's a single parent and she doesn't have any education? She doesn't have any work experience because she's been a stay-at-home mom and i was talking to you about this the trad wives situation that's happening yeah right now. where a bunch of people in like 2020 right 2020 like i don't remember when the grift started happening but like there were a bunch of women that were like the trad why i love being a trad wife blah 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 and they yeah, were lying the yeah about their life by being like everything's so wonderful i make everything from scratch and i 
feed all six of my children and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you're selling this fucking lie. And now a bunch of women did it and they said they wanted to be stay at home moms, which I'm not shitting on stay at home moms. That's a thankless I job. Think, yeah, I think you can be a stay at home mom. There's nothing I inherently wrong with that. You. I'm talking about trad wives yeah. where they're like women should other only women should do, yeah, should like, never work and only should stay at home and be baby makers and raise children. And then they realized after their husbands financially, emotionally, sometimes physically abused them. Yeah. That they had They're to trapped leave. And they had to leave. Now they have all these kids. They have no job experience. And also they you know, whatever. they they didn't go to college. They've they don't know what to do with their fucking lives because they spent all this time focusing on just raising a kid and keeping yeah. the house clean. Which I'm gonna be honest also, it's not that you can't like reinvent yourself from no, that of course. yeah you can it's not the best situation to be in though yeah it's it's gonna be difficult yes yeah and that's the problem if you're still going to college with the kid at least you're setting yourself up for the future in the long term you know yeah. it's just you know it's life lots of women have been there and done that and have fucking like superheroes fucking turned yeah. their entire lives around also why yeah is there not a way to have like the the that your brother now dad to come in and like also take care of the kid when like she's going to class or like you know right. cause, like she has to give up her studies but he can't give up his studies yeah right? well because his is actually longer and like they can mm. then graduate together right it's just not I don't know it's fully not your place to talk yeah. about who's going to do what or whatever I mean you can judge them for sh everyone can judge anyone for any action but you coming in and interfering is shitty is wild yeah it's like not even your fucking kid man I mean I don't know I understand being also like worried that your parents are getting taken advantage of I understand that too yeah because there are other situations where it's like I don't know I just feel really uncomfortable with telling someone who has a kid all of a sudden that How they're to... an asshole yeah <laughs> for having a child for daring to have a child. Yeah. Because even thinking about it that way, as if having a child is something that you, anyone has control over now yeah. in America. <laughs> I don't know if this is in America, so I have no idea. No, true, yeah. But, like, if it is, like, what the fuck are you talking about? We don't have Roe versus Wade anymore. She could, she could, like, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah, when, yeah. <laughs> God. I, I feel like people are so out of reality in the abortion conversation and the fucking pro-life whatever, as if it's all just a... <sighs> I hate it so much. Fundamentally, it sucks ass. You want less sex education in schools. Yeah, and then... You, you don't want anyone to even mention sex. Anyone at all. Yeah, and or then... Any, it, even sexuality, you can't even do that. Because, no, a kid can't know what's going on in their hormones and their bodies at all. Yeah, and their yeah, brains. They can't be well like, educated. Their emotions. They can't know about contraception. We're going to outlaw contraception. We're going to outlaw abortion. Oh, well, teens are having kids what more often. What the fuck? What's with all the teen pregnancies? Mm. Also, if only there were preventable ways to make kids, teens learn things. Also, get, get this fucking fact in your fucking craw and eat it, dude. <clears throat> um, okay. Teen pregnancies? Like, 40% of them are teen fathers. Like, there are more teen mothers, but there are not as many teen fathers. Meaning that adult men are knocking up these teenage girls. I would, uh, and yeah. And then we're saying that they can't get abortions, and then we're making it an individual problem on these teenagers having fucking babies. Yeah, it's totally not the adults. <laughs> the old white motherfuckers. And Republican I'm crazy for saying dipshits. that you hate women. I'm crazy for jumping to that yeah, you're conclusion. Yeah, you crazy one here, yeah. Go fuck yourself. Get out of here. I'm sorry. I, I can fully understand it, but as a woman, I'm never going to come to a conclusion other than you should go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. Stop meddling in her business. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. Ugh. Solved it. Would I be the asshole if I continued to stretch my ears after my boyfriend expressed how much he hates it? Ooh. I, I ju <laughs> I'm just going to read this and then I genuinely want your opinion. Okay. Because when I first read this, uh, people were one way on Reddit and now they are the other way. Ooh, okay. And I am interested to know what's going on. All right. Okay. I, 30 female, have been with my boyfriend, 30 male, for just shy of a decade. He's wow. very He's a very clean cut guy and very professional in appearance. 
I, on the other hand, have a sleeve of tattoos, dyed hair, and pierced ears. Cool. He works from home as a lead programmer for a company while I work as a manager slash pet groomer. Nice. Despite our opposite looks and career choices, we have lots of interests and opinions in common. If anything, I think our differences help balance us out. Some background that may help add context to our relationship. I started getting tattoos before we met, but my biggest piece was done two years ago. He's not a big fan of tattoos and has absolutely no plan to ever get any. I've never pushed, but I have asked if he'd get a tiny one with me. It's not a big deal for me, so after he said no, I just left I just left it. He wasn't a fan of my big piece, but because I've had ink done before, he voiced some concerns about the amount of money I've spent, but I left it at that. Okay. Fast forward to this past month, I've always liked the jewelry that people with stretched ears get to wear. Some of it looks pretty cool. Um uh, uh blah, 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 blah. Some of it looks really cool slash pretty, and I, on a whim, decided I would stretch my current piercings. With the help and advice of a friend, I got a kit and have been working on stretching with the goal being about a two gauge, zero gauge max. Okay. When I first told him about this, he voiced that he really did not like how they looked and he did not want me stretching to the point where you could look through my ear or fit a pencil. (laughs) I told him not to worry and that I'd stop before I got to the generally accepted quote unquote point of no return. Today, I was moving up from a 10G to an 8G, and he was watching me moisturize and sanitize my jewelry and ears. Why is he watching? That's weird. Once again, he asked how big I was going, and I showed him what a 2G looked like. He gave me an unpleasant look and explained that he, again, really hated how gauges and stretched ears looked. He further went in to explain that stretched ears were not my aesthetic, as it was more quote-unquote punk. What? Where I fit more into streetwear or gal styles. I don't know what that is. The fu- well, you, the, 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 what? I just think women yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, yeah, women, <laughs> like, what does that mean? Bitches style. <laughs> no, like, but like you already, like what do you mean punk? Like you're not in the punk. You already have all the, the tattoos and shit. Like there is kind of an overlap between that and punk. He doesn't like how they look and doesn't think I'll look good with them. I'm disheartened. I took out my jewelry, packed them up, and put them away to maybe discard. I'm now sitting here debating Uh. whether I should continue stretching because it's something I want for myself, or if I should honor his wishes and stop. I already pushed my luck with how many tattoos and how big they are, so maybe I should give up on this one thing. I don't want him to think I'm unattractive, so I don't want to change myself past what he's willing to accept. I deserve better. Fuck off. (laughs) But (laughs) But I also don't want him to tell me what to do with my body. So would I be the asshole if I continued stretching my ears no. after my boyfriend expressed how much he hates it? Okay, listen, guys. Guys, fellas. Fellas. Um so, my fellas. Uh, <laughs> as my is okay, my personal philosophy on mm-hmm. tattoos. And this is for me and me alone. Yeah. I don't want tattoos. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid of needles. Yeah. I don't want to gauge my ears. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be a plain white bread milk toast white guy yeah that's i've accepted that mm. i don't think that's However, plain or milk toast i think that's the standard honestly. yeah that's why it's milk toast so <laughs> okay sure i think it's so, fine though whatever not, okay. i don't think i think it's fine to not have tattoos yeah however there's a flip to that coin right you can do whatever the fuck you want with your body right you have you have rights Theoretically, we all have rights. Theoretically, that's yeah, just a theory, a, theory, a, game a game theory that we all have rights. Uh huh. And you theoretically have the right to do whatever the fuck you want with your ears, and you shouldn't be judged so goddamn harshly, and like getting looks of disgust for having <laughs> two gauge ears. Like, come on, like that's who cares? Okay, so because okay, because I <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, because I I just like you. <laughs> You can't be with this guy anymore. That's the real like thing. Is like he is starting to push more and more of those boundaries and inhibiting you as a person, and what you want for yourself and your appearance and what you want maybe potentially in life. You know, like it seems like this is a slow controlling measure. Where like if you're already like I'm gonna discard uh the, the gauges that I've bought already, because who fucking care? Like you're like who <laughs> gives a shit? You're a fucking manager pet groomer. You're fine. You're okay. Like, even if you're a goddamn CEO, you should be allowed to gauge your ears. Yeah. Because, again, you know, we were talking about this earlier. Who fucking cares about... You should be able to wear Crocs. You should be able to wear... 
you should be able to wear whatever you want, do whatever you want to your own body, as long as it doesn't harm other people. Yeah. You you you're you can fucking ride off into the goddamn sunset happily. Like, you know, like So when I read this a couple of days ago when I chose the story, yeah. I really I don't think I read that many comments because when I got to the end where she was like, uh, I don't know if I should do this because I'm already pushing my luck with my boyfriend like you're already using that language that too sucks. like that sucks yeah. it made me so sad especially as someone who's also i have a similar gauging um yeah uh goal also like i know how fucking I, i'm doing it right now most of the time it's not painful i fucked up but my you're right ear you're putting and effort it is in ear. it yeah. is effort. like yeah you're doing all this work it's and- a long fucking time and i totally understand what she's talking about with the special um uh, jewelry that people with gauged ears get to wear. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's super cool. That was the main reason I wanted to do it anyway. And also, just like as a person with pierced ears, like I, I hate putting shit in and taking it out. If I'm for real. <laughs> I hate doing that. I can't keep them together. I can't. I don't know. I don't know what you have to buy for your earrings to keep them together all the time. Yeah. But I'm losing earrings all the time. And then how much money am I spending on fucking earrings? That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, the most I'll ever do is I'll take them out at night to sanitize them so I don't sleep in them because you're not supposed to. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, I'll do that. But even then, sometimes, like, okay. But, it's, okay, it's a lot of work, yeah. When I first read the story, people, the first comment was, no, you're not an asshole. You know, you're not an asshole, blah, blah, blah. Reddit also decided that this person was not an asshole. So when okay. this was posted within the day, it was mostly the, not yeah, the asshole. Everyone, yeah. I just checked the comments again, just as on a whim for funsies it changed to yeah. no asshole here and it was filled with comments of people being like why do you think you can do whatever you want to your body and expect your boyfriend to still be attracted to you whoa and now this is a rhetoric that i have seen over the years on reddit about gaining weight <sighs> Okay. And now it's so interesting to see it being performed over like stretched ears. It's fine if you don't like stretched ears. The comments that I'm reading are people telling this woman that who has stretched ears that every time they look at stretched ears, they want to puke. Oh, it's so disgusting. I like it when they're fucking blah, 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 blah. First of all, boring ass people, you fucking weirdos. Well, Second that's of my, all. Yeah, that's the way I think about it. It's like they've been together. 10 years 10 fucking years and the guy's gonna throw it all away over, over some gauged ears? ears that's the thing you would you would think at some point lot. he would love you for you uh, you at would some uh, yeah, point, at maybe. some point yeah and not just for how pretty you are <laughs> yeah you would expect someone to maybe not be so goddamn shallow of a person and my favorite thing in the comments is everyone saying like well you, there's no way you're not going back with gauged ears i took my gauges out for a day and a half and they all immediately they closed up immediately. The cells in the body were like, <laughs> "All right, guys, this is our chance." Also, there is a, a generally accepted point of no return, and um, that shit is pa- is way pa- is past where uh, OP wants to go. Like, I know where OP wants to go, and it's just shy of the like point of no return, quote unquote. Yeah, and also there's surgery that you can go through. There's ways to fix it. Yeah, like yes. quote unquote fix it. Yeah, yes. Like you can. There, yeah, we we have the technology. You can go back down. Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Like it's your body. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Yes. Like, I, and I think it's fucking <laughs> lame to tell a woman that she should limit herself and how she expresses herself through her body. Because a man won't maybe find her attractive later. Yeah, who cares? That's what? fucking lame. And if you are looking at your fucking partner, and there are people straight up in these comments that I want to find their partner and tell them what's yeah, going what they on. Think about their, yeah. Because they're saying like, if my partner shaved her head bald, I would leave her in a heartbeat. You don't fucking love her then, I yeah, think. I th- yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. You Like, what's the fucking point? A person that wants to shave their head bald in a relationship want someone who will love them regardless of what their fucking hair looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. They want someone who's not yeah, fucking what if their shallow. Like goes through like fucking like has to go through chemotherapy for like cancer or something. And, and that's like, what they this have argument to, they shave their thing. That's you what would probably yeah. leave them and you you would you know because you're a shallow person. Yeah. If you think literally, oh pretty hair. Like fucking And we wonder why men leave women that go through breast cancer and chemo 
all the fucking time. Because they're shallow and they, yeah. They're shallow like, bastards. A, some of them, some men are fucking shallow pieces of shit. Yeah. yeah. But then, no. Oh, but that's different. If she did it on purpose, that's it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. matter because the same result happens if you're going to leave. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't fully understand that. I don't experience attraction in that way. I don't really want to meet people who experience attraction in that way. If I was with someone who did experience attraction that way, I would be like, then fucking leave, bastard. Yeah, fucking <laughs> no, leave, I'm, I'm bitch. Joking, I'm joking. Then do it. <laughs> I'm not even playing. That's fucking crazy. And the yeah. thing about the weight, too, it's like, well, you did gain 35 whatever pounds, however many pounds. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of pounds. What if she got pregnant? Yeah, well, she got pregnant. What, what if she's going on pregnant? pills or like fucking? Yeah, yeah. What if she's on Lexapro and she gains a fuck ton of weight? But she's happy now. Well, that's a problem. Oh, ew, disgusting. Woman because she's uh, she has more weight, dude. That's wild. I'm sorry, and that's my personal opinion. And that's it's this is my podcast, so I get to say my personal opinion, and that's what it is. It's not a take. It's not a law. Um, that's just what I believe personally, and I yeah, think this fair. woman yeah. should break up with this fucker. Who for and some find reason actually likes her for who she is. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I will not shame her for wondering if the, her partner of 10 years is being a weird piece of shit about this and fucking by trying to fit her into like an aesthetic. Yeah. Like that's all you think about me. You think it's I'm a, just a, a streetwear type of girl. He's a programmer. You know, he's fucking he's trying to figure yeah, out sure. if, <laughs> if tattoos greater than 10. He's trying to put her punk. into an array. Yeah. <laughs> God fucking uh God solve that shit, dude. Java scripting your way into <laughs> what type of person your partner is. That's ass. I don't know. I still think I that's fucking ass. Yeah. Can I read some of those comments actually? Yeah, real yeah, just real quick. Yeah. No asshole here. You can continue to stretch if you want, despite knowing your boyfriend isn't keen, but your boyfriend can then react as he find appropriate. If he's truly put off by them, then he might end up considering breaking up with you. Why did you ask his opinion if you weren't going to be considerate of it? Well, we know the opinion. The opinion is he's a fucking loser. <laughs> like, come on. Like, Jesus. Yeah. Don't you want the, the guy? <laughs> like, who fucking? God, shut so, up. Fuck Opie up. didn't ask for his opinion, actually. So she, then she responds and says, it's not that I, I really asked for his opinion. I only brought it up to him the first time to let him know that this was the thing I wanted to do because I was interested in it. And then this person responds, says, that's absolutely your right, but if he has expressed that he doesn't like them, and you then go ahead with it, then that's on you. No, it's fucking not. No, it's she not. To, she's an individual. Yeah, she amazingly, I she has rights. She has the ability. having to claw to the nail as a woman. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I hate having to claw to the nail as a woman for individual rights. I fucking hate that. That's Listen, garbage. like, yeah, you totally could do it, but <laughs> have you thought about what he'll do? Everything you do is actually related to the man that you're with. I'm a good person. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look at people with stretched earlobes because it gives me the ick. So if my partner Why? did this, I would be gone. Is that like a shitty partner? Who cares? It's a fucking, it's your goddamn earlobes. Yo, know, straight up, Dude, that's so why are wild. you staring at people's earlobes, you freak? Yeah. Trying to fuck their ears. I've never given a shit about someone's fucking earlobes, yeah. dude. Also, like, if you're thinking <laughs> about uh, a person with gauged ears, that you take out their fucking gauged ears, right? They take out the gauges and then there's a little fucking cat butthole or yeah. something in their ears. You're thinking about the people that have it to like this. That's not what she's doing. Yeah. She's going to like maybe this. That's fine. That's yeah, it. who cares? Yeah. I, yeah, if you're like maybe personally, like I think maybe I don't even honestly give too much of a shit. Mm -hmm. Like if you go super wide, I guess there's a there's that one um, Disney former Disney Imagineer who had a, who has a pierced ears and like he gauged them. And what he did is he had um he put I think in his left or right ear like a really heavy thing and he's just kept it in for years. So it got like all the way down to like here. Yeah, hanging. he put in weights. Yeah, and weights he just kept and it stuff. On. Yeah. You're, yeah, technically I don't think you're supposed to keep it in that. I think for long. a while I was a little bit like that's a little weird, but then yeah. I look at it and I'm like whatever, who cares? 2024, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like god. Yeah. Someone said that it was the equivalent of having BO or yellow teeth. 
as a de- as a deal breaker. And I'm like, that's bad hygiene. That's just, yeah. This that's, is a body modification. Yeah, that's a different thing. That's the, uh, someone. It's like a piercing. Yeah. Or a tattoo, like she talked about. That's what it is. That's why, dumb. I don't know why people are artificially inflating this to be not what it is. Yeah, this, yeah you guys are... That's fucking wild. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, he's allowed to not like it, for sure. Yeah. She's allowed to think he's a dick. Yeah, exactly. There's consequences... There, as the same way that there's consequences for what she does, there's consequences for what he does. Yeah. And I, a random viewer, am allowed <laughs> to think that you commenters are pieces of are garbage. That's fucking wild, yeah. And freaks, and that's what I do think. Yeah. And we're all allowed to have our shitty opinions. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Didn't we make the world a better place in this instance? Damn. <laughs> Redders are pissing me off Redders today. need to fucking stop challenge. What the fuck is happening, dude? What is going on? Redditors? <laughs> okay. Okay. What is going on? What is going on? You might have heard of a website called Reddit. <laughs> now, <laughs> liberals would lead you to believe that it was a place to cause the insurrection in 2021. Not in Joe Biden's America. Not in Joe Biden's America. See, if the insurrection worked, <laughs> we wouldn't have Joe Biden as president now, would we? Have you seen that the, the Nazis... I was going to talk about this on the worst takes, but I have a different article now. Oh, um, God, I got to find one. There's a, there was a Nazi, the GOP debates, and they were just like openly mingling. Oh, my God. And they're straight up saying, like, we didn't do it right at January 6th. We, did, <sighs> we only half did it. We got to do the rest. Fun. What are you, what's your job going to be after the revolution? I'm going to be a farmer, I think. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go farming, yeah. You're going to help me farm on our farm? <laughs> nah, we have my own farm. Oh, we're going to have competing farms? Yeah, I'm going to oh, beat okay. the shit out of your farm, dude. What the fuck? That's fucked up. <laughs> Solved it. Solved it. All right, next story. Yeah. This one, I think, is the worst one I got. Okay. All right. Okay. Just in case. Just in case, yeah. Am I the asshole for telling my wife the bitter truth that her sister doesn't love her? Yeah. (laughs) Even if she doesn't, I think you're an asshole. (laughs) You could have shut the fuck up, What do you think the first sentence in this is? Her sister doesn't love her. (laughs) I wish. (laughs) I wish it was that was the first sentence. My bitch wife. I don't know. My stupid fucking horrible wife. As a sister that doesn't love her because she sucks ass. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's me saying that. That's not even another oh, one. That's that me. You? That's that was you? me. Oh, That's I me it was saying. Funny. And you just fucking. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I want to shut up. All right. Shut up. Don't look at me while I do this. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Fine. I won't look at okay. you. After their mom passed away, my wife and her older sister grew apart. It was most likely due to her sister who had a problem with the way my wife was grieving for their mom, like her telling my wife not to cry in front of their family members or telling her not to talk about their mom with them. Her grieving was probably shutting herself down and expecting my wife to do the same. They had very little contact with each other because of this. Mm -hmm. It's been a decade since their mom's death and her sister attended a family event that my wife and I hosted. She came to make amends with her and to apologize for her past behavior. And my wife was for- has forgiven her for it. From my perspective, she hasn't made any amends. She refuses to a- attend any family functions, even when my wife begs her to come. Oh. She gives childish reasons like she'll only attend if my wife is hosting. I can see that it is hurting my wife. So... I told my wife that she probably doesn't love her or her family because why would she promise to make amends without putting in the work? Um, okay. I did not skip a paragraph. <laughs> that is a- where we go. That's, where, that's, that's the next sentence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is the type of manipulation that's really insidious but also really funny. <laughs> Like, gosh, why won't my sister show up to my baby shower? Yeah, she probably, doesn't, I don't know, probably doesn't fucking love you. That's probably why. Sports is on. <laughs> <laughs> and to, okay. Dude, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Crazy. Oh, damn. And to expect my wife to put in the labor to host family functions so that she can attend is disrespectful to both my wife and me. My sweet wife still believes there is good in her sister and defends her. 
and she only invites her sister to make her feel welcome. She doesn't really have to attend them. I've been told that her sister has some degree of hostility toward their family because of what she heard them say about their mom. It oh. seems some of them were happy that their mom died. That's a rough thing to hear, but at this point, she is indirectly aiming her hostility at my wife, who has a healthy relationship with their family. I told my wife that her sister is an asshole for dumping that past information on her and expecting my wife to make amends for her, but my wife doesn't seem see that and keeps arguing with me whenever the topic arises. To her, I'm being the asshole when I'm only trying to protect her well-being. Am I the asshole here? Yeah, stay out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, dude. Well, Sarah, have you considered that the sister doesn't love her? <laughs> I'm all for being on your partner's side, right? That's, yeah. Yes. I think there's better ways to be on your partner's side and support when than just being like... your partner is telling you, stop. Stop. You're not being on their side by being like, no, I'm going to get mad at people. I'm going to go crazy. Yeah. I'm going to start a bunch of problems. In your family. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Uh, everything like, okay, if you had an issue with your family or something, or like one of your family members had an issue with never you. Never had that. Never happened ever. <clears throat> but if that were to, God forbid, happen, I would be like, what do you want to do? And then I would support you in what you would yeah. want to do. Just like with my family, how I was like, I don't fuck them. It's not yeah, going to work out. But Sarah, you, you have me. told me verbatim, your family doesn't love you. <laughs> I did say that. Yeah. That's what I do at That's home totally all the do, time. Yeah, I just, just talk whispering. about how your family doesn't love you all the time. Yeah. It's not a helpful comment, is it? Not really. It doesn't really, really solve any general. issues if you have issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even if they don't, even if she's a piece of shit, doesn't really mean much. Yeah. You're just crushing the hope that <laughs> your yeah. wife has. Why are you hopeful, dumbass? But okay, so it sounds like the sister doesn't want to come to the family gatherings because she... Has uh, issues with the family. Not with the sister. Yeah. Uh, so she's, yeah, she's allowed to have her feelings about her own family. And even though the sister probably, honestly, your wife should not be begging your sister to come to the family just one time. Because she's probably gone low to no contact with her sis with her family, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Why are you judging the sister based on her decisions of like, especially if like your family's being like, and uh, who knows the reason why they're like happy the mom's dead or whatever. But like, yeah, that's maybe still the mom's really, a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. But like, still, the sister doesn't see it that way, right? And like. Right. If that was, like, however many years ago, and, like, they were, I guess, teens or young, you know? Because, like, yeah. it seems like they were pretty young when their parent died. Like, that yeah. sucks. Like, you know? Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Well, and also, like, um, you know, we he talked about how, like, she was upset at uh, OP's wife for not grieving the exact same way. Right. Yeah. But also, she's grieving as well. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Grief is a crazy thing, you know? It'll, it, it does. It, it makes it, you, it you a fucking asshole. Yeah. Dude. You know, and it sucks. Like, I will say, like, I, I had a lot of resentment for my family when my dad died, because um, I felt like my family wasn't, like, sad enough. They seemed, like, pretty all right. Mm. And I, yeah, I had a lot of resentment for them at that time. And I think now I, I look back and I'm like, they all had different relationships with my dad. And I fully understand it now and i'm like i don't have resentment for them anymore the resentment truly came from they just couldn't give a crap about supporting, supporting me. you and that's a problem that's a genuinely bad and there was other resentment from previous like i felt like a lot of them didn't really take the time and effort to get to know me mm. a lot it was just like oh well let's show up blah blah blah, blah and then i'll boil boil you down to a, a stereotype of sarah plays the viola sarah's a musician blah, blah, blah. Mm. And that's it. I'm never going to actually know who you are on the inside. Hmm. And the podcast comes out and they watch this and they're like shocked at who I am. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, I didn't change anything about myself. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't actually do that. You just never asked. Yeah. And so that genuinely is the, the, the issue. And now I don't really have any of them blocked. Well, I don't have my brothers blocked, but they still don't call me or text me. Yeah, so. None of their friends know that I exist. So it's interesting to hear this and it's sometimes it's just like broken down family dynamics are like a number of different things and yeah. most likely isn't that they don't love you yeah. and they hate you and they're putting all of the effort on you to, to do these things hmm. that's not something that is a thing they probably are just going through a lot of shit you can be frustrated 
for sure at your sister for not being there to plan all of these events and you can have resentment yeah for, for sure these situations I don't but there think are that... healthy ways to you know reduce resentment or yeah. you know work through it that's how you have like a differentiated sort of view of what's going on yeah but you shouldn't just be whispering she doesn't fucking love doesn't you fucking or just like bad person evil so she must be evil because she's bad because you're she's doing harm to us yeah you know ridiculous especially when grief is involved oh yeah no <laughs> <laughs> that's not how anything works in real life actually sometimes there are terrible awful mean people that are really bad to you 100 percent. yeah and then they turn around and they're nice to other people and that's fucking ass yeah it sucks <laughs> it yeah sucks. you it want sucks them to be an sure. evil villain but sometimes people hurt you in ways where they have no idea how they're hurting you at all and really the only way that can help with that is time and healing and maybe therapy maybe yeah and uh, a conversation and coming to a conversation with both an equal understanding now if a person is belligerent and abusive that's not the that's case that's different yeah it's different yeah this is a different scenario but if a person if you're both going through grief grief then someone needs grace someone needs to give grace yeah. and someone needs to receive it and usually it's both people at the same time hmm. and it's a very difficult situation to get through and it doesn't help to have a husband being like she doesn't fucking love you. cut her off cut her off cut, cut her, her off. off she doesn't love you stay with me forever fuck her <laughs> like it's fucked and you're also pushing this like family above all else thing yeah, on the sister and it's like by punishing her which I think is weird yeah yeah it sucks that's not great Jesus man it's fucking strange yeah. Now that it solved it. Why the fuck would someone asshole. even do that? I don't know. Your sister fucking hates you. No, she doesn't fucking love you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know. No, she probably doesn't fucking love you. I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> She's lying. She probably doesn't love you. I don't know. She's <laughs> lying. So about... stupid. It's so funny, though. I don't know, your sister probably doesn't love you, though. Like, just saying that <laughs> randomly, like, oh, what do you want to get for dinner? McDonald's or, or Chick-fil-A? Oh, well, I mean, you know, McDonald's uh, gave food to the IDF, and also your sister doesn't love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chick-fil-A's homophobic, so. God. Uh, aren't I a delight to be around? <laughs> I'm fun. <laughs> All right, okay, solved it. Generally, don't go to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. No, yeah, I agree, yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Am I the asshole calling my daughter messy to the point it is a running joke? <laughs> okay. Yeah. What that, do you think? Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side, I'm gonna hedge my bets here. This is an unhinged episode. Yeah, is it? <laughs> this is, <laughs> is we're it? both getting really pissed this episode. So funny. I, you know, I just real. I realized halfway through and I realized. Is it because we didn't eat? I ha we haven't eaten before yeah. this. We had I had only a cup of ramen and that doesn't fill me up. Yeah. But also I didn't take my pill today. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> so I'm just kind of in this weird like fugue state right now, genuinely, where I'm like just feel it like man, like what the fuck's going on? Where You're am making I? sense. You're making a lot okay, of sense. Okay, good. Yeah. Fuck man. No worries. Dude, if I go in tomorrow and editing and just, just be like shit. No, I feel like no, I feel fuck? like we're both dialed in like a motherfucker right now. We're just also yeah. very aggressive. Yeah. yeah but okay. Uh, I'm gonna think asshole. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why about making fun of your own uh, blood <laughs> that you burped <laughs> out of your vagoo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I don't know. Something weird. <laughs> All right. My husband and I have three daughters, 24 female, Jess, 19 female, and four female, Mara. <laughs> you know, it's on the four-year-old. She's messy. <laughs> I'm assuming it's not about the four-year-old, no, but that would not. be really funny if you're just like fucking all making fun of a baby. <laughs> that Yeah. I mean, you know. Jess still lives with us because rent is costly and she wants to save up. We Fair. have no issues with this. We chain we charge her a small amount of rent and she keeps the house clean. She's very good with cleaning the kitchen and living room whenever there is a mess, but her own room is another matter. Okay. But she's paying for it though, so I mean this whatever. Is gonna fucking send me to the top. Yeah, it's dude. not gonna piss me off, isn't it? Granted, it's a small room, so it clutters up quicker. I just think it's ridiculous and easy to keep clean given the size. There's always things on her dresser and, and left out. There's always things on her dresser left out 
and she keeps her clothes on her chair instead of in the closet or laundry basket. Like everyone does. Like every fucking human like being. Like I'm doing right now. Like, yes. come on. I mean, maybe not if you're Superman, but Jesus. Some people... Some people are just... They put their fucking clothes on the chair, and can we just accept them, please? Yeah. Oh, my God. Some people have a laundry chair, and it's fine. It's fine to have a laundry chair. It's okay, Jesus. Yeah. Now, this freaks me out. I used to ask her to tidy up, but she would always say, it is tidy, so I tidy it myself now. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop that. You're already charging her to live there. That room should be fucking sacred to her. Yeah, Yeah. that's her private room. That's a private room. As long as it's not, like, food, like, like, dirty. Yeah, like, if it's, you know, if you're dusting still and you're still keeping food out, like, fine. You know, just a, a little, little bit messy? of a little messy is fine. Yeah, she can it, it, like like Jesus. if you have like a, a fucking like you know McDonald's or fucking you have like a Wendy's bag filled with food just staying yeah. out and overnight. For days. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that fuck. sucks. It's gonna if it's gonna bring in like ants or, or flies something. or roaches. Yeah, yeah that's fine. not good. Fine to complain, but if not, yeah. whatever. It's become a running joke in the house that she is messy, and it seems we have caught on with Mara too. Whenever Mara is tired or fuzzy, she thinks Jess is boring her. She will call her messy. What a good joke. I never used to think it bothered Jess until today she, since she has never said so. Mara was acting out due to a bad sleep last night and told Jess to go away because she is messy and Jess flipped out at me. What the f- yeah, what? This isn't a fucking joke. You're just calling her messy. Yeah. She That's is- an insult. Yeah. She is apparently tired of it being a running joke because she deems herself not messy. However, I see the state of her room compared to the rest of the house, and she is messy by definition. Mara would not apologize and just refuses to be around Mara until I make this stop. She says it's annoying to be constantly called something she is not. My husband is on Jess's side. He is also more laid back, cleaning-wise. And that we should stop so Mara does not copy what she hears. But I think Jess is being ridiculous and being messy is, n- is not an unfair comment. Her room is not tidy, hence it is messy. Am I the asshole? What? Yeah. The fu- yeah, yeah, you're the dude. asshole. Yeah, you are. Of course you are. You're, also in, you're now also giving a bad relationship with cleaning to your fucking daughter now. Doing the shit to your kid is a surefire way for them to make them like to just be a messy fuck. Yeah, like you're just reinforcing it more than anything. If you're yeah, you're you're fucking uh like the the call and response of like fucking oh you're such a mess. Yeah, they're probably not gonna want to fucking clean. There's also the why bring them to a goddamn depression. Dude, this is why like that boomer ass take of like Mm, kids don't move out of the house anymore. They just le- leech off their parents. You know, that whole bullshit. It's like, well, yeah, you want to know why? Because when I stay with my fucking parents, they call me messy. They barge into my room. They clean up all my shit. And they fucking think it's a favor. Yeah. To me. It's I have not. no privacy and I'm paying them money. If yeah. a landlord did that, I would hire a lawyer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be able to sue probably for, uh, yeah. That's crazy, man. Listen, I'm messy. I I know that. We're right? both messy. We're both yeah. very messy, all right? And that's fine. Like I think as a, but like if one of us like, we we're are dirty. able to we're not dirty. Yeah, we do clean like food and shit and like we try to keep things relatively yeah. decent and organized ish, right? Which is also more difficult because we're in Florida and there are gonna be bugs. There are gonna yeah, be bugs. There's gonna be bugs all the fucking time. But and we like do and a also good like job. Have, I, I have, have fucking bugs. ADHD. Like yeah. I can't focus on jack shit. You know, mm-hmm. like fucking I have depression. Yeah, it's hard to do things sometimes. Yeah. So like if you're going to like do this weird like fucking if, as long as you're not making a mess, who fucking like? As long as you're not like actually like keeping food out and yeah. shit out, who really cares, right? Truly, as long as you, yeah, th- that's the that's and my also, thing. She cleans the rest of the house for you. Yeah, so why are you gonna go in and clean up her shit? A hey, fuck that. That's ridiculous. Also, because also for her for her whole life. Yeah, for her fucking you her, want her house. To yeah, clean her room. Like, give her a little bit of fucking space. Give her some leniency. Yeah, damn, she's paying for it. She is literally paying for it. All right, uh, so the top comment, you're the asshole. Here's some things that don't add up. Okay. How often does Jess clean the living room and kitchen? Does your other kid, 19 female, who you don't name, 
also take part in cleaning these spaces up or is there any appreciation given for the effort put into cleaning these areas up? Yeah, that's fair, yeah. The way you describe Jess's room is things on the dresser are left out and keeps her clothes on the chair instead of the closet. But you said yourself it's a smaller space so not much area to put things. I'm confused as to how these two points add up to being cluttered and messy to the point that she needs to be harassed and bullied for it. That's the thing, too. If you don't have a lot of storage, yeah. Like, what are you going to do? What the fuck do? are you going to do? And That's you have a bunch main... of stuff. If we had a house, I, we would still be a little messy, but, but we would have, have stuff have storage. in storage. Yeah. yeah. Like, most of our stuff is out because we don't have a spot to put it. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that your four-year-old is mirroring your behavior to a point of using it when she is angry means that the joke is causing actual damage yeah. between the relationships of your daughters as well as between Jess and the family. The fact that you dismiss your husband being on Jess's side as he is also more laid-back cleaning-wise does not excuse that he is on her side because of the bullying. Yeah. Unless more info is given, nothing here seems to make sense for Jess getting bullied in her own home I also still don't understand why you would make jokes about her being messy when she helps clean the communal areas of the house per your own words. Yeah. I think if you have a problem with how she keeps her room, you need to talk to her as to why the room is untidy in your eyes and communicate your feelings on that. Mm. You also need to share as to why you think it is disrespectful to the household or why you feel her room being untidy to your standards does not work for you. Also, it's just one fucking room. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to also stop making snide passive-aggressive jokes that your four-year-old picks up on. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. And I think also that's a good point. It's like, what is the reasoning behind you thinking that it's messy? Yeah. Like, what is the what is the issue? Is it like a fire safety issue? Is it like a, you're worried that she's like, what's going on? What are the emotions that you're having about yeah. this? That's productive saying mm, she's fucking messy that's her that's label not productive that's yeah. who she is as a person that is actually you're just enforcing yeah. that person to be that way you're it's it's uh yeah my mom called me messy and lazy growing up because i had fucking depression and um <laughs> my room was not good and even worse than messy it was dirty it was yeah. a dirty room and it caused me a lot of issues emotionally and i didn't want it to be like that but it got that way because i was fucking depressed <laughs> And, you know, I would have to periodically do these very deep clean, like deep cleans. And my mom calling me messy and lazy emotionally stopped me from being able to have a healthy relationship with cleaning. Yeah. Um. It also stopped me from being able to do like maintenance cleans. I didn't learn that until I knew Josh and you taught me how to do maintenance cleans. I am only good at a deep cleaning. Mm. Like when we clean, we go through shit. I'm only good at that. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Like, I'm super quick with it because I had to be very quick because my mom would be like, clean all of this up right now before I get home or else I'm screaming at you. And then I would have to do that. Yeah. Um, And now I don't have a good relate. Now I'm fucking, it's a nightmare <laughs> to keep things clean. Yeah, I get that. More than just the average person. And now I'm hindered because of the way that you grew up like yeah. with cleaning. Yeah, now I get that. And I fucking wish, I fucking wish I could have a nice relationship with cleaning and living in a clean house. But hmm. no, I don't. And, you know, hmm. not because I hate living in a messy house or anything, but because it's caused uh, relationship issues for me as someone who is, um, has lived in a messy, dirty room and house for a long time. Now my standards are incredibly low for cleaning. Hmm. And it has caused me issues with friends. It's caused me issues in relationships. It's caused me issues as an adult. And I'm fucking pissed about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm no, I understand. Pissed. Yeah. I now have to re-fucking parent myself because my mom didn't fucking parent me. She just said, oh, you're this label. You're a label. And you're always going to be that. And you're always going to be that. And you're bad. You're a bad person for being this label. And I'm a good mom. <laughs> and uh, you should just fix that intrinsically yeah <laughs> you figure it out asshole you, yeah like you piece of garbage <laughs> yeah jesus man and when i say i lived in a dirty room i'm talking about elementary school i was in a dirty room mm. i'm talking about middle school i was in a dirty room i'm talking about all throughout my life it was dirty mm. and somehow now as an adult people will turn around and be like well now it's your individual responsibility and the worst part about that is it is true. Now I have to tell myself <laughs> to fucking clean up. And that's the sad reality of it. That's what you do when you call your 
children messy or dirty. You're making it harder for them to yeah. even get to a point where they can actually clean and like have a not a messy house. Yeah. Yeah. You're creating a self fulfilling prophecy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Jesus, man. Depressing, man. Solved it, though. Solved it. Don't do that. Yeah, I wonder why I have depression. I wonder why that fucking happened. All right. I'm I got pissed. no clue. <laughs> I'm, I'm I got sorry. no clue. This, we're supposed to be funny. <laughs> I think. Are we, though? I, I mean, don't let's know. Be, I mean, are we? Uh, uh, hey, listen. Hey, Gabba Ghoul. Actually, um, you can become a millionaire uh, if you want to. If you just want it if hard enough. If you subscribe enough. to our new podcast, uh, if you subscribe to Josh our new... and Sarah make money. <laughs> We're selling a course now. It's one thousand dollars, and it's called "How to Spend One Thousand Dollars." How to earn one thousand dollars by selling courses. <laughs> That's what it is. That's it. And God. then you can do that too. Because I'm a success. I'm not a fucking girl failure that can't clean a house. <laughs> Last story of the night, everybody. Okay. Last story Sorry. of the night. Sarah, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah, I like the enthusiasm. Uh -huh. Notes. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what's, up? Well, yeah, what's up? What's up, Doc? What's going on? I love on? you. That's my note. Uh, I love you, too. Thank yeah, you for the gotcha. note. Fucking reversed <laughs> pranks. Reverse prank. All right. Last story. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for telling my mom that I won't postpone my wedding if she pays for my nose job that I blame her for? You blame the nose job on her? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Don't okay, worry. Okay, okay. Yeah. I agree. My fiance, 34 male, and I, 31 female, got engaged in November 2023. We were planning a December 2024 wedding, but we've learned that I need a nose job for medical and aesthetic reasons. Oh. So we've postponed that wedding until after until after due to finances. My mom, 65 female, is mad about the whole thing and how it will be perceived by relatives. I, I want to say I can't roll my eyes hard enough of how it's oh it's gonna be perceived. Oh no, the family members are gonna perceive it. I, this is this isn't an important detail for the story, but in the mm. in the Reddit post. It, it says backstory, but like in italics and all caps. So it's Ooh. like backstory. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. This isn't fun though. Oh. When I was nine, I fell off my bike and broke my nose. Sadly, my mom didn't believe that it was broken. She said I was, quote, over exaggerating the pain. She refused to take me to the doctor. It hurt so much. I cried daily for weeks. I already have my, I already have my judgment. Note, she was a stay at home mom. And we live in Canada, so taking me to a doctor wouldn't have cost money or time off work. Since then, I've had issues with breathing and awful sinus pain, occasionally to the point of vomiting. Holy shit. Flying is torture. Random weather changes are torture. I spend 16 to 23 days a year in bed immobilized by pain slash pressure in my left sinuses. Also, my nose never looked the same after. In middle school, kids said I looked like Gollum, and I'm still a little self-conscious about it. Did you look like Gollum? That's awful. It's awful, yeah. In 2021, I decided that I can't live like this anymore and started working with my doctor to figure out the root cause of my sinus issues. The Canadian system, healthcare system moves slowly. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, I got MRI test results back and they established that one, my nose was broken in childhood. Two, it didn't heal properly because it had no medical intervention. Three, I need surgery for my nose slash sinuses to work so I can live and breathe like a normal person. Since they're doing surgery on my nose anyway, I decided that I want my nose aesthetics fixed as well at the same time. They will make my nose look like it would have naturally. Canadian healthcare will pay for the medical part of the surgery. It won't pay for the cosmetic part. Nose jobs are expensive. Mm -hmm. We decided to postpone the wedding so we can pay for my uh, nose job ASAP instead. I can't wait to breathe property, properly and to have a normal nose. Yeah. Last week, I told my mom about the postponement, and she flipped. She said relatives are planning their whole year around my wedding, and this is a really unfair. This is really unfair to do this to them over quote vanity. I told her I can't afford a nose job and a wedding in the same year, and that it was unfair to me that she refused to take me to a doctor back in the day. Yep. And that if she really wants the wedding this year. She could pay for my nose job so I don't have to. We haven't spoken since. To, to be honest, since it was confirmed by a doctor that I did break my nose as a kid, 
I've had simmering anger slash hurt towards my mom. Yeah. I've lived with awful pain for decades and now need surgery for something that could have been avoided if she had just believed me and been a parent. Mm-hmm. But maybe telling her to pay for the nose job was unfair slash too petty. Am I the asshole? So, you know, it's interesting that you say that you have simmering resentment towards your mother because I do too. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! I'm also really pissed at your mom. I think what you should do is uh, if people come up to you, like your mom's not going to pay for it, right? No. Assuming your mother is like, no. Going to be so convinced that I'm like. I'm a selfish piece of shit because of how I've acted in the past and currently. Um, <laughs> don't yeah. invite her to the now postponed wedding. And when people come up to you and say, like, you really postponed it for getting a nose job, just tell her, oh, my mom didn't take care of me when I was a child, so I had to get a nose job. Yeah. That my mom, and then use her full government name and then give them your her phone number so that they can text her about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, call, yeah. <laughs> that's call what her I think monster. you should do. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, I mean, look into it. Like, there are <laughs> local colleges where um, the laundry system, you can put her phone number into the laundry system and they'll t- give send her a text on when the laundry is done. <laughs> so just do that also. Also, you can go to nursing homes, uh, nursing home websites and like sign your mother up for a nursing home pamphlet. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knew, knows about this. <laughs> That's hey, what you hey, should do. This? You should do that regardless, I think, of what yeah. happens. But yeah, I don't think you're an asshole at no, all. No, not at all. No. Long Fuck story her. short. <laughs> Your mom literally fucked you up for life because she didn't believe you were in pain as a child. (laughs) Great parenting, by the way. Not believing your kid when they're in pain. Not going to lead to any resentment in the future. You know, sometimes I think there's a lot of, like, insecurity on the internet, you know? Yeah. Especially in this. Like, a lot of people, they'll hear something or they'll be in a similar situation or they'll be similar. They'll have some sort of similar attribute to the asshole that we're calling out. Yeah. And they'll be like, well, but wait, in my family, this happened and it'll be a completely separate situation. But I understand the feeling because i also have that feeling yeah, when i listen no, to podcasts fair. yeah and someone's like fucking bitches named sarah are huge bitches and josh I'm like, has a small cock yeah like that sometimes will happen sometimes you'll catch a stray randomly in a yeah podcast you know what happens yeah because we're sitting here talking for hours saying random shit yeah. that we don't fucking believe <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i understand it and i feel like this especially happens a lot with parents and it's like a lot of people are parents Lots and lots and lots. And if fuck it, we're criticizing parenting a lot. Yeah. It can be like, wow, you guys think you're better than blah, blah, blah. No, I don't think that at all. No, no. Yeah. Also, I want to point out that this is a mistake a lot of parents do not make. This is a very specific instance of mistake. Like a lot of parents don't physically disable their child. By not bringing them to a doctor as a kid and gaslight them for years. Yeah, why do you? Why are you equating that with like you, you don't want to be like that parent? Like one day you had to go to work instead of look over your kid. Yeah, no. <laughs> like yeah, how? Why are those on the same level? And also, it's totally fine to make mistakes. If that parent was like, "Oh, she's lying all the time," you know, she's got this lying issue, whatever, blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't believe her. That's a mistake, right? However, and then she responds by being like, fuck you. <laughs> you want to tell me that you would align yourself with that parent? Are you for real? Totes. You find I'm your totes with that parent. You dude. find your humanity yeah. in that person <laughs> that you feel like you need to defend them. Are you for real right yeah, now? There's some parents don't need to be defended. No, you know, some people, you know, some you don't people they do really fucked up shit. Yeah. And then they don't apologize for it, which is worse than doing the fucked up (laughs) shit. It makes it worse. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's crazy, man. And also they're 65 years old. Yeah, they're getting a nursing home. They're they're not. Get a nursing home pamphlet sent to her her house. Yeah. Like 10 of them. 10 of them. Like a lot. Like a lot of them. You gotta do, you gotta uh, break, you gotta, you know what? You gotta go fucking biblical. Sign her up for AARP. Oh hell yeah, dude! Yeah, do that. Really, I don't know. They got that in Canada. Yeah, C A R P. 
Canadian yeah. Oh yeah, I guess uh, they, they wouldn't have people. ARP in yeah. Canada. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, list some other shit you could sign your shitty parents up for <laughs> in the comments down below. Yeah, do that. I agree 100%. Yeah. Solved it. We're done, dude. Fuck this show. I'm done. I'm hungry. That's the craziest shit I've ever heard of. Man, what the fuck? I, a kid comes to me and says, Mom, I think I broke my nose. No, you fucking didn't. Go to your room. <laughs> Go to your fucking room. Blood coming out of it. good person yeah fuck you i'm going through life yeah special place in hell for you yeah what will other people think <laughs> i'm a good person that's what they'll think and i'm intelligent too i'm a real smarty pants <laughs> i'm real smart i wonder what other people are gonna think about me and my daughter no you didn't fucking break your nose just shut up and go to bed Eat your peas and go what to bed. You can't, what do you mean you can't breathe oh, out your left nostril? What do you mean you can't light? breathe? What will the others think? <laughs> I'm a good parent. <laughs> I'm a good parent. I'm a great parent. I'm the best parent, actually. Best parent I ever lived. Uh, that's our show, everybody. Sarah. Just breathe out your nose. All right. Yeah, you can Sarah. follow me on... <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> so crazy. Sarah. <laughs> that's insane. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. No, you're right. Yeah. Real angry this episode. The anger episode. The anger episode. That's yeah, what it's called. The anger We called it. All right. Woo. Okay. <laughs> um, you can follow me online at that's so here in T H A T S O H E E R O N. Um, and I'm everywhere on that. Uh also before Josh gets his socials in, I want to put this in. Uh, uh my old band Blue Age is having is, is releasing a single on March first. Go and check them out uh, on Spotify, and the the link is in the description down below to pre-save the new single, Red Sea, which I have a hand in writing uh, four years ago, and it's finally coming out. I'm very excited. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. Oh, I'm good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be, like, real passive-aggressive about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, am I, am I allowed to speak now? Okay, so you can... <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to speak now? It's so good. You can follow I'm gonna, me. I'm gonna write a bot that automatically signs your parent up for like a bunch of nursing homes. Dude, I think. hell yeah, do it. Just coding as a way of like bullying people. I think that's funny. But okay, now I can speak. So you can call. You can. I'm Joshua Chinland on most things like Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, stuff like that. Uh, guy nicknamed JC on Twitch. I did not stream this week because I was busy editing, but I will hopefully be back soon because I want to play more Headbangers Royale and Fall Guys and fun games. Yeah, so go fun. follow me on all those things. All the links are in the description. Like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and check us out on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash ABWSTR. If you're on Spotify and Apple, raise it five stars. Go to our Buy Me Coffee if you want to say something nice to, in the next episode. And check out our Boink links, our Palestine links. All the mm -hmm. links are down in the description. Please enjoy the rest of your day, evening, night, whatever you're in. And enjoy. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, outro, outro, outro. How do we end this? We got angry in that one. Woo! <laughs> there you go. That's your outro. All right. I guess we don't try anymore on this show. <laughs> oh, my God. Between this, uh -huh. between that fucking segment you did earlier, the one about Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking segment you did earlier about you abortion. Did. I didn't bring that in. I did. <laughs> You fucking grifter. That's, that was a bait and switch was what that was, bro. Yeah, you that's what it that is. Alright, that's the outro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Fuck it. Alright, sounds okay. good.